But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Good morning. Bum, bum, bum. I guess we start with that every day. Yeah, we do. Hoping it's a good morning for everybody involved. Yeah. In this process that is the Opie Anthony program. I hate Starbucks coffee. Why? I don't know. Get it all the time. I know. Because uh, out of habit. I used to I used to be deli coffee guy. Yeah. It goes back to my time when I had to do um, part-time radio in Geneva, New York. Geneva. And I, I didn't start drinking coffee until I was in my early 20s because I had to stay up after, you know, because I would drink all day and then go to, the, you know, then drive to the radio station to sure. to entertain the people of Geneva, New York. Yeah. With a fine radio station called CQ102, Hit Music and More. CQ102. <laughs> so that's when the coffee uh, habit started. Yeah. And then one day the Starbucks thing happened, right? I was turned on to good coffee when I went to Seattle, matter of fact. And then Starbucks uh, spread across the country, and I'm like, yes. And I really like the Starbucks coffee. But I don't know what I don't know. Did they change their recipe a few years ago? Aren't the they coffee, constantly like futzing with it? I don't think their coffee's as good as it used to be. Futzing. Because now uh, uh, other little coffee shops are popping up in the neighborhood, and their coffee's their coffee way better. <clears throat> they became like the big corporation. Yeah, because I think little guys. Are... I think they have to make so much at one time that right. I, I don't know if it if they're getting the recipe right. That's Especially funny. with half the people that work at Starbucks, let's be honest. What are you talking about? You used to have these people that they knew coffee. They loved coffee. Their uh, they whole would, life was about coffee. They, they would almost have an orgasm as they're giving you the coffee. Yeah. Like, oh, try the aroma. Coffee did that. And they would explain <laughs> what the roast is every day. Uh, and now you got these fucking animals just dumping water and Here's your yeah, coffee. Giant loads of coffee. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I hope Starbucks isn't an advertiser because I, I don't, out of habit, I drink it every morning and I don't think I like it anymore. I don't remember uh, reading any Starbucks things. That's, <laughs> that's Steven Singer is selling Starbucks now. Well, you, you heard they're going to be serving beer and wine at Selective uh, I heard Starbucks. that. Uh, no, no, uh, no word on when New York is going to be pulled into that whole thing. I think they're doing it in um, Atlanta. Yeah. I, heard, I saw Atlanta and uh, whatever, another another city like yeah. Atlanta. <laughs> They're trying to class up the joint, huh? So you could sit there, get a little glass of wine, and be on the computer in the place. So I get up early on weekends, too, and my thing is to go to a Starbucks, chill out, maybe do some tweeting or check email or read newspapers. Can't imagine now I'm going to have to deal with fucking assholes that had a few beers. Give me a fucking beer. Yeah, you think there's going to be a time? Where they can buy or can't buy eh. in New York? Yeah, if it goes well in Atlanta, they'll they'll do it everywhere. Why not? That's yeah, more you, money. You think like uh, six in the morning, you'd be able to go in and get a glass of wine? Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's what I'm talking about. That's crazy. You're gonna have assholes. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, you already have assholes in Starbucks, but yeah, yeah. But at least they keep it down. Bunch of belligerent fucking hipsters. Did you see? Uh, I don't know, because I think we pretty much all get the same tweets. A guy tweeted me a picture of uh, a guy in Starbucks. You know, most people usually bring their little laptop, and they kind of kind of plug in, and they, they don't take up much room. Quietly clickety-clacking in the corner. I didn't know I was going to talk about this to start the show, and I don't even know why. But the guy sends me a picture. Um, this asshole at Starbucks set up a monster monitor. For what? I don't know. I don't know. What a douchebag. A monster, like I, I'm trying to trying to give you, a, I don't like know, a thirty inch, like one of Sam's TV. Ah, uh, bigger than Sam's TV. Got to be bigger than Sam's TV. I, I would say bigger than Sam's TV. And I, yeah. If that guy's listening right now, I don't know if he is. Resend the picture. This guy had an obnoxious <laughs> fucking screen at Starbucks. Like he set up camp for the day. What a douche. <laughs> And I'm like, how did you get the monitor in? I guess they're that light where you can just carry them in, carry them in now. <laughs> Tool. Yeah, so. I don't know. I, I have no reason to go. I don't drink coffee, really. I, an occasional espresso with some Sambuca when I'm out. But uh, You never I, got into the coffee habit? No, never really uh, drank a lot of coffee. Well, when, we, when we first met, I forced you to drink oh, coffee. Oh, I was drinking a lot of coffee then. Before you, be, before you uh, became an individual. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. under my reign. Oh, it was coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> under my reign when I was at BAB for, what, two or three years? Everyone drank. Anyone that came in, I forced them 
like a drug dealer to drink coffee. Another and cup lots of coffee? Of, and lots of it. Another cup of coffee? I'm driving home fucking <laughs> gritting my teeth and shaking. <laughs> oh, man. It was so bad how yeah. much coffee we drank. I do remember that one. And then we'd go out to the bars. So now you got the, you got the caffeine, you got the alcohol. Yeah. Uh, now there's just uh, idiots, idiot uh, pictures. <laughs> that guy set up a fucking giant... Old school computer CRT monitor, and he's got like a 486 that's, in front of him. That's someone's art project. Yeah. They didn't actually do that. Somebody's uh, someone set that up to get reaction shots for some project. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Man, look at me. I'm gonna go into Starbucks with no 486 and a giant monitor and be fucking weird guy. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I turned off everything yesterday. The world's cool. Did you? Yeah, every once in a while, I, I, I don't really tweet. I don't watch TV. I just fucking turn everything off. Decompress. Which is bad for what we do for a living. But every once in a while, I just fucking go. I, I step. Uh, I step out. Yeah. Everything that's probably. Cool? Uh, that's probably a good thing to do every so often. Yeah, that's why I think I'm talking about coffee because I didn't watch any of the news. You missed a big story. Didn't really follow Twitter that much or Facebook. What's, yeah. What's the big story, Jim? I left my camera in a taxi. Oh my God! You're, I don't mean to laugh. I know. No. No. Yeah. I laugh because I know what kind of pain that. Did has you? Because uh, my jacket. I'm so stupid. Uh, I put it in my uh, side pocket, and it's deep. When you sit, it fell out. Yeah, and I yeah. knew better, and uh, I got out, and I was gonna leave and go out to lunch. I always just bring the camera anyway. I, I just looked all over for it. And I started to panic. Worst feeling ever. And I'm like, uh oh. <gasps> had you backed it up? Uh, I had, I think, most of it. <gasps> most? I think so. Who yeah. wasn't on there? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. What about the picture you took out here the other day with the red grave? It's already backed up. Oh, it is. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, you're, you're okay. fine. You're fast. You're fast. You might have missed one picture. Well, they wow. well, there may be some things on there that you don't want. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that part. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Did you call the taxi? Uh... I have two receipts, and I called. Um, one was got me through the TLC because they didn't. The taxi limousine. Ten to eleven care. Oh, don't be fresh. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have. Uh, the garage number, and yeah. one I called the garage. Yeah, you know, you're never getting that camera again. Well, I got a call oh, oh. from the first one, oh, 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 and oh, oh. no one found it. <laughs> you have to rely on people. Oh, no. Here's the problem. Oh, no. Because you leave the camera in the back seat, right? If it's a nice camera, the next person coming in, you have to hope they want a camera. It's white. Good... <laughs> you yeah, got to yeah, hope yeah. they're yeah. white. Yeah. Uh, you got to hope they're a good Samaritan because if they're not, they're taking that shit. You're just <clears throat> taking that shit. I would look, let me think. I would look at that camera. I slide in that back seat. I'm like, yeah, take me to fucking downtown. <laughs> I'm going to the bar. Yeah, I'm going to the... just pick a bar. <laughs> take me to a fucking bar. And I look over and I see a camera there, I'd be like, oh, I'd grab it. The first thing I'd do is turn it on and start going through the pictures. Of course. And then when I see a few winners, I'd be like, I'm taking the camera until I could really spend some time and look at every single picture. If be, I was a fan of the show, let's say, and I realized, oh my God, this is Jim Norton's camera, right. I would download every picture off of it, and then I would probably return it to you anonymously and then just haunt you by posting your pictures everywhere. One by one. Uh, one by one of dicks and uh, chicks with dicks and yep. uh, whatever else you have on no, there. No, no, those are the uh, camera. Teasing, of course, Jimmy. <laughs> but then there's the situation where people will take the camera, but they'll throw the card away immediately. Yeah, yeah, They yeah. do that with phones. They don't know. It's just like, when ah, I lost a f I, I left a phone in a bathroom once, and I had oh. hundreds of pictures on there. Sexy. From the bathroom? Uh, from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some upskirts and under the stall nice, shots. Nice, nice. And, uh... By the time I realized I, I left the phone in the stall and ran back, it, it couldn't have been more than two minutes. He was here, right? No, it was uh, Lincoln Center. Oh. I remember that happened here once, too, though. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That was a big deal because someone fucking did take my camera, and then I called out. I called everyone out on it, and they they went through security tapes, and guess what? That, that fucking phone was uh, returned. Yeah. But in this other case... Less than two minutes between leaving the stall, realizing I fucking left my phone, running back in a panic, like, please, 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 please. And it was gone. 
And then I tried calling the phone, and mm. it was already, the card was already Wiped. out of it. Yeah. Scumbags. The card was already out of it. So someone grabbed, they knew what they were doing, took the cards out, threw them in the fucking garbage, probably. Yeah. I probably should have checked the garbage right, right in the bathroom, and I probably would have at least got the you know the cards back. Well, I called, and I got a call back from a woman who works for the Tax Limousine Commission. It says she spoke to the driver, and uh, he had the camera. Oh! No! He had the camera, apparently. So, but she said... He saw an old woman left it in there for something. Like, for he must be able to somebody else. <laughs> maybe, Understandable. Maybe he saw your pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of some old woman left the camera. Yeah, some old bitty who annoys famous people. <laughs> old woman that likes a lot of taffy. Old woman. <laughs> on, oh, on, on her chest. Really strange <laughs> pictures. So, um, oh, fuck, you You lucked out. He's a guy in Jersey. I, I, had, I put a reward on the camera, though. And I told, oh. I told the... P the, 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 both people I spoke to, there's a reward, and I told them the reward was 300 bucks. Ooh, righteous bucks. Uh, yeah, it's a decent amount for... It for, certainly is. And, and this would motivate somebody just because... And I, I think because I call within a couple hours, yeah. they know you have the medallion number. It, it's just not worth it for that someone to try to... Th right. Or maybe he's just a really honest guy, but... Yeah, I'll drop it off today. Probably put a bomb in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know those, you know those people. Yeah, I'll come, I'm going to the airport with it and fucking <laughs> yeah. all pictures of jihadists on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> fucking you know, set you up nice. Yeah. <laughs> Picture of fucking uh, who is Bin Laden second in command? It'd be funny if it's birthday. Be funny oh, if yeah, I had yeah. the name instead yeah. of asking for help. <laughs> well, <laughs> so hopefully I'll have the camera back today. If not today, then when I return from uh, uh, L.A. If I if I drove a cab, I think I'd be looking in the back seat every time someone gets out. Yeah, and yeah. if there's a wallet there. Taking the cash. I uh, I check every everything when I get out of a cab. We all do, but every once in a while you fuck up. No. I was doing an interview. I was talking to Adrian because she's doing that New Yorker article on Patrice. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we I had just I didn't have time. So I was totally talk right now on the home from therapy. So I was on the phone in the middle of yeah. discussing something. Just yeah. didn't. You can't be perfect, Dan. Yeah, every once no, while I, gonna... I have to check. I check every time because I have to check. Because there's one thing I never, ever want to drop in a cab. <laughs> so I... The N-bomb. <laughs> <went, yeah. laughs> I know that I'll drop. Oh, I see what you're so, saying. So, yeah, yeah. I kind of pat my side. I go, all right. And it's a reflex. It's right. not even that I have to think about it. And when I get out, I tap my side and go, all right, I'm good there. And then that just makes me remember, all right, wallet, phone. Right. And then I shut the fucking door. But I'll always look at the back seat. Uh, it, it's one of those things where it constantly reminds you. Three or four days ago, uh, I took a cab home, keys in the back seat. Ooh, that, see, that's I, I hand them over to the driver, and I'm like, wow, this person's just fucked. Oof. Because they're not, most people aren't smart enough to do what Jimmy did. Because I don't even take, you need to take a receipt. Yeah. I don't take receipts. Right, so right. if I leave something in the cab, I'm fucked. You, you, you it, can it make a yellow. phone call. It was yeah. yellow, I swear. The guy in it had a beard. Yeah, but urban. <laughs> that's really smart, though. If you have a receipt, you yeah. can at least narrow it down to what cab you were in. I was, I was, before I went to lunch, I said, let me fuck it. I went back up to my apartment. I mean, I, 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 was, I oh, really didn't have so it. Oh, you so lucky, man. And I, and I just looked for the two receipts. Like one, because Kenny drove me home from here with, after work, so I checked my going to therapy and coming back from therapy cabs. And, uh... Maybe the guy's just a really honest man too. Yeah. A lot of a lot of these times, the cabbies are actually honest. They return shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta bust apart those stereotypes. I don't think it's an honest thing. I think uh, they could get caught. Maybe, yeah. And they don't want to deal with it and have to explain. Look, I'm telling you, it wasn't in the cab. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. especially if somebody turned it in. Right. I think somebody probably handed it to him who got it. Oh, somebody. True. That's my impression of the person who got in the cab after me, assuming they're an old lady. <laughs> but you just don't need the headache, and the reward was. You're lucky. Good that money. means someone got in after you, absolutely, and, and and saw the camera and handed it to the driver, because most people would just take it and, right. and 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 just go about their day. But I'm on. It's, it's, you it, think most people are honest? I always I don't know, about man. That. Like it depends mm. on. I think there's stages of honesty. I think if there's a wallet, and you're not making that much money in your life, and all of a sudden there's right. a hundred dollars in there. I think most people are taking the hundred. Sorry, and, and then, then maybe yeah, yeah, handing over the turn wallet. Turn back all the pain in the ass, fucking shit that's in the wallet to replace. Right. But uh, yeah, you know what? You do kind of hear a lot of stories about people returning shit. Yeah. Then again, you don't hear the ones where they don't return it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I don't know. I think ah. You I like think to think most people, most people are honest. Yeah, I think most people fucking just take it. <laughs> I think so. Too. If it, if there's one phase of the whole thing where it, it's the work. Yeah. Where you have to do something to return it. You won't return it. Right. <laughs> if the right. guy walks right up to you and goes, do you have this? Right. I dropped it. Then you might return it. <laughs> I feel good when, like, I'm walking the sidewalk and uh, a lady, like, drops a scarf or a mitten or something. Yeah. I go, excuse me. 
You drop something. You drop something, and then she doesn't I feel turn good. and I go, okay, bleed to death. <laughs> <laughs> that old gag. I feel good, though, Yeah. that I was able to point it out that she dropped a mitten or a scarf. But if she's dropping a purse or a wallet, am I saying, yeah. excuse me, you drop something? Yeah. It depends on what it is, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Money, uh, like cash, I'd always take and not give back. You know, that was just something uh, growing up. Oh, did I Finders used to, keepers? Did I used to love it? Yeah, because growing up, um, you know, uh, uh, with my horrible uh, uh, acne problems, I used to walk around with my head down. Yeah. So I'd walk around like well, with my head down. Oh, you found a lot I of found money. Found a lot of money. I'd walk around like found a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, we'd go to like Straw Hat Pizza Palace out there in California when I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, I'd be like, oh, look, a ten, yeah. a tenner, and uh, yeah, pick that up. When you find a wallet. I, I feel like, God, this person is lucky that I was the one that found the wallet. Yeah. And then yeah. I take the money out of it and, and return the wallet. <laughs> yeah. Other people would take the money and throw it in the garbage. Now, that's rude. Right. I would take the money usually and then just say, hey, uh, there's a wallet here to the closest person that would have to hold on to the wallet. <laughs> Fucking hot dog cart vendor guy. <laughs> I don't think people like when we're honest because no. they have to look within themselves. I really think most people take money. Take the money. I think they take the money. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, so nothing happened last night besides... Uh, uh, that was a big one, but aside from that, no. How, uh, That's the, my knowledge. The feeling of relief you must have had. I couldn't believe when she called me back. Holy <clears> shit, <throat> that's lucky. In Good. New York, that's lucky, I think. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving today for uh, Tempe, so... No! I, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I may be, I may miss the guy. He may have to drop it off, but I'm so happy I got a lucky guy. Yeah. I mean, an, an honest guy, you know? I mean, but I'm honest. I, I would return something always. Always. Oh, I just can't keep You're stuff. You're such a good egg. Nah, this is something really weird. You are! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is something about keeping somebody's shit that I can't do. Yeah? Like, nah, man. I did it when I was young. I stole the drink, but... Oh. Oh, and my sister's uh, gonna have a baby. What? Your sister's having what? a baby? I'm gonna have another. Oh, oh Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy. Huh? Uh, yeah? When? August. Wow. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that on the air, but... Whoops. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that'd be a secret. Why would it be? No, why would it be? Well, because uh, women like to wait a certain amount of time oh. in case, you know... I'm sorry if it's... They're supposed to Whoops. wait six to eight weeks, I think. Oh, yeah, it's... it's more than that. Yeah. Oh, then that then. Oh well, congrats, uh, congratulations. That's pretty cool. Little, little tater tot. Why? <laughs> why do you have a weird look on your face? Because you're congratulating me, and I'm just thinking I got nothing to do with this. Like yeah, I didn't. That's true. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, to bang your sister. <laughs> but I, it's, it's, yeah. I liked becoming an uncle. I kind of yeah. liked it. It'll be my years. second time. Big gap between my nephew and yeah, whatever. If she has a niece or nephew now. Right. I don't know if I want mm. a nephew or another nephew or a niece. Probably another nephew. But that's all yeah. you guys got in your family, right? Is yeah. one, uh, you know, one nephew? Believe me, every load for me is a waste. <laughs> every, every, every one I drop out is fucking it's on the back of somebody who's collecting money. <laughs> We're getting to the point. There's so many that um, I'm, i got to think who's who. Nephews and nieces? Uh, I'm almost to the mm. point where I'm like, okay, wait a How minute. How many do you have? Uh, I think we're up to 12. Wow. Including mine. And you're white. I think we're... <laughs> 12 in already. But this is great. This prevents me from, from having mom. to to do it now. I yeah, mean, yeah. Because with my nephew, Nick, is like, he's 17, so it's like we go to UFC stuff, but I don't, mm. you know, it's like I'm 43 now. I'm like, do I have a kid or do I? You're, you're getting close to being a great uncle. Um, it's yeah. within range now. Oh, I, please. One of my fucking pictures with Brock, uh, Dana White, I fucking rule. But one of, no, I mean, like, if he has a kid. Oh, great. I think you go to that. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I'm a maniac. I really am dumb. Jesus. <laughs> I got a nephew who's, uh, what is he up to now? 20, 23, I think. 20, so I could be a fucking yeah. great uncle any day now. Wow. 23. You, uh, that, that could happen now. That's crazy. Yeah. But the, uh, the Norton name will not carry on, will it? Why should it? Yeah, really. Let's be honest. <laughs> with you. Has it exactly taken the world by storm? <laughs> Why should it? What has the Norton name done? The Norton name. You uh, must uh, have, you have a, a responsibility there, sir. Since the cavemen, a there's been a child. Norton, and all of a sudden the, the, you, that stops now. That's all right. A male child of a male, you know. Wait, yeah. are there other Nortons, yeah. though? Like, does your father have brothers? Yeah. Oh, so but the Norton name goes no, but on half in a brother. different way. Mm. My, my dad's family is half... Brothers uh, and sisters, or uh, yeah, half brothers and sisters. So they're all uh, coil. They're all coils. Oh, 
It's Norton. Snake. He's only Norton. But there's he's got a. He might have a sister. Mm. I don't remember. My brother had a daughter, and my sister had a son. So that screws the thing up. The and uh, name. I'm not uh, the Kumia name. Uh, just uh, withering away. My father was an only child. So. Uh, oh boy. It's just done. But it's been around forever. Yeah, whatever. Let it die. Yeah, it's Let gone. the name die. <laughs> with, with, after me, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what the die. fuck are you gonna do? The greatest one. The just let that line go. <laughs> 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 I feel bad though. Like I'm sure this is not the way they would have wanted to end the name. Whenever the Norton name started in Ireland, <laughs> yeah. I know my grandmother was very proud of the fact that we were related to the Pierces, who who, who brought ice cream to Jersey City. I believe. Oh, oh wow. Well, or maybe they just sold it. She yeah, probably exaggerated. <laughs> And lied. <laughs> I want. I want to check out like uh, what my ancestors did. I think. I'm finally. curious too. My. Uh, I want to know if if there's one other guy that did anything. My great grandfather. I did a lot. Who else did something in this fucking family? My great grandfather was uh, born a slave and died a businessman. Is that true? Uh, no, it's from the commercial. What movie? Oh. It's from the commercial. Oh, the dumb commercial. That guy was like, sure. I knew being African American where this could take me. And I found out my great grandfather was born a slave, and he's like, "Oh, he goes born a slave." Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that figures. Of course, he knew that. Right. And then he goes, "But dad, a business man." He holds his picture up, like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, my grandfather was born just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the depressing part. <laughs> no, <laughs> I uh, he's old pot. <laughs> That's great. Dad, a business man. He's like selling weed. And like... I I think all those ancestry sites are yeah. all bullshit. Bunch of malarkey. Because it's bad for business if all of a sudden you go to him and go, all right. Uh, what you know? What's uh, what's my grand uh, grandfather all about? Yeah. Well, he was a slave and died a slave. Yeah. No one wants to hear that shit. No. So you gotta have like, oh. And they and then they have some vague like you're sort of related to the Queen of England's half yeah. brother. There's always this weird thing that every That's... person is related to someone that was pretty huge yeah. in history. I, what's that about? That's uh, bullshit. Well, the other commercial pulls that off too. It shows like, right. You know, not everybody's great. This one guy goes, and I found out. My great grandfather lived next door to the Wright brothers. And that's his big claim to fame. And at the end of the commercial, he's standing there all proud and happy with a picture of the Wright brothers in the Wright flyer. Yeah. And it's like, you could picture what they're like. He's all proud of that. And his great grandparents are probably like, what are you building there? Yeah. What do yeah. you got over? What are you building? It's, uh, it's an airplane. Why did an airplane? What is it? Just annoying neighbors. Or complaining. Turn it off. It's loud. Yeah, it's too loud. I oh, they you. probably hated living next door to the Wright brothers. <laughs> I bet you the Wright brothers hated them. Yeah, you probably hated them. But, and this guy's all proud. Hey, yeah, well, look now, next door. Because it worked out. He's yeah. like, oh, look at look at me. Look a little deeper. They were the ones that fucking probably had an injunction against them. Mm. Shut the, They can't run the motors between fucking <laughs> 8 o'clock and fucking 8 at night. And Or his grandmother's the first woman to ever be DP'd on the wing of an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> DP. So they're even going with neighbors of famous people? I know. Because it, if you go to one of these companies and they don't find something cool, you're going to be like, fuck you and you fuck your company. Here's your uh, historic uh, line. Uh, well, yeah. look, you got nothing. You got a bunch of blue collar people that just had right. kids that died right. and had more kids. and Right. Yeah. So there, there's some shenanigans going on there. They got to find somebody of importance yeah. for every single person. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah I That's think so. That's my thought. Yeah, yeah. Debating trying it. Businessman. I actually did. I went to Ancestry.com and I fucking uh, put my name. You got to know a lot. Like you, the more you know about your family and names yeah. and marriages and kids, the better off you are because you give them more information to work with. Don't you of. know? Don't you have to know social security numbers of no, old people? No, you, you could just know a last <laughs> name and hope for the best. You know. So I knew a few things about. Uh, maiden names of my grandparents and oh, shit like fuck, that. I don't know that shit. Uh, and and uh, children. And then the more you know, it links up with other people that uh, are kind of connected to your family. Maybe a marriage or something like that. And their tree kind of goes into yours. And right. and uh, like they say, a little leaf pops up. You click on it, and there's like a death certificate right. or some kind of a census from 1908. Uh, and it's got like your grandmother's name on it as a kid. It's I'll just check weird. that shit out. It's 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 not easy. It's you know you got to work at it. You gotta... I'm not gonna check that shit out. <laughs> I only check out easy shit. Yeah, yeah.
But, okay. uh, you know, if you got a little time, I guess it's pretty interesting. Kevin from Connecticut, what about All the Way May? All the Way May? Come on now. You'd like to see what she was up to. <laughs> well. No kids but fucking like a well, banshee. Well, that, that was Bill Burr's angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bill Burr she really was, got on her. She was a great well, baseball player in, in, a, in a time when women didn't play baseball. That was, she was one of the fucking chicks from that movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the movie? I care so much, I forgot the name of the movie. The League of Their Own. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a true story. All the way May was related to Opie. Yes. And yeah. she fucked like an animal. Oh, well, do we have a well, good time talking about well, all the way May. Well, let's slow down a little. Fucking having every hole filled. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Yeah, we were doing, doing the... Uh, First base, second base, third base, home run analogies. Oh, there, there was no, no letting go of all the way May. I try to share something nice. Yeah. And look what happened. Look what happened. So Jimmy's going to be an alcohol again. Yeah. That's pretty good news think, right there. I think my family, we're just about done with that. I think I might squeeze one more, maybe two. I don't mm. know. I got to get going, I think. But besides that, I think we're done as a family as far as that next generation. Jeez, I, I, I think for we're me, set this, at this point. This Keep takes some... care of my obligation. <laughs> what did you do? Nothing, I'm saying, but meaning <laughs> that now there's another it? Norton child. No, 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 I mean this, but now I don't have to have one. Like, there's another kid, um, instead of me and my sister each having one, let her have two. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I be, mm -hmm. you know, inconvenienced? inconvenienced? <laughs> Maybe your mom will have one more. Oh, God, we so imagine my <laughs> imagine if my mom was knocked up and, oh my my, and my father's like it's not mine. <laughs> oh, oh God, that'd be awful. <laughs> I remember years ago, I believe uh, when my mom was uh, in her mid forties or something like that. Uh, uh, her and Sal came up and were like, oh, there's a problem here. Uh, your, your mom's pregnant. Whoa. Oh, yeah. How old was your mom? I, I, I knocked her up. I knocked <laughs> up your mom. It, she was like 45 or did, something. Did you want to punch Sal in the face for oh, knocking like, up your mom? Great. Oh, first of all, I don't even want to think about it. Right. And then just thinking of like this poor kid in this, this rusty old plumbing. Right. Trying Having to fucking deal with that. You know? A womb that's like a, yeah, yeah. Probably like one of those dried out wine satchels Jeez. at a concert <laughs> devoid of wine 45 is what <laughs> 25 years ago about a little more maybe yeah yeah it I'm was, it to was put, a while ago right. you know, probably, probably like th on. almost 30 years ago almost 30 years ago okay and it's like uh yeah there's uh you know uh, we have a your mom is a and then they said they thought about it but, uh, oh, my God. They didn't think about it, huh? Yeah, my brother got one for his girl. We got to go uh, get you one of those abortions. <laughs> Your mom had abortions. So she had to have an abortion at 45, <laughs> like a piece of fucking shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> she, had, she had to be in the waiting room with 16-year-olds? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chewing gum and fucking, eh, yeah, what are you here for? Your daughter getting an abortion? <laughs> no, go scratch your ass. I got to get scraped. <laughs> oh, she's got to have a vacuum in there and suck out some fucking, some little brother or sister of mine, some half-brother sister. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Wonderful. She's reading teen magazines in the waiting uh, room. Yeah, yeah. Waiting her turn. You know, uh, <laughs> having to talk to some nurse that's fucking tw 20 years younger than her saying, you know, um, you should use some type of protection oh, maybe God. next time. Abortion is not a good means of birth control. Shut up. I have kids older than you. Get away from uh, me. Ba, 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 ba. Why are you telling people this? Because who cares at this point? Wow, you're pregnant. I knocked her up. <laughs> My sperm's still good. And, uh, yeah, they, they had an abortion, and at the same time, she got a tubal ligation. What the hell does that mean? Well, they tie the tubes so oh, she okay. couldn't have any more kids. Oh. So they could go on doing some of that, you know, fucking without, uh... I guess Sal likes it raw, huh? Yeah. Sal, I go bareback, Ro! Sal likes going raw. I go bareback! <laughs> you could either take it in the ass or I'll get a tube of ligation, Ro! <laughs> oh, it was just... Oh, but, but when they had a... Cu it's like, and I'm all, all I'm thinking, me and my brother is like, why the fuck are they telling us? Yeah, there's no Just reason. Just do it behind everyone's back if you're <laughs> not going to fucking uh, have a kid. Why the hell do I have to know that you, you got her pregnant? I, I got to ask my mom because I remember as a kid, um, like, her being on the phone with my dad crying a lot. 
And I a lot. And I did her hiney hurt. <laughs> and I remember, I remember like thinking that, uh oh, she might be pregnant. Wow. And how old was she at the time you were thinking this? Probably same thing. Yeah, more or less. Forties, forty, early forties. But Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. But just hearing what you just said brought back a memory to me. Yeah. I remember very vividly. She was there was obviously a problem. Oh God. And then uh, I don't know. Nothing ever came of it that I know of. I, My I, I boys are her. swimming, row. Because <laughs> we were Catholics growing up. And, yeah. man, you weren't allowed to use protection old school. No, nah, you had to use the rhythm you method. You had to try to figure out fucking numbers. What's the rhythm method, anyway? What, do you got to keep track of the calendar when you're ovulating? Rhythm method doesn't work if you had a few yeah. pops in you. And the rhythm method sounds stupid because it sounds like it's the rhythm of your dick going in and out. Yeah. And right. you, you get mistaken because that's what makes you come. <laughs> the rhythm method makes you come <laughs> inside. And our parents had pie charts. Yeah, yeah, there was something going on. With with uh, parts of the pie chart which were shaded in as in, okay, when when... When we're in these days, we're good. Yeah. That's fucked up. Woody Allen had a funny line about the rhythm method. Someone in his family, he was going, uh, like, you know, my cousin, she's uh, practicing the, the rhythm method, and uh, apparently she can't keep a beat because uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> Woody Allen's That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. Man, yeah, so that was, uh, I don't know how we got on that, but... That's very funny. Because the ancestry thing. And, oh, yeah, ancestry. I'm, the ancestry.com thing. Yeah. That'd be cool to check out. Yeah, and then, and then uh, I don't know, I guess one of my relatives sent for a, a, coat, a Kumia coat of arms Ooh. to see, what, you know, the history of the name. Yeah. And they couldn't really find a coat of arms, so they came up with some generic one and oh, said they realized there was some town. In somewhere, Sicily, I guess. Oh, no. It was probably overrun by the Moors first. <laughs> they did so much fucking. Yeah. My great great grandfather probably was born a slave and died a businessman. <laughs> It's the first, it was the first place in fucking uh, in Sicily to serve like old English. Yeah, OD. <laughs> OD. <laughs> so uh, they had to make a coat of. What, who wants a coat of arms? Well, yeah, I know. Uh, when was, did you use them? Were they were they popular uh, when you had people's uh, swords? Uh, well, yeah, you put them on your shield, and you it, know, it was your family crest. It was like your email address like that. or something. <laughs> was it your email yeah, address at the again, time? Your yeah. unique email. That was your at. It was your at right there. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Roberts. Oh, look at the Roberts yeah. coat of arms. There's always a lion and a sword and a shield yeah. and a helmet. It's always very brave looking. Stop. Yeah. yeah. The what Nortons. The Nortons is a is a pair of uh, pants with a snake just hanging sadly out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you got a cool, all coat of arms are pretty cool. The knights on them. Why is it a knight with a bird on its head for Norton? Uh, it's a bird brain. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There's a knight uh, uh, with a bird sitting on his head. It's probably that's, a nightingale. That, that means that's not a good knight. That's stupid. Yeah, that's Why a would bad he shoo him, shoo him away? He's too stupid to shoo him away. Maybe yeah. he's busy. That is, is bird brain. A chip is always stand still. <laughs> That's not Chipperson. Is, <laughs> is there a Chipperson family crest? I bet there like is. Or, or a, how about a family aim or a family uh, aquafresh? <laughs> Let's see the Chipperson one. Hey, wait a minute. There's a bird on his head, too. What's up uh, What's up with the birds? It's a bird brain. Why don't you go with Hughes? I want to see Hughes. All right. The Hughes one has got to be. Uh, yeah, let's do the Hughes. That's very popular name. Very yes. popular. It's a, knight, it's, it's a knight in a straight jacket. But... <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Oh, you got three lions on the shield. Yeah. And uh, a, a, a knight's helmet. Yeah. Um, very mysterious. Yeah. Yes. There's, it's there's like a leaves green. around you. Very mysterious. Yes, flowers. Leaves. Probably poison ivy. <laughs> What's the Nagel? Let's look for the Nagel uh, crest. It's funny. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a oh, giant boy. testicle with a lump on the side of it. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> it's a guy trying to squeeze into his ar armor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a knight looking at his, his fucking uh, armor that won't fit with his shrugging his shoulders. <laughs> uh, or it's a scale with a tear in his face. <laughs> oh, it's a That's a one. Nagel. That's horrible. <laughs> Terrible. What is that? It's, uh, again, it is. just What's a cross, blue? a blue cross on a silver shield mm -hmm. with a, a knight's uh, helmet uh, right there. Um, what about uh, Kenny? Yeah, what about Kofi? Kofi? Kenny? I'll write down his last name. Yeah, yeah, yes, we don't like he uh, want his putting last his last name, name out, out to everybody. Uh, because of the know, charges. Some people know it, but, yes. uh, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, oh, who is that? Oh, yeah, that's his coat of arms. What is it? It looks like... Uh, 
three dicks. It's like three cocks on the fucking wow, shield. He's got three mushroom facing heads. Facing down <laughs> mushroom heads. He's got mushroom heads. <laughs> That's, uh, well, and our unique codes of arms. Frank and Jersey, very confused. Frank and Jersey. Oh, don't you have, like, nine brothers and sisters? Someone didn't do the pie charts right. That's what I'm getting at. My yeah. mom had, uh, uh, I think seven kids, Damn. six births. Birth. And openly told us her entire life she didn't want all these kids. Oh, that's lovely to hear, right? <laughs> it didn't bother me. I was, no. I was the first out, so I'm like, well, obviously she wanted me. You're the oldest uh, as far as that situation goes, yeah, my dad was oh, married. Um, right. My dad was married before my mom to his high school sweetheart, who tragically died at 26 of kidney failure. Oh, Jesus. Um, so you're the first of part two. Part two. So you're I, the sequel. So I have a half-sister that, yeah. that my wife gets really mad at because I don't acknowledge that she was part of our family. Oh, but boy. she left really early. Yeah, so, so when people really say know. when people say how many kids you got, I go uh, six. But there's oh wait, actually... she had six kids, five births. Uh, That's what it was. Do right? you see her half sister? No, I love her. It's just oh, more you, of, oh, it's more of a joke. She's in Florida. She actually listens every day. So, oh hi. Somewhere along the way, she decided to become our uh, uber fan of our show. Really? Yeah. That's pretty nice. She's quiet though. She won't. She'll never fucking in touch. Call or write or anything. I don't know who listens in my family. I never want to know. Hey, I really. Ah, it's good. It's good. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to know. You know, I heard the other day. Ah, it's good. It's good. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, I don't know. I got. I got so many cousins out there on Long Island. I don't know. I don't know who listens. No idea. No clue. I got a few. Yeah. Yeah. It was more so when we were on the regular radio because it was easier that way. Sure. But uh, yeah, there's a few out there. Yeah, the satellite, which uh, most people still don't have, it makes it tough for our families to listen to us. Satellite, <laughs> yeah, which is kind of a good thing. I know the the parents stopped listening a while ago. Why? It just got too crazy for them. Just they, too they, much. They reached an age where it was like they they just couldn't keep couldn't up anymore. Keep up, they couldn't listen. You know, we start rambling on, especially about tech talk and right. just. Uh, some popular culture things, things in the news. It's like maybe if we talk about Benny Goodman, right? Uh, they'd get it. But yeah, they've reached that point. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, I don't the, think Mom's in danger of getting knocked up anymore. To be uh, quite honest with you. Uh, Jesus, are they still having sex? You think? Uh, probably not. Really? Yeah, they probably reached that age where it's just you know Lucy and Desi beds. What about yeah. Sal though? What about him? Just, you know, guys that get, rod's getting fucking... A guy's got uh, needs. Probably just mutual masturbation. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably just watch each other masturbate. <laughs> I don't know. To them, it's about, like Entenmann's cake would be uh, sex. Yeah. Getting a nice piece of Entenmann's. Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't know, age. man. You talk to people in these uh, assisted living places and they're fucking still horny. It's called rape. It, they're, they're still they're horny, raping though. the old people in the I, I, I believe living. the guys more than the women. Yeah. But they're still fucking horny. There's a few. Yeah, like you know, you talk to Brewer about his dad and that's pretty much what it is, you know, the horny old guy, but right. uh, I don't know, some guys just give up. Yeah. I think Sal's had so many procedures <laughs> on his fucking schlong and you know, They've snaked so much shit up that urinary tract. It's just like uh, it's done some pure damage. scar tissue. <laughs> right. It's like he's got a pipe cleaner up there. It's you constantly can just twist it and turn it. It's constantly hard, but it's all just scar tissue. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. And you know, mom doesn't look like she wants any part of that anymore. So. Yeah. Are they happy? I don't know. They're probably miserable. Why? I don't know. Cause they're old. They're they always old seem. Now. They always seem pretty happy. Yeah, but they reach that point where they're just old now. Yeah. That's uh, what happens. You know. I was watching some shit the other day. Fucking, uh, oh, oh, uh, Ange was at the house, and uh, she had on uh, ABC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got done uh, working out. <laughs> and uh, I sit down on the couch, and General Hospital comes on. I have not seen General Hospital in decades. It's been many years. And then you watch, and it's like, holy shit, the same people are on this show. Really? But... The guys that were the young, groovy fucking guys that were in the with the chicks and the action sequences in the in the show, they're now the old people that the young action guys go up to to get like the matronly advice from. Oh, really? Yeah, and you watch it go, fuck, that's that, they're the old guys, and then you realize, ah, that's happening in real life. No shit. Yeah. Have you looked in a mirror lately? I exactly. have. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. I fucking have. That's what I'm talking um, about. You see your nieces and nephews, they're getting older. They're becoming the, the younger people, like real people, not kids anymore. 
at, that are at the family gatherings, the aunts and uncles that I remember are now the old people that the grandparents were. Right. And, and you're in that mid-range where you're like what they were when you were a kid. Way to explain the cycle of life to everybody. It is. Yep. My, I got nieces. They yeah. were, they're ready to sprout. Oh, yeah? Yes. They're ready to pop? They're ready to pop. And I'm thinking, I, I know you as a little fucking kid with your dumb dolls. It's like, oh, look at your tits. <laughs> what happened there? Hey, whoa, two more tits. They're ready to sprout. Yeah. They're, uh, they're right on the verge. Time. I got a nephew. I think uh, I think a whisker or two is about to pop oh, out. Oh, boy. And I remember it's just a tiny little fucking kid on, a, on a, one of those dumb electric cars that go uh, a half mile an hour. Oh, they grow so fast. I can't believe but getting back Anthony to General Geary Hospital. is still playing Luke Spencer. I, I thought like 80 years old. I thought those soap operas went away, though. Well, General Hospital is uh, one that's uh, kind of hanging in there. Wait, Luke is still on TV? Luke Spencer. As in Luke and Laura? Yes, is still on General Hospital. But was again, he... he's like, but he's trying. He's got the earring and he's, he's oh got the wild God. hair. But he's still wait, trying to. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Has he always been on General Hospital as Luke? Uh, no, I think he took a, a, some time off, went to another soap. But uh, How much time back? off? Yeah. How much screaming? I that's 30 years ago that wedding, right? How old is yeah, Luke? yeah. That was him with his fucking curly top hair. Now he's just got spiky gray hair. <laughs> was that still one of the biggest shows? Was that their wedding, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, that was a huge one. He's married to Tracy Quartermain now. I don't know who that who is. Who was another one that was, you know, Big in around the for a opera. while. In the movie, is Laura still on the show? No. Jeannie Francis? I don't think so. I used to watch it when I was uh, completely out of work and a bum living at friends' houses um, in like 83, 84. What year was the wedding? 80? It was. 81? Why did people it? care so much? Because there was really nothing else to do. There was no social fucking media. Well, especially <laughs> no so <laughs> daytime TV really sucked. You forget. When we were growing up, daytime TV daytime TV was awful. It was game shows or soaps. That was it. That's all you had. It's still awful, by the way. It's still terrible, but uh, I was watching, a lot more of a choice. I had uh, Joe from Sights and Sounds over yesterday, who's a great guy. Um takes care of my house my uh audio visual needs yeah and he was uh tinkering yesterday so we had to keep the tv on and i was watching who wants to be a millionaire <clears throat> with uh, yeah. meredith uh, vieira holy fuck is that awful yeah holy fuck and then it went to some 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 cooking show with the italian guy yeah uh oh, help wait. me out he has the ponytail he's uh yeah it's kind of it's called the mm. chew or something Oh, Jesus. This oh, fucking Ben Stein's going to call. That's uh, terrifying. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not even worth it. What but, are they making? Google? I don't know, but the point is it was just horrible TV. <laughs> horrible. Yeah. yeah, that show. What's it called? The Chew? Yeah. The Chew. And they were trying, like, Tabasco's because now Tabasco has, like, ten products now. Oh, and, uh, right. And then they were. Tr th they thought they were funny, so they were doing a bit where they're uh, in a Spanish soap opera. Oh, I love those. You know, that over-the-top acting where, where everyone's having sex with everyone else. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, this is God fucking awful. <laughs> Just terrible. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's some real shite on. And I just can't, I still get more and more annoyed at that true TV. Yeah. Um, I was watching, uh, because now there, there are shows, and when I get tweeted from people that say, boy, you got to check this out, it's hilarious. No, it's fake. Every single one of their, their shows are phony. And uh, I was watching a bait car the other day, and this is supposedly some cops, and they put cameras in a car. And the car is rigged to uh, where you can lock it, mm -hmm. cut the engine, mm -hmm. uh, make the windows so they don't roll down. And they get these uh, always brothers that hop into the car. And they're like, yeah, motherfucker. And they start driving it off. And then they uh, shut the car down and lock the doors, go up to the window. God, get your fucking hands up. Get your hands up. And it's entertaining. Until you realize, like, they intercut bullshit scenes of cops, like, tracking them with this beep, beep, beep oh, thing God. on a map. And... And these helicopter shots that aren't real and just it's 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 fake fakery. Just do the show. And what do they do? They leave the keys in the car or something? Yeah, they put the keys like either I, on top of the car like someone uh, forgot. You and, know what? I, 
I would assume yeah. that the the type of person that is stealing cars knows all that. Probably. I, I, I don't think the they're professional car actually? thieves. They're getting people that are like caught up in the moment and go like, oh, I'm going to take that. But I don't I don't think you some think of the actors? footage is it, – no, I don't think some of the footage is fake. I think some of it's real. Okay. But everything they build around it is fake. Like the whole setup and everything, the people in the car, the ones going, I think he's moving eastbound on blah de blah that, that, I think, is completely fake. All right, so they're just trying to up their production value. Yeah, which is, you know, just do it like cops. Who cares? Like, look, see, this guy's getting in the car. But you really think these you know, the guys homeboy. are stealing cars? Because you would have to wait around a while. That's the part where the jury's still out with me. I'm not sure. I, I don't think they're that good of actors to... I think... Because they come off as really scared and, and pissed that they got caught in. But I think if you put... I think if you have keys on top of the car... Yeah. Above the driver, uh, uh, the door of the, uh, right, whatever, um, where you get in your car, I should have said. I think it would take a really fucking long time before someone actually goes for it. They're not parking it in front of your building <laughs> or in front of my house. They're right. parking these things in places where uh, you're not going to get a professional car thief that's going to look and go, yeah, this is a great opportunity. You're getting dumb kids. That see the keys right. and go, oh man, and then they they scope out the scene. They're looking around and then they I take think, it. I would like to talk to those guys. I think even in that situation where they park the cars, yeah, I think it takes a while. I really do. I think it's fake. What? I think it's the show is fake. But you just but said they're sure, real. But I'm not sure how much of it's real and how much of it's fake. I don't know. Any of these towing shows are not not only horrible, but so fake. And when I get people telling me you got to watch it, it's great. This guy fucking took this bitch and pushed her down. No, shut up. Fake, fakety, fake, fake. Yeah. Mm. Well, I say we eat or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, by the way, Jon Stewart had a really funny bit last night. We can go to break with this. Um, Ooh. State of the Union, Obama. He, uh, as Jon Stewart said, he opened with telling everybody that he basically killed uh, Osama bin Laden. That's a big opener. And Jon Stewart had a good angle on, on you know, that yeah. whole thing. Nah. I didn't give it away too much, did I? No. All right. By the way, when we come back, we talk about Oscar de la Hoya. Uh-oh. And that broad. Is he in uh, Dutch again? Who are you mad at? Uh, just. The broad? Yeah. Of and we got to talk about the guy from uh, Fox uh, News. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Good day, New York. Yeah. I, 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 I have, think uh, he's... Innocent. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I do, too. Yeah. I haven't read the... Yeah. Read. I'll oh, catch we'll, up. Oh, we'll go over Read. It. Read during the break. Oh, oh let's so, eat. Because so, so, that's, so, so. that's on the front page. So, 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 so. But first this. For the first time in two decades, Osama bin Laden is not a threat to this country. I killed Bin Laden? You open with that? Hey, everybody, how you doing? You having a nice night? I killed Bin Laden! I killed him! What are you doing? Does Rick Springfield open with Jesse's girl? No! He opens with, I've done everything for you. And then he transitions into Don't Talk to Strangers, slows it down a bit with a fair of the heart, and then hits you with something off the new album. And then just when you think he can't get any more beautiful, Jesse's girl! And the place goes nuts! It goes nuts! Topical with Travis today. What? Dr. Dr. Gay. Gay. Oh. Get straight. With Dr. Gay. Getting topical. I got this Dr. one already. Dr. Gay. I, I tried to think like Eric would think. Oh, boy. No, no, no. Are you hungry? Yeah. I'm going to give Travis a compliment. First time doing Getting Topical, and he nailed it. Nailed Dr. it. Gay. He fucking nailed it. This is how it's played. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this for Eric, and I'm going to send it to him as an example. I'm going to say this is how you do it. How to do it correctly. I am so in on this one. 
Uh, who's doing this version of Whip It? Uh, it's some kid's version. I figured this is what a character. No, I know. I know it has nothing to do with what. Whip It Good. Uh, you I just wanted just a like, different yeah, version yeah, of the song. Kids. This uh, is uh, all about Demi Moore. I have no doubt in my mind. Uh, what right. a great, what a great, and it's topical because it's a big song. topical, so, what a perfect. Pull. You're Thanks, thinking, whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it, Demi whip Moore it. doing the whip it. What a perfect, this was oh, perfect example perfect. of how this perfect. is supposed to be done. Really well done. It really has nothing to do with uh, the band. No. Uh, it's a twist on the words of the song. You know the song. It's That's some lame topical. anniversary again. Man, you nailed it, Dr. Gay. Well, does this mean we can just stop using that name? What, Travis? We did. We oh. stopped using Travis. It's Dr. Gay. Everyone knows <laughs> that. Dr. Gay. Dr. Gay. Well, the story goes, Demi Moore reportedly had a seizure after doing a lot of whippets. What Which the is fuck? just really odd. Like, what the fuck is she doing with whippets? Because her husband's fucking young tens. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, she's out of her mind. Imagine seeing somebody you dated or were married to. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're banging people in their age group who are fucking hot. Yeah. But, oh. yeah. but the story goes, Ashton Kutcher is playing it both ways, though. He's, like, getting slightly jealous uh, when Demi Moore kind of does her thing. Because they're at a lot of events together. And then he goes off after being a little jealous, and then he's at the bar trying to pick up a 10. Ah. So he, he, he's a pussy. He's got to, like, just, look, if that's what you want to do, then go. Gotcha. Just what, fucking go. What are he's talking about this stuff on Twitter. No, that's no, right. No. Anyone who follows him, he's just. No, a, he couldn't handle his own Twitter, I, remember? Uh, guys, right. could you do it for me? He couldn't handle his own Twitter. It's too much. I'm going to lose, lose my sponsorships. But there's a good article in the in the paper, like, when he's feeling like weakness he goes back to Demi yeah not goes back back but Demi. just just enough to make her think oh fuck maybe we, we're gonna work this out and then she gets news you know fast forward a day later he's uh, picking up tens mm. I say fucking just move on move yeah. on with that shit yeah some people can't but then she turns around and what she gets a bunch of fucking uh, whipped cream and <laughs> <laughs> starts sucking up the gas Is she sucking 50? up the gas yeah. You're 50. I know. Yeah, whippets, whippets are for the young, man. Why don't you just you know, well, that's smoke some weed or something uh, if you want? Take whippets a few pills. Are silly. That's dumb. She had a seizure. <laughs> Jeez, she seized up. An old how lady. Do, how do you get a seizure uh, from doing uh, whippets? Because you're 50 doing whippets. Yeah. Yeah. There are things you just can't do. Yeah, man. And she's uh, ass play and whippets are, are for the young. Ass play and whippets are for the young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's she definitely looks like she's got some kind of a uh, eating disorder at this point. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. gaunt, very skinny. Yeah, uh, you can see every tendon in her neck and yeah. jaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She doesn't look happy right there. I'll tell you that much. She looks fucking beautiful. How how long ago is that shot for an older lady? Holy fuck! I don't know. That's not say. that long ago. Turn that sand before I kiss you on the neck. You know, you can't say she's ugly. She's, she's really hot, man. No, that's no. that's hot. That's a hot picture of her that's right there. Pretty. That that's followed up with for her age though. Nah. nah. I think nah, she's pretty man. Old. You nah. you see other women uh, at that age, they're not even coming close to looking that. Well, that's horrible, obviously. No, I'd give her. We're a looking at a picture lick. right now where she's completely anorexic. I mean, completely. Wow. She couldn't be uh, much thinner than that. Mm. Same picture. Same. That's same the same night. photo shoot. Look at the dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess you're right. That face, though. You know what? You ladies lose a lot of weight. It makes your face look good. <laughs> Stretches the skin over the skull. Looks nice. You got those cheekbones happening again, but the rest of your body looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing whippets like a Devo song. Yeah, that's what that the was. What we the played, gag was. We played it. That was the uh, yeah. late to the party oh, on that. Boy. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. So what? Is she all right? She's in rehab or something? Rehab for whippets? How humiliating! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I fucking hate celebrities. <laughs> yeah, they popped her in the hospital, and uh, they, uh, you know, for whippets. How embarrassing! Yeah, She's getting some professional help. What's is. the matter? I, I, I am addicted to a delicious treat. Yeah. Cool Whip. Whip. Cool Whip. Yeah, yeah. Try, you try doing it with Cool Whip, just lifting the lid and breathing. It doesn't quite work. You need that ready <laughs> yeah. Whip. I have cottage cheese. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but this is good. This is good for, for inhaling. It's small curd. Uh, fucking uh, curd. Small <laughs> curd. Without mandarin oranges, cottage cheese is a complete waste of time. Oh, mandarin oranges rule. I also you have the, a... Uh, you, put, you put a little of the juice in there with the mandarin oranges, you got a nice little uh, treat. Doesn't beat mac and peaches, though. 
Those are uh, good. I like the peaches. How about the, banana? You banana, banana boom. boom. You make what? everything suck. Why? <laughs> Bananas and cottage cheese when you could have mandarin oranges or a little peach thing with the syrup. No, I just like syrup. I, syrup. I like to do a little spoon. Uh, I mean, I, I go, oh, 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 Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. I like uh, a little vanilla yogurt with uh, that banana. You shove a banana in there, yep. let it drip down the, the banana, and then and then smack your face with it. Oh. Yeah, it's like a pecker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Chip. <laughs> Maybe Demi Moore is depressed <laughs> because she didn't have one daughter that didn't have that giant fucking chin. That big, big Bruce jaw. Willis fucking jaw they wound up getting. Maybe that set her into a fucking Scout frenzy. Scout and rumor. They got these. Men. Look at that oh, fucking man. jaw. Your mom's Demi Moore. They got the Bruce Willis big fucking That jaw. looks like a prosthetic, doesn't it? Yeah, looks like she did it for a roll. Is there any way you could scrape that shit down? Yeah, they, got, they get in there with a chisel. For real? Yeah, you think like fucking cosmetic surgery is all uh, gentle, and they're like, okay, we'll make an incision here, we'll slowly do this, and, that. and and they take a chisel, and they're like, bang, bang, bang. Wow, it's crazy. Oh man, look at those jaws on these broads. Oh my god, your mom's Demi. Because you take not attractive. If you, she that daughter. Would, you know what though, like. You know, put the piece of paper up and get rid of the fucking jaw part, and, and they're really attractive. Well, she looks like that uh, actress. What's her name there? Yes. Yeah. You know, I know exactly. The who. sisters. Uh, yeah. uh, Becky Sue Tuttle? No, the one that was in... Uh, oh, fuck, help me out. Uh, yeah, yeah. It starts with T. Uh, T. T with T. Uh, T. My aunt. Tilly. Tilly, yes. The Jennifer, Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. Tilly or, yeah, she does or the look other like Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. Is it Jennifer Tilly? Yeah. Or the other Tilly? She's a sister? I didn't know that. Yeah, the Tillys. Right. Jennifer Tilly is so Meg God Tilly. Damn hot. Meg Tilly. Oh right. Yeah. She is. She was always sexy. No. She was. I think she's fat now. Is she? Oh. She always fucking drips sexuality. I get the that sisters confused. Let's see this. Mm. Oh. She's got some big tits. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, there she is, looking a little more bruised. But wow, I'd still go there. Yeah, yeah, you no got problem it. You there. Got yeah, the she story. had some sexy roles over the years. Fuck, oh, yeah, fuck. she was fucking Michael Madsen with her husband watching. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that that's one, one of the greatest sex scenes ever. Yeah, that's a good one. And then Michael Madsen laughs at the loser and closes the bathroom door. Look for Meg. See what she looks like. Meg Tilly. Meg Tilly. Because uh, that's the other sister. What? <laughs> what happened there? That's, uh, yeah, yeah. What was Meg she from again? in her day. What movie is that from? Wasn't she in uh, uh, Where They Go Away for the Weekend? Uh, Kevin Bacon was the corpse. The weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> they all went away for, got back together after many years. Yeah. Man, uh, the woodsman. Happened? The woodsman. Oh, the woodsman. No, what the fuck was I know which movie? one you mean. The Not Big Chill? Yeah. The Big Chill. I never saw that. Was she in The Big Chill? Meg Tilly's old, huh? Yeah, it happens to all of us. She's older than uh, the sister. I think yeah. she was in The Big Chill. Oh, there yeah. you go. I think that's the only movie I, I know her from. I thought it was the same uh, girl. She's uh, 51. 51. Yeah. 51. Got a birthday coming up on uh, Valentine's Day. Get her one of those long stem roses from Steven Singer. To uh, gold, you know. Our pal Army Hammer was arrested for marijuana possession. We should be arrested for that name. That sounds like baking Army soda. Hammer. I know. I like that. He's like a, a newer, a newer friend of the show. Really cool guy. And it turns out what he got arrested in the same place that Snoop and uh, Willie Nelson got arrested. Morgan Weed. Yeah. Texas doesn't uh, deal with the pot too well, huh? No. And what, he spent a night in jail and he's good now? Yeah, he got arrested back in November and he spent a night in jail and had to So why is the story coming out today? A thousand dollars bond. I don't know. Maybe the... Anyone that maybe just fucking public, goes to know. jail for just some weed. It's so ridiculous at this point. Just fucking decriminalize it completely. It really is dumb. Yeah. Ah, pot. Ooh, look out. So much more damage. People fucking... Down in a bottle of Maker's Mark and hopping in their car. Yeah. yeah. Decapitating children driving the wrong way on a fucking uh, expressway. The bit's been done a million times, but when you're on a lot of pot, you're driving a lot slower. Yeah, and you just, it's fucking, it doesn't not, make any and sense. And you're not fighting anyone in a bar. No. 
People are very mellow and just want to sleep. Yeah. They're, they're working on it. They'll, they'll make it... Uh, well, they got to figure out how to monetize it, and then they'll certainly uh, make it legal. Well, you know what? You don't even have to monetize it at this well, point. Well, that's what they're just waiting the, for. The, the money that would be saved in the criminal justice system by just not, not fucking prosecuting these people. Yeah. And not tying up prison space with uh, people that... that have some weed. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Let's get into the uh, the Oscar De La Hoya thing. Jimmy oh. is a little mad get about into this. his ass, right? <laughs> huh? Right. Yeah. So That's what, what I happened? Say. What? What's going on with this Oscar De La Hoya? This enchanting young model. She's calling herself a model now. Yeah. Well, she is. She's done Playboy. She's done like Maxim. But she also does some other things. It looks like. I don't know. Like, she might be one of those girls who you call up. I think he met her online. Where, who goes over, and you have dinner with them, like they had dinner, and he was like promising her apparently stuff like, you know, you know dental work or whatever she needs, like, you know, kind of sugar daddy type stuff, it seems. Ah, uh, yeah. But I don't know if she fucks, I'm guessing she does, but I don't know. I, yeah. Uh, but she was the one that released all the pictures of him in the No, 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 no that's, all, that's different. <laughs> different girl. That's different some girl. other That was a stripper. I can't keep, shit. This is a new one. I can't keep track of this, Jimmy. They went to the Ritz and he had a suite. This is a newer. This is oh, a new story. On the Ritz. Ritz. Oh, then why the fuck are they showing the old pictures? I thought they were. That's the what they do. There. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm she, out on this. Oh, that's right, because she said that he wanted to wear her underwear and had and she had some sex toys come. Oh. And um, she wouldn't say what he wanted, but I'm going to guess he wanted things in his ass. Well, that's who my guess. Doesn't Jim. Who doesn't? Yeah, it goes without saying. I mean, if yeah. you're alive, you should want that. Right. But then uh, I guess she called up a girlfriend to come over, and, like, she felt trapped in her room because she was, like, afraid if she came out, Oscar would want to have sex again. It's like It just oh, sounds so boy. fucking annoying. Oh, boy. One of those nights. Yeah, she's doing it for $5 million. For what? what oh. They, what's the cause? Intentional infliction of emotional distress. All right. And, uh... She went to the hotel room with them. <laughs> just enraging. Another case of fucking... What the fuck is this about? It just a bitch trying to get some K. So it seems like, yeah. I like uh, putting on women's underwear every so often, those silky ones. You look funny with the top of your boner sticking out of the top. I never did. I did it <laughs> once in my life. Like, look at me. My boner's sticking out over there. I, I, Sam could not turn quick enough to Travis Same. to have them fucking cap that what I just said about you, you wearing women's panties. <laughs> you got to try some of this stuff, Sam. I mean, I don't know if I'll try. Yeah. I know that tomorrow... Open up a little bit. Tomorrow we'll have new production, True Confessions from Anthony Cumia. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> True Confessions. <laughs> True Confessions. You never threw on a pair of uh, the girls' panties uh, while you're having a little of that uh, sex play? No. And uh, you, you look all silly and you, you get a good laugh out of it because your boner's sticking out over the, the no. top of the elastic? Sam's a puppet eyebrow dud. Because <laughs> I don't wear pants. Exactly. I, I, I think every time Sam comes, he's just ashamed. <laughs> yeah. He's at that stage still. Yeah. I'm just ashamed. He just rolls over. He's just on the end of the bed because when he was growing up, he would do it. Mother would come in and pat his back and go, Sam, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Natural to have these dreams. <laughs> right. Don't yes. look at me. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll take care of the sheets. We'll wash them. Yeah. Don't worry. And then she'd have to take his Hulk Hogan doll in and clean the leg off. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pepsi. I I swear. <laughs> yeah. That's my excuse. That's a dumb excuse. I wouldn't mind wearing like crotchless stockings or something. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I wish. I wish I was Whoa. into that with a girl. I mean, really? it's, yeah. Oh no, that's a little it's much. Just perverted. I think the panties are kind of funny. They're, they're funny, and 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 uh, the silk is kind of nice. What's the What's bad about having a little silk rubbing on your dick? I, it's great. It's smooth. It's silky because I, it's like silk. I can't get past the fact that it just is silly. It's silly. Oh, believe me, I'm not you know? doing it like, yeah, this is fucking great. Right. I, I like doing this. And, stuff. and I haven't, honestly, have not done that in, in fucking years and years. But, uh, yeah, every, every once in a while, you just grab it. You're a panty boy. And throw it on. <laughs> and, and, panty boy. I don't think I'm panty boy. <laughs> it's a panty I don't think I'm boy. panty boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always keep them laughing. <laughs> just a visual. No. Panty what boy. What else we have on Oscar De La Hoya? So, that's it. What, this... what else we have in Oscar De La Hoya? Oh, yeah. A $5 million lawsuit. Cause she was saying that she Man. wanted to pursue a relationship. and Ah, it's all bullshit. Yeah. She's just looking for her payday, which is uh, a new new phenomenon out there. Another bullshit Speak, fucking story. It's so irritating. These fucking models and these chicks that come to your hotel. Mm. And I, I'm assuming he paid her to be there. Like, what the fuck do you expect? Yeah, and they want a little more. And he's such a pervert. He ordered Coke, and he ordered some pot. And, oh, um... 
you know. And she spills the beans. Like uh, fucking she big was mouth. O- and she was okay with all that? Oh, I'm sure. I, you know, apparently she was. You know, it leads yeah. to the other story. Which, oh, my uh, God, yeah. Wow. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a woman here in New York yelling rape. And, uh, you know, as soon as you say, uh, as soon as you say you don't believe her. You know, a lot of women come out of the woodwork, but you're there's the a lot problem of... because that's why women don't like coming forward because people like you say they're lying or it's not true. Look, I don't know what happened. Yeah, this, there's a guy. Uh, his name's Greg Kelly. Does yes. uh, does a little TV show every morning on Fox and uh, not Fox and Friends, local Fox. Fox. Yeah, Good, day Fox. Good day, New York. Good day, New York. New York. And. He uh, and his father. He's the son of Ray, Ray Kelly, Kelly, police commissioner of New York City. Sure, Ray Kelly. And today he's on the front page of the paper because some woman is accusing him of rape. Now, uh, and initially, when I first heard the story, I first heard the beginning of the story. I, I, I'm listening intently, and I hear uh, some things that make me think, ah, I don't know about this. Um, a woman came forward Tuesday, this past Tuesday, right, and said that he had. Uh, she walked into a police station. Walked into a police station with, with one of her friends, or sister, sister or friend. with her sister, and said that uh, this gentleman had uh, somehow sexually uh, assaulted her, right, some way, shape, or form, right. Well, it supposedly took place in October. Now, a lot of the women, I'll, I'll speak for them. They're going to go, "Well, look, she was scared to come forward at first. Right, right, scared to come but forward at first. Somehow they met. I don't know. It was in the on street. Way. On online on the street, they, the street yeah. yeah, they went and had a few drinks back in October, and then she brought him back to her office, Law firm, to the right. office, and they had sex. Now at night, at the office, after you know you're out, you're not doing a few, you know, you're not doing some work. There's, you're not because she didn't have to catch up on some work, and he tagged along to help file. I think I think there's a lot of people out there that certainly use their offices for sex when yeah. they when they have nowhere else to go, right. And why else would you go back to the office at that exactly. point? Exactly. I believe so she's a very boyfriend. S- yes, well, and that's... there is the problem. There's the fucking brunt of this whole so story. We, I think we're in agreement. We feel that the boyfriend found out. Yeah. Right. Maybe through a text they, or something. They probably had right. some consensual sex. Right. And now in that office, the boyfriend finds out. And now she's in a panic. Yeah, she panics. She's trying to explain herself because maybe, you know, she doesn't have an actual relationship with uh, Greg Kelly. Maybe it was just a, a tryst. I don't know. Yep. And now... Uh, and then she, she's got to go, well, uh, I didn't do it willingly. Well, uh, what, what happened? <laughs> oh, baby, oh, okay. 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 Shut it. But here's the problem. This, this is what annoys me. This his, is an unpopular stance, by the way. I, I yeah, hope well, people understand we're, we're being brave right now. His, his brave. name. I'm serious because most people aren't going to say this shit. His name is in the paper. Accused of rape. Right. And she, hers is not. Right. I'm, I completely agree with protecting the victim's mm-hmm. identity. But the fact that you can publicly be accused of rape while the victim's identity, you should not be. They shouldn't print your name right. until you're convicted. Right. If they're going to go by those rules, because if he's innocent, uh, you know, it's yeah. fucking. He's already associated with a smeared. rape charge. Right. He's smeared. Yeah. Um, that's all we know. That's that's our that's our thoughts on it. That's, My opinion. Uh, yes. We'll yeah, have yeah, to wait and see think. as more info comes out. But yeah, we'll see what happened. But this is uh, this seems extremely suspicious. Yeah, I, I think like the she, boyfriend found like out. Like, she might have been fooling around, obviously, mm. and all of a sudden the boyfriend mm-hmm. finds out, and now she needs a story. Yeah, because mm. why are you going, why are you meeting him in the street and going for drinks? What the fuck are you doing? Right. Stop it. Right. Yeah. There's no. intent there, right? No means no, no matter when I say it. Shut up. I just don't buy it. Shut up. Even though, yeah. We could be uh, completely wrong, and we'll certainly no means no. Yeah. admit that. I won't, but we'll have to, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll spend it. Greg Kelly, I mean, the little I know about him, he's like just a, yeah, doesn't seem like the type, but. Well, he just wanted to fucking get laid, eh, whatever. Uh, oh, the two also stayed in contact after this uh, alleged rape. So yeah, the Daily would... News article oh, says uh, the woman who had invited the anchor back to her office continued to have contact with him after the alleged rape. Okay, so he rapes her, and then they continue a text relationship. That's how it works. Yeah, See? that's what you do. See? Guy raped you. Keep talking to him. That makes a lot of sense. And then there was probably some kind of text and something happened. The boyfriend saw it, realized, like, there was shenanigans, and she fucking loses her mind. 
Yeah, because she was dumb and probably put his name in yeah. as his name. Yeah. Or he texted his cock or whatever it was oh. that happened. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have done. <laughs> of course. <laughs> wow, what an idiot. Well, <laughs> uh, I just think, uh, yeah, this, uh, boy, it's hard to... It's hard to squeak out from under those rape charges. Yeah, you have to protect yourself. Yes, you do. Always protect yourself. Exactly. Yeah, because what does the front page say? Kelly son, son sex probe. And sex probe. Front page. Wow. Of course, her name is protected. And if if she's in, it, if she's telling the truth and he's guilty, he should be publicly humiliated. Yeah, of but course. But not until he's convicted. Of course. There's some suspicious stuff here, though. Yep. October and she comes forward now. Yeah, why, November, why? December, January. Three why? months later, and and stays in communication with the guy. Yeah, yeah I don't buy that. Uh, that's that's like someone awful. might be trying to cover their eyes. I know a comedian who was, uh, I think a chick blew him, and she had a boyfriend and she was an agent, and then a boyfriend found out or whatever happened, oh, and then she tried to file rape charges. Oh God! And, uh, he didn't do it. And uh, now he's suing her for a lot of money. A comic, you know? Yeah. For defamation. Wow. I think. Or whatever, or slander, whatever the, the legal term is. I'm so happy. I hope he fucking gets everything from oh, her. Oh, man. Wow. First of all, she's an agent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But second of all, if uh, she tried to ruin his fucking life to protect yeah. her relationship, the twat. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a load of shit. Unbelievable. Now this. Gentlemen, give yourself a gift of a night with Jenna Jameson. Get ready for the first Boston area appearance of adult video superstar Jenna Jameson. He's Oh, wow. <laughs> I love when Jimmy figures oh, it out. First boy. Boston appearance oh, of Jenna boy. Jameson. Well, now, where no. the fuck Wait, what? was this found? Do you know what this is, Jimmy, yet? No. Oh, but, I mean, I do I know. I think. Thing. Oh, I know what program it's from. Okay. But I, I'm just going back and thinking first Boston appearance of Jenna Jameson. That's mid 90s. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Remember how Anthony was bragging about his production skills oh, yesterday? Look, I was never bragging about my skills. I was bragging about the fact that my skills were recognized. And, and you got an award. <laughs> exactly. Can There's a difference again? there, you know. Oh, well, we got more. Kevin from Connecticut, thank you. Where did he find this shit? Kevin from Connecticut has been collecting audio of our show since the AF. Commercials days. from back then are still fucking. He's good. Well, he probably he had you know, on tape or something. He probably uh, recorded entire shows with the commercials and everything. And this wasn't my award winning spot, you know. And I still stand by this. They told me, put a lot of echo on it. It was all about echo back then. It's all about echo when you're doing strip club and sound like fucking. You know, yeah, guys, come on in here, get some pussy. You know, you had to sound like that. Gentlemen, give yourself a gift of a night with Jenna Jameson. Get ready for the first Boston area appearance of adult video superstar Jenna Jameson. He's at Matthews and Jamesboro now through Saturday, and she's guaranteed to pack it in wall to wall. You don't want to get left out in the cold. Hot, busty, natural blonde, beautiful face. Jenna's got it all, and she's going to show it to you now through Saturday at Matthews and Jamesboro. Due to anticipated overwhelming demand, Jenna will be making a special additional floor show each day at 5 p.m. Other shows at 8, 10, and midnight. Guys. If there's one lady that sets the standard for all others to aspire to, it's Jenna James. And it's only one adult entertainment club good enough to have her appear. Matthews and Tim's for a world class adult entertainment with a touch of class. In the last 90 days, Matthews has presented you a beautiful adult film star. Now through Saturday, Matthews is bringing you the best, the hottest, the star of Wicked Pictures film, the one and only Jenna Jameson. Matthews is located off Route 3 and exit 36, just 40 minutes from downtown Boston. For more information and directions, call Matthews at 508 649 20 2900. Just wow. 40 minutes from Boston. <laughs> and terrible. The, and the music ended perfectly. Yeah, see, I, I had a Not so all terrible, that Jimmy. Fucking Matthews. No, not at all. We fucking hung out no, at Matthews. No, no what's punch. terrible is, 40 is, minutes. is to say that just yeah. 40 minutes from downtown Boston. Because that's what you want to do drive 40 minutes to a strip club, but yeah. drink, yeah. and then drive back most, in Boston. Most people didn't live in Boston proper that were mm. listening to our show, though, so. That's true. Well, I don't think the drive from Worcester was any treat either. No. Tell you the truth. Matthews was good, though. They, they yeah. treated us nice up there. Matthews in Tingsboro. Blah. Is it still there? I'm, I'm a puker know. on that. I don't know. Yeah, we used to call that puking. Sounds like a WWE commercial. Sounds like Monster Truck commercial. A lot of yeah, echo. Yeah, they wanted that. A lot of echo, a lot of fucking... That's what they wanted. Yeah, Classy adult entertainment with a touch of class. 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 Classy class at a class classy. Yeah, class. class. Some about class. Yeah, class or a class. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was pretty good.
Well, he should uh, get some of my award-winning um, spots because that's that's just silly. Do you remember which one actually won the award? Yeah, it was for that head shop. What the fuck was that oh, head shop called? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, Hyannis. Right? It was the one in yeah. Hyannis. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah it was a head uh, shop. Hyannis. Yeah, that's what they used to say. Sam? It looks like Matthews is now Angela's coal fried or coal fired pizza. Angela's oh, coal fired God. pizza. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. hot pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big juicy pepperonis. <laughs> Do they realize and dripping with cheese? <laughs> right. Do they realize vaginas were all over that place. I know. Now they're making pizza. Yeah, great. All right. Hey, uh, we're doing a best man uh, speech competition. Are we getting entries? Yes. I sure hope so. Any good ones yet, Sam? Uh, yeah, there are a bunch of them. We have to go through and figure out. Maybe next week we'll play some of them. Oh, good. Yeah. I got an example of another one just oh. to get the contest really rolling. Nice. Oh. Danny pulled this one. Um, basically, we're looking for those really bad best man speeches and, and, and the bride of honor, too. Yeah, and you get made of honor. Excuse me, the made of honor speeches, which is really hot these days. Thousand dollars from we who want to be embarrassing? Well, Steven Singer Jewelers, of course. Oh, of course. Is he the only sponsor to this show? Yes. Yep. Me and I were talking about this the other day. Is he the only sponsor? We're amazed. We're going to say it. Yeah, yeah. That a fucking beer company is not sponsoring uh, this radio show. How does the we sales department? We just have department. four of them. It's a crack sales department. They suck. How do they not just get some beer on board? And don't blame us. We're doing the show that we were, you know, asked to do and paid to do, and we do it a, a great job at this. Believe me. Yeah. Uh, so how come you can't just go to a, a beer company, uh, something that fits the lifestyle of the the listeners, uh, you know, m knives, <laughs> uh, and just. Get fucking the beer guys it's on. It's literally on board. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. We have great. We had great relationships with Budweiser and, well, Sam Adams, but. Uh, mm. uh, mm. Mueller. I think he's. What's ready. that beer sponsors we had? I think he's ready to come back. I'm still. I think Jim Cook's ready to come back. You think? I don't know about that. I think so. God, how long has it been? I, I, Please. I, let me see if I still have his number. Should we call him? I hope he. No. You guys can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> you think I'm was... never coming on board with you again. Oh, you know what? That's my beer. That's how bad it is. I think I did take him out of my phone. Oh. I used to have his cell number. I'm sorry, Opie. The number you've reached <laughs> right. has been disconnected. Well, wait. Maybe I got him under Sam Adams. <laughs> Jim Sam Adams. Uh oh Jim Sam Adams. Let's see if he's willing to come back on our show. He was a nice guy, but I never, you know, his stupid hops. Not if you pound 50 pounds of Hops up your asshole, pound. <laughs> yeah, I just got a, I just got a office number now. Mm. I used to have, <laughs> I used to have real good digits for him. No digits. No more. My digits. Yeah. Hey. What? All oh, right, boy. So Steven Singer, our only sponsor, and we love Steven Singer. Don't yeah, get, don't get us wrong. Oh, well, thank God for, for the Singer. he's right. this contest sponsor. It's a thousand dollars. He sponsors every contest. He loves the show very much. Now, I guess he's the only one that they can get on board. Right. Yeah. The only one. Right. Who they can get any advertising for? It's not the people aren't doing their jobs. He's the only <laughs> one. Right. That's good. Um, good job. So uh, where do they send their best man speeches, Sirius which XM. are really bad, obviously? Right, right of course. SiriusXM.com slash Opie and Anthony has all the rules and the email address. Right. And, and are you getting maid of honor things, too? I think just best man speeches. Is that the contest? We can't have maid of honors in there? Without no, we can. Just so yeah. far, we've only had best well, man. Well, how, how about it, ladies? You exactly. Know, you know how it is with ladies in these contests, man. You know someone so has bombed chore. at a wedding. You know about it. Get that audio and send it in. You can win money. Here's an example of another really bad best man speech. Well, I'm a really bad public speaker, so I just want to appreciate what the, what the camera is. Uh, is it like sweet on YouTube or something like that, or Gmail, or whatever it has. Because, uh, that's the is such an awesome guy. His heart is so big that everyone in the room can have a part of it. And I appreciate that. His heart is so big that everyone in the room could have a, a part, part of it. Part of it. Is this a zombie wedding? Yeah, there's enough heart to go around. 
Is this hot some lungs? Uh, you want a long little wing? Uh, how about a wing? <laughs> and I appreciate that Kenny actually found an awesome girl, and an awesome girl, Michelle, actually found Kenny. I heard a snicker. Uh oh, did you just drop the end bomb? Okay, I'll oh, do I heard a snicker. I'm going to do my speech because I actually think it's funny in my mind. Because I know other people that really find it funny in your own mind. If you find it funny in my mind, you'll find it funny in your mind. Bring the mic up. Bring the mic up. Bring the mic up. Hold the mic closer. What's going on here? I don't know. It's, it's Sam? a catastrophe. Not good at public speaking. But He's then not, what's going on with the mic? He's not talking into it. Yeah, it's very low. Just holding it. So everyone's yelling. Put, yeah, talk into the microphone, dum dum. Oh, so the audio's going to get better? I hope so. Unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, some of these guys, if they're bad, they, they don't have any confidence. And if they don't have confidence, they don't speak into the mic properly. He also started by saying he didn't want anybody to share it on YouTube or Gmail. <laughs> or Gmail. Gmail. <laughs> Kenny actually asked me as the best man. I said no for the longest time because I don't like public speaking and I'm not a good liar. And it's killing. It's a good line. If you guys like this joke. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see everyone here making it for the trip and you know, being safe and coming down here. I can't be well. It's, a, it's actually been a privilege to be asked by Kenny to be his best man. <laughs> I don't like any of you people. It's killing though. What happened? Well, yeah. well I suppose... The first thing you have to do is, you know, I'm Jeff. So I'm like, please, please, please. Bear with me, people. I got a full page here. I'm not like the first couple of mine. I'm Jeff. Uh, my full name is uh, Jeff. Would you like a drink? And uh, if anyone wants to talk to me later, chat, I would prefer if you use my full name. Jeff, would you like a drink? Oh, boy. So uh, if I do a good job tonight, Kenny's going to ask me to be his best man at his next wedding. This guy. Really? You got it? No, but I'm doing good, though, right? Yeah. Not about you. This guy's making it all about him. Does everyone in here more for Jeff? Can you, can you finish this up? I mean, we just gotta be respectful. That's all you have to do. I mean, basically, with your best man's speech, what you have to do is congratulate Kenny, congratulate him on his bride, say how much he's bettered his life, and I think that's what you have to do with the speech. You so, tell me this now? Yeah. We can go, man. He didn't give me a call. It's technology. So, hey, let's start over there. Do that. Okay, I got two more jokes. <laughs> If I did this, I'm not going to cut it anymore. Okay. This is terrible. <laughs> this is really bad. Really bad. Nice light. Okay. Okay, the last 
Oh, I actually talked to uh, Kenny's co-workers and everything, and they, uh, like, how would you explain Kenny? Is, you know, being a good guy, good heart, and everything, and they actually said, uh, he was, like, dad like Because, uh, he's, uh, he's really seen, he's holier than thou, if he does any work, it's What? Can't hear you! Okay, I'm done. That was painful. Those are jokes and everything, so now I'm the mysterious. Um, well, actually, for the important people, without them, I definitely wouldn't be here. So I, I want to. Uh, not done? To the bar staff. <laughs> and uh, to close, for, for Kenny and Michelle, I wish you well for the future. Shut up. To love, to life, to laughter, oh. and happily ever after. Ah, I, oh, that's a sensitive I don't want not to Kenny and Michelle, but Kenny and Michelle, I give you Kenny and Michelle. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, is that it, hopefully? I guess we're looking for that, but hopefully uh, hopefully your audio is a little better. Yeah. Uh, we're looking for, uh, I think, something a little quicker. <laughs> something a little more concisely douchey. It doesn't have to be that bad to win the $1,000. No, 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 that was just really bad. Could people understand the audio, hopefully? Kind of. Part time. Kind of. I caught about a quarter of that. Yeah. <laughs> Like talking to Roland, catch every fourth letter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have to take a break. So we're looking for your uh, really bad best man speeches. Yes. Yeah, Where's the website again? SiriusXM.com slash Opie and Anthony. All right, that sucked the energy out of the room, but we're going to get wow. it back, people. Yes. We're going to get it back. We got Henry Winkler, the Fonz, coming in next. Yes. Yeah. He's promoting his book, I've Never Met an Idiot on the River, Reflections of Family, Photography, and Fly Fishing. He never mentioned it last time he was when, we, when he stopped in. Yeah, never bumped into him. Bob Kelly while he was fishing? <laughs> See, get it? An idiot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to him next. Stay there. We like it when people like us. So why don't you follow the Opie and Anthony Show online by checking out our Facebook and hitting like. Just go to Facebook.com slash Opie and Anthony. Now you can stay up to date with all of the latest show info and continue to stalk your high school sweetheart at the same time. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Let's get Henry Winkler in studio. Henry Winkler. Here Henry he Winkler is back. How you been? Oh, we met him very briefly a few months ago. Yeah, he's dropped in. Uh, he was doing a bunch of other uh, stations and dropped in. He was kind enough to come in and say hi to us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that was uh, that that uh, was un, um, unannounced. Yes, it was yeah, very yeah. unplanned. It wasn't official. No, this is this official. Is an this is an official yeah. visit. Yeah, sir. And I thought I would dress up for you. Yeah, I, you smell I very like good it. too. That is uh, yeah, you smell nice. Very, you're, very, you're very welcome. You know Thank what you're dressed like though? An author. Yeah. You're dressed like an author. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, let's make sure we get the title of the book right uh, right off the bat here. I've never met an idiot on the river. Reflections on family, photography, and fly fishing. Yes, that was my first adult book. Mm. And then last week, uh, Ghost Buddy came out. Oh, are we promoting Ghost Buddy and not the other one? Well, you know what? We can promote both because oh, okay. uh, maybe we would sell uh, a fishing book. Yes. But uh, the, the fishing book, it was a book of photographs that I took while fly fishing for trout. Right. But Ghost Buddy, I write with Lynn Oliver. It is our 19th novel wow. together. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And it's uh, for kids from uh, 7 to 14. Uh. And uh, it's a story about uh, two young men. Mm. Uh, one is a ghost. And he finds the ghost uh, in his closet. Uh, Billy Broccoli moves into a brand new uh, home with a, a new blended family. His father is a dentist. You know, we wear cell phones on our belts. His father now wears floss. Oh, okay. And uh, he can't sleep. Mm -hmm. His baseball jersey floats out of the closet. It mires itself in front of the mirror, turns around, and says, All right, look, you can call me a ghost. You can call me Phantom. You call me a banshee, I think that is rude. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's Fonzie, damn it. I, I know I, I just heard the Fonz. I, I heard the Fonz. Where? <laughs> Can I? I was doing, uh, uh, yes, Hoover yes, Porterhouse the Third, or also known as yeah. The Hoof. We, uh, <laughs> the Hoof. We, we were literally just talking about you a few days ago. About how you were the greatest sitcom character possibly ever. Wow. As far as popularity goes. Wow, that's very lovely. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, definitely. As far as popularity goes, yeah, we couldn't yeah. think of someone that uh, was bigger. Well, I'll tell you what, what still kills me. That now, all these years later, over 30 years later, people stop me everywhere in the world um, as if... You know, I was just on the air as if it is it a probably brand were. new show. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's uh, and playing all over. But it's, it is amazing. Amazing. Do you ever get sick of it? Is never. It? No, ever, never. Ever. Oh, good. bravo for you, because a lot of people would say, yeah. But look what happened. Come on, house I don't know that I would be sitting here in front of this microphone with you if I didn't do that first. Right, right. You know, he, he introduced me to the world. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had a great time last time. Yeah. I was really looking forward to coming. Yeah. When you, well, it's weird to write because you write for... I, I, I mean, the first time we met was at a book signing you were doing in a re reading at Barnes & Noble on 68th Street. That's right. And I just saw your name, so I'm like, all right, I'll buy a book. I, I didn't know what it was, and I sat down. Yeah, I think you showed great taste. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was actually, it was an enjoyable... You know, it's, it's for, uh, like you said, you know, 10, 10, 11-year-old... Kids and it's kind of cool because it gets them into it gets them into reading yes, young. So that you can't is, start reading cynical biographies at seven. That's what happens. Uh, the letters that we get are from parents who say, "Oh my goodness, I just passed my children's room mm -hmm. and they were laughing reading a book." Uh, reluctant readers, we don't write down to the kids, so they write, "Hey, how did you know me so well?" And uh, some kids just write and say, "You know, it is hilarious." That's hmm. awesome. How do you avoid ad you. adult stuff in a kid's book, though? Like, it would be hard, I think, to write for something that a kid would enjoy as an adult. Like, how do you say, like, ah, that's too adult, that's a reference. Yeah, you know what, you, you, uh, you get a, a feel for it, but there's also stuff because parents read along with the kids, so they read together, mm -hmm. and uh, there's stuff in there for the parents to laugh at, too. Do you know? Uh, so we're very proud of that. Um, Hank Zipser has sold uh, close to four million uh, copies and <laughs> Ghost Buddy just wow. came out. So you think uh, this could turn into a movie? Maybe. I, you know what? It is cinematic. That is for sure. But right. you'd never know. Have any of them turned into movies? Uh, no, not <clears throat> yet. There Surprise. is an English company that <clears throat> wants to do the Hank Zipser sh uh, books as a TV show right. in England. Um, you but, could be the next like Harry Potter. Well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I know my limitations. <laughs> No, that, that was an amazing, that's uh, an amazing, an amazing explosion. How do you, and how do you market these? Because uh, you come here and you talk to people and hopefully... You talk to uh, the parents. Yes, and, and hopefully parents say, wow, I would like my kid to read. These are funny, funny books. Right. Uh, it's the relationship between this live kid and a ghost who is 14, died 99 years ago. His dream, the ghost's dream, is to see a major league baseball park. But he can't leave the house until he gets good grades from the higher-ups. And the way he gets good grades is by helping the little boy who just moved in the house meet his potential. Except the ghost is irresponsible. Ah, oh, there's the twist. Oh, Probably explain how he died. Twist. Yeah, the ride. 14. Yes. Yeah, he <laughs> took the Model T and uh, crashed into the orange groves. Oh, oh died, boy, that'll do it. used to be uh, Southern California. Now it's all right. homes. So yes. Who, are you a good collaborator? Like, I could never write something with another person. Like, you've written 20 books. You can't books. write anything alone. That's, a good, that's exactly I'm the point. I'm teasing I Jimmy's become a burden. two books. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I, know what? I, I have my partner and I, this is the way we work. I go to her office at 10 o'clock in the morning. She is about 20 minutes from where I live. Uh, we schmooze in the morning, we have a cup of coffee, we talk about the kids. Do you take your bike? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I actually have never ridden a bike. Um, but, that's you know, hysterical. that's my own personal secret. Yeah. It's a torment that I have. I don't doubt it. You rode for the show. We saw you on the bike. Yeah, no, I, I, but that was only uh, going up the hill, and then somebody caught me. <laughs> Someone <laughs> caught him, that's great. Are you yeah. No, you know, the first time they put me on a bike, I had to travel five feet, and I turned the gas, and I'm so dyslexic, I didn't know where the, the oh, gas no. and, the, and the clutch was. I smashed into the sound truck, dropped the bike, we slid under the sound truck, 
They came running up and they pulled the bike out because it was rented. And then they remembered I was rented. <laughs> yeah, the, the important thing. Yeah. The bike. <laughs> they never let me ride it again. Are you really dyslexic? I am. I'm. I. That is where Hank Zipser comes from. Uh, yes, I am uh, learning challenged. Is is he as well? No. no uh, Zipser, Billy I mean. Broccoli is not. He is just socially challenged. No, Hank Zipser. I mean, is uh, Hank Zipser a is yes. Of the Hank is short for Henry. Uh, Zipser mm. was a woman who lived on the fourth floor of my apartment building. I thought it was a zippy name. But uh, Ghost Buddy, no, this is about bullying and about being responsible to one another. So what happened when you were you're dyslexic? Because, you know, now we know what that is. But years ago, they had no, no idea. I just, just thought I was stupid. They, they, they just said you're <laughs> yeah. stupid and you can't learn. That's exactly right. And what finally happened where they were like, oh, there's, a, there's something my to this. My son, my stepson, Jed, uh, was in the third grade. And I said everything to him that was said to me. Oh, you're being lazy. Oh, you're not living up to your potential. Go upstairs and try harder. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't write this report. And we had him tested. And everything they said about him was true about me. Wow. So at about 31, I found out that I was not, um, you know, a dumb dog. I literally had a, a name. Is there a way, was it, is it harder to, when you're dyslexic, is it hard to like... To, to read the words in order, or how, how does that affect you? Do you know what? For every child, there is another way. It's wiring in the brain. So some children, uh, it is hard to read. Uh, I can't sound out words. I can't spell at all. Uh, math is difficult for me. Uh, but every child has a variation on a theme, and it is hereditary, so it's passed on from generation to generation. That's why he couldn't say the word wrong. That's right. <laughs> it was a W right. and he trying to sound it out. I remember that. I'm sorry. I was rude. But how did that affect your acting? Yeah, in the script reading. Yeah, in the script you reading. You know what? If you want something bad enough, you figure out how to do it. So right. I read my scripts very slowly. One word mm. at a time so that I got the word on the page and then I memorized it and then uh, once I memorized it once I changed my voice once I started talking like this and I changed my body it was like a and it, it unlocked me Wow. You know, it was like I could, I, I could just do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you just grabbed Jimmy. It, it, it's, but it's almost Very like when, roughly. A, when a stutterer sings. It, it's like it takes away the stutter. Uh, James Earl Jones, major stutterer. Mm -hmm. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, and known as one of the greatest voiceover oh guys. My oh, God. my goodness. Yeah. I yeah. Darth yeah. Vader stuttering? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> Where is the r r ripple bass? <laughs> Doesn't come off as good. You know, I didn't know that until just now. I yeah. didn't either. So how did you get past that? Yeah. He worked on it, right? And when he was acting, when he became a character, he was able to form hmm. the uh, the complete sentence. He's a, a good friend of mine, and he uh, to watch him on stage is like a, a gift, right? You know, what happened to Chuck? Yeah, <laughs> please, wow, please yeah. just tell us. Right. We've okay. been trying to figure this one out for right, okay. season one. Chuck he was did. Richie's brother. What is the yeah. uh, went upstairs, right? And we never heard from him again. <laughs> but then, did, but then okay. Happy Days never even acknowledges he ever existed. Right. No, and he was true. on the opening sequence, which yes, is that's odd. True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, so there were two trucks. Two trucks. One, the first Chuck decided, "Hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be an actor," and left. He just left. Huh? Yeah. How what, far into it? Uh, uh, very, very what, short. Do you know what that guy's doing? Yes, he is in San Diego. I think he sells insurance. Okay. All right. All okay. Right. So he's choice. happy. He would All rather right. do that. Number two, yeah. they hired a second Chuck, and then they realized there was no room for the older brother because the Fonz was becoming the older brother. Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. they sent him upstairs. <laughs> they send him to college, and he is still matriculating. <laughs> yeah, they just write him off. But, they but, wrote him what, right What is out. that guy doing? Uh, he moved to Ireland, yeah. and uh, he became, a, you know, he was an actor. Uh, he was in Willow with uh, okay. Ron Howard, yeah. No kidding. Oh, well, that's, yeah. uh, I guess Ron Howard feels like he owes him one. Yeah, yeah. he feels <laughs> guilty. Yeah. But that's so weird that they wrote him off like that. And, and I wonder, as an actor, do you know that you're being written off? Or, or does your agent go, no, 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 look, this Fonzie thing is going to run its course in six episodes. And <laughs> just stick around. I'll you be know, back. They, they, they almost never tell you. They don't. No, they make mm -hmm. a decision. Uh, you know, you could be in the middle of an episode right. and somebody comes down and says, well, that's it. 
And and your oh geez, yeah. that's it. God. I mean, there was no like thanks for your really hard work. Right. You know, that's yeah. it. Okay, everybody go home. And your character, me and Ann were talking, and Jimmy, uh, was it the whole first season you didn't talk? No, I had six lines. Six lines. Yeah, I yeah. had six lines. But I, then the second I, season, you were talking. Yeah. By by the time we did the show where uh, I was cheating from Richie uh, in class and the bird, um, you know, pooped all over the, the answer, so I had to do it myself. Right. Mm. Uh, that was the beginning yeah. of the rise of the Fonz. So someone saw something in you. Yeah. And the character. Well, the audience, for one. Yeah, the audience yeah. went for it. You yeah. know, I, 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 we came on the air in February of 74, I believe. So in April, I'm making my first appearance in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm getting a thousand dollars to fly to Little Rock and Saturday and Sunday stand in a mall and sign autographs. <laughs> and I got off the plane at 1130 at night uh, after we shot the show in Little Rock. 3,000 people wow. were waiting at the airport. At and the I airport? Thought, yeah, at wow. the airport at 1130 at night. And I thought, oh, my goodness, here's a party. I don't want to, like, disturb their party. Is there another way to walk around? <laughs> and the stewardess said, no, I think they're here for you. Wow. And almost every girl was in a poodle skirt. <laughs> and they were there, uh, and they cheered uh, when I walked off the plane. It was, like, shocking. How was your signing at the mall? Uh, I signed 8,000 <laughs> Oh, man. How many hours? Uh, Saturday and then um, uh, Sunday, and I, I put my arm in a sling. Oh, yeah. From signing, right? <laughs> and then the next uh, um, public appearance I made was in Detroit at Pontiac Stadium. 181,000 people over two days um, filed Jeez. through the stadium. And, to, and, that's wow. and we were saying how fame has changed, and people just don't become that famous anymore, especially no. like uh, if you're doing sitcoms. Uh, Back that then, one, it was it an was, amazing. It was an amazing you, thing. You got mm -hmm. to a point where you couldn't just leave your house. Or no, anything. I stayed home a lot. I read every letter that was sent mm. to me. They they brought me boxes. I had boxes in my apartment because it was scary. Did sure. you have bodyguards? How many bodyguards would you have when you only went out? when I left L.A. Like I was the king of Bacchus, the uh, the beautiful parade at, at Mardi Gras in New Orleans, and I was surrounded by twelve cops, and I walked like in a pod, a pod huh. of policemen, and it w this was amazing. Girls would scream in your ear, you know, as you walk by, and at a certain decibel, you pass out. <laughs> so I learned to walk. Pass out, keep walking. Jesus, you passed out. I did. I because the the the, uh, the decibel, you, you would faint from the 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 perfect scream in your ear. I've had I've had that, but not for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> so you <laughs> couldn't leave. Your was was your reason enjoyable? Oh yeah, that's what briefly. He's <laughs> okay, even for a second. <laughs> that's you, a wonderful uh, thing. Did you know you could pass out from some? I know, I had no idea. idea. I didn't yeah, know. from a, a certain decibel. It was. Uh, it that was, shows I you how famous we are, Henry. Uh -huh. <laughs> that shows you how famous we are. We'll we don't even know that. that. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, never hear that type of a uh, no, decibel. No, it, yeah. it was. How many years did did you live like that? Uh, ten. Ten. Wow. Ten. And then you know when I uh, right now people don't yell at me anymore, but. I'm treated with just extraordinary warmth. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. you go, you, you, put, you know, probably can't go anywhere. You, you still look, you know, you're I exactly... took my children to the, um, uh, to the reservations uh, for the Native Americans in New Mexico at Christmas time. They have Christmas uh, uh, celebrations. And so we were there and we were watching uh, in uh, uh, Santa Fe, outside of Santa Fe. And beautiful, beautiful uh, celebrations. And as I was walking uh, back to my car, these moms came out of their uh, dwellings and literally presented me with baking hot bread <laughs> because I was respectful to Native Americans on a Thanksgiving show. Oh, oh right. my God. Do you know, it was, um, uh, we went to v uh, visit the Hopi in uh, Arizona. Uh, they live on the flat mountains, you know, on the mesas. They watch television. Um, uh, some of them, they have no electricity, so they watch it with their car battery. Oh. <laughs> and I was able to take a picture of the Kachina clown dances. You're not allowed to take a picture of the Hopi. You must lock your camera in the car. I thought that was one of the greatest 
honors of my entire life. Did you sneak the picture or they told you it no, was No, okay? no, no. They said, um, please go get your camera because I was respectful to Native Americans as the Fonz. In an episode? Yeah. So it's really weird how culturally wow. that really affects people and they remember it. Oh. Unbelievable. Well, when Happy Days was on, there was, we talk about three, four channels. Yes, that's right. That's that exactly it. right. Yeah. So, there were three. So we the got country 48% was of all televisions. Right. 48%. Were watching. Yes. 48%. And, and now if a show does, what are we talking? Less 11. 11 is big. Eight. I think it's less than 10. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 48% yeah. of every TV was watching Amazing. Yeah. in that time slot. Yeah. Do you like what's on now? or uh... Some. Uh, you know, what do I watch? I watch Homeland. Uh, Kelsey Grammer's new show, Boss, is amazing. The Good Wife. Did you find the camera work in Boss? It took a little bit of getting used to. The, uh, the, the camera work was very, very... In your face? Yeah. Because the politics is so in your face. The character is so in your they face. They want you yeah. to uh, uh, feel something, right? Yeah. And Homeland is the Claire Danes one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw the whole first season. That was very good. Unbelievable. Um, you know I what? love Harry's Law. Okay. Modern Family. It's funny. And then we just finished the fourth uh, season of Children's Hospital, which will come on again in May. Right. Which is... Oh, right, yeah. What is yeah, uh, it is a an, an outrageous comedy that's on 12 o'clock at night. It was the first uh, live action show on the Cartoon Network, and it's on Thursday nights at 12 o'clock. It's very starting strange. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't even understand what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, we got Cindy that really wants to talk to you from and I, Jersey. Oh, I have to put on my earphones. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Cindy, we got Henry Winkler in the studio. He's promoting Ghost Buddy. Hello, Henry. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking my call. Cindy, I didn't know what else to give you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you that um, my son is a 14-year-old. He's in eighth grade, and he has dyslexia. Yeah. When I was a child, I, um, yes, I was young, and I watched Happy Days religiously. I had Fonzie T-shirt, and Thank I was you. all about the Fonz. And I didn't realize then why I admired you so much until I got older and was the parent of someone with dyslexia and found out your story. And I just want to thank you for being so genuine and being so honest about what you had to go through. Um, I gave my son your Hank Sipser books, and he also loves baseball, so he was really motivated to read them. And seeing him read something that he was interested in and then knowing that you had written it really meant a lot to me. So I wanted to thank you so much Cindy, for that. Cindy, that that's the greatest compliment I could have gotten. What is your son's name? His name is Dan. Dan, I swear to you, it, I, this is what I say to Dan. It does not matter how you learn. It doesn't matter at what rate you learn. It has nothing to do with the brilliance that is inside you. And I'm telling you, those are not nice words. That is the way it is on this earth. I am telling you the absolute truth. Thank you so much for saying that. He's really worked very, very I'll hard. I'll bet. Um, we actually sued to get him into a private school and now he can read at a 10th grade level up from a third grade level when he was in sixth grade see that uh, that makes my heart sore one uh, day we'll get our own sam to do that yeah that's great congratulations yeah. cindy and just tell him I, I i can't wait to meet dan oh and that would be an honor for all of us thank you so much <laughs> thanks cindy okay you know some Bye. people some people they have this huge success and they just kind of go away and, uh, you know, do their own thing. You've been very out in the public and uh, very helpful. You, you don't have any of these. And you've never had any of these, uh, for being such a big celebrity, these skeletons that have popped They're out. They're coming. You've just been a genuine <laughs> nice Scandals. guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. That is really <laughs> helpful and just yeah. nice, writes nice books and everything. He's so it's, nice. We're it well, really I, is. I write these makes books. me feel despicable. <laughs> <laughs> That's so not Stephen true. King when he was in. <laughs> That's not true. You look great in a blue shirt. Well, thank <laughs> you, sir. He's but so I, nice. I'm, We're all on. Garden. Uh, I know. No. I'm just, this is our best behavior. Uh, it what, is? What about oh, the yeah, PSA? Yeah. He did a PSA too. Um, oh, right. We, the we, Happy Days PSA we yes, played. Yes, yes. It was about sexual abuse for kids or right, something. Right, right. I remember yeah. that one. That but was, that I, was I write character. these books with Lynn Oliver, my partner, and uh, she's here in New York. We're going to be, as a matter of fact, this afternoon, we're going to be at uh, Books Bike. Bites and Beyond in Glen Rock, New Jersey at 4 o'clock this afternoon. 4 to 5, yeah. 4 to 5 signing books. Now, Jim Norton, is this, uh, is this a, 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 a person, a singer? It's me. <laughs> <laughs>
you're, finally. Because I went to school with Jimmy Norton, who oh. was on Broadway. Is it Norton, N-A-U-G-H, or is that just your accent? Or is it Norton? Oh, yeah, maybe it's Norton. Yeah, um, I'm a, I, that's me. Those are just, I mean, oh, this is so what great. What is that right there? Um, that oh. you're going to be in Tempe, Arizona. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't do oh, my gosh, at the end of January. This is so cool. What do you do? I'm a stand-up, so I'll do... Uh, are you funny? Uh, at, at times. <laughs> no, do you think that people, wow. if they come, do you think it's worth their drive? Um, if they live in Tempe, if, if you can see the improv from your house, it's worth the drive. If you have to, all right. What about the people in Poughkeepsie uh, on February third and fourth? You know what? They're going to have a good time because I have so much Are you Poughkeepsie funnier in humor. Poughkeepsie? Much funnier. You are in Tempe. <laughs> yes, because I take Dramamine when I fly, which all makes right. me tired and, and totally. And Atlanta must make you nuts. Well, February sixteenth through eighteenth, right. I will be in Atlanta, and that's always a good. Do you city know one of me. the great, honestly, one of the great Italian restaurants? In America is in Atlanta. Where? It's called, um, uh, uh, I'm going to come up with the name in a minute <laughs> because we're going to go right on to Fort Lauderdale. Yes, oh, February yes. 23rd 20th through 25th, I will be uh, at the improv. I'm shooting an hour special, so I'm warming is up for it. Is it possible to be funny in Rochester? It's hmm. difficult. It um, is, normally it? I'm funnier on the isn't late show it Saturday. It's cold in Rochester. It's just and it there. rains a lot. Yeah. Frozen rain is a terrible, terrible yeah. place. Okay. Toledo, <laughs> Ohio. Never been there. Everybody moved. March 8th through 10th, in, uh, in honor yeah. of Klinger from MASH, uh, I will be going to Toledo. I think he was from Toledo, am I correct? I think and look right. at this, you roll out of bed because you're in New York City. When? March 29th through April 1st. Unless I have to change that because I'm shooting in Cleveland. Uh, but as of right now, March 29th through April 1st, I will be at uh, Carolina. And he's also an, an author himself there, Henry. You are? You've written a book? I've written a couple, a couple yeah. books. Yeah. Wow, Jim. Yes, they were not. Right. New York Times bestseller. Yeah, Jim's done made very well for himself. He, he's a very he's modest boy. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were certainly not, you know, they were, they were a little different than your books. Different. Yeah, they were just slightly different. About my demons. <laughs> <laughs> About his ghost in the closet. Yeah, right. Hey, when, you, when you write, being dyslexic, when yeah. you, when you, is it hard for you to sit down and type something out, or, or are you easier for you to no, be it's, verbal? It's a good question. I'll tell you exactly what it is. I walk around Lynn Oliver's office. She sits at the computer. I sit in a, a couch. I sit on a, an armchair uh, in the rocking chair uh, right in front of her desk. Or I take off my shoes and I try to put my feet in the planks of the, the boards on her floor. <laughs> and then I start talking. And she types. Then she's got an idea. She types. I wait. She reads it back to me. We argue over every word. Oh, really? Okay. And, and we've written 19 novels that way. Wow. Completely oh, collaborative. But so it's easy for you just to kind of... So sometimes is she just taking notes for you? Like No. No, we literally write them together. Absolutely. But if you have an idea, say you're talking about... Uh, th 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 there's a, a part in this where he meets the ghost. But say you see something 15 pages later like, no, but it, it, this can't happen now, but then the ghost does this. Will you just spit that out at her? Absolutely. So okay. And this is the incredible thing. You write a book. And you write a, an outline. Mm-hmm. And we're following the outline, but the book has a mind of its own. So all of a sudden, you're writing, you're writing, you're writing, and the book takes you on a left turn, and you've got to just go. You've got to give up your, your outline and just go where the book takes you, right? Yeah, I find that sometimes it, there's been things where it's tempting to cut yourself off because you're like, it's not, it doesn't marry where I was going. But once you allow yourself to go, sometimes you wind up getting an extra 10 or 12 Absolutely. pages. Absolutely. Which was way better than what you wanted to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It initially had. You've got to go with the flow, and it takes a lot of courage. You know, and, and if anybody is thinking about being a writer out there, the only thing that I will say to you is write what you know and don't edit yourself until you're done. Right. Just write anything and don't think you're going to embarrass somebody if you write too close to a relative because they never pick up that it's <laughs> them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should ask one more Happy Days question. Go ahead. I'm thinking of a good one. I don't okay, know. good. You got one in? Uh, I, I, well, um, was, was there ever anything that they wanted uh, the Fonz to do that you personally uh, went like, I don't think I would be comfortable doing that or, or the character itself wouldn't do that? Because it became synonymous with you. Yes. Uh, right. More so than the, the writers, I think, even at that point. Right. So was there anything? That no, the writers, um, Gary Marshall had writers that 21-year-olds all the way up to 77-year-olds mm. in the room. Uh, they worked really hard. One of the first days I ever met Ron Howard. Now, he's 18. I'm 27. <laughs> We're on stage 19 on Paramount Lot. I look at it. I'm from New York. I'm looking at the script, and I'm going, I can't do this. And I start to punch the script. I mean, this joke really sucks. I can't do this. He took me around the shoulder, 
led me to the back of the soundstage, and he said, you know, Henry, I think the writers are trying as hard as they can. Let's not hit the script. <laughs> I said, Ron, I'm never going to hit the script again <laughs> as long as I live. And he, his wisdom, his there is an old soul in Ron Howard. And he had been a veteran of since television three, at that since point. Since he was yeah, three. Yeah, three. Yeah. Jeez. But the way he said it, it, I didn't take offense. I just heard him. And he's been my brother ever since. We've yeah. had him on the show, too. And he's just another guy that just is a, a nice guy. Just, oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And powerful. Oh, yeah. Powerful. yeah, yeah. We yeah. all know that. And but... to get like that without screwing people right. over. He had great amazing. parents. His, par his father was the first uh, sharecropper to leave the farm in Oklahoma mm -hmm. and went to New York to be on Broadway. So his mom and dad were actors, and they never allowed bad behavior from either Ron or Clint Howard. Mm -hmm. They would discipline them on the set uh, to be respectful, do your work, um, be concentrated. Uh, so they they learned very well. Just really nice. They're We're, telling us he has to go. He has really? other press. Oh, yeah, yeah, he has to leave. This, He's this a busy is, man. This is, he has other press. Busy um, man. Uh, let, let's promote. Well, what a great morning. Thank you. No, we're oh, so happy to start Henry. the day. I'm going to promote yeah. Henry's books, too. Uh, one that's been out for a while, but it's called I've Never Met an Idiot on the River. It's uh, an adult a, book. An adult book about uh, fishing and yeah. this photography. And, and the, the book mm. he's really pushing today is called Ghost Buddy. It's, uh, it's good for your, uh, you know, how old would you say? I say seven, seven to 14. Seven to 14, and the woman called there. And it's and funny. It's a funny book for someone who's 7 to, to 14. So if you had a 10-year-old kid, Jim, perfect. It'll make you laugh. It probably would. Oh, I enjoy uh, that sunset. humor. I, I, really uh, quick, because we don't have time today. Me, okay, I'll get yeah, this. Go ahead, Jim. The signing. Books, well, He's showing us pictures. I just wanted to comment. Go ahead. Books, Bites, and Beyond. It's in Glen Rock, New Jersey. It's today from 4 to 5. There will be a good amount of people there, so get there early and buy your book and get it signed. Henry's a nice guy. Really fast. Um, yes. I always thought fly fishing was a joke, and then a comedian friend of ours took me, and I'm hooked. Who? Uh, Bob Kelly. Bob Kelly. Right. Uh, Obviously, you've never met him on the river. I, yeah. I've never met Bob. <laughs> your pictures look or like they're from... But you know what? I say the, the same thing. I really did. Yeah. I went once, and I was hooked. You're hooked, right? It is like a washing machine for your brain. <laughs> your pictures look like they're from Montana, I'm Yes, assuming. that's exactly uh, right. Yeah, we go to Roscoe, New York, which is a little oh, different. Oh, right. I know Roscoe. Well, it's, it's Yo, one of the best places Roscoe? in the world. Have you ever fished up there? No, I've, I've never fished up there, but in uh, six days, I'm going to Argentina. The same man that introduced me to fly fishing, Skip Brittenham III, <laughs> my lawyer, is taking me to fish in Argentina. So if the fish I catch in Montana are four pounds... In Argentina, they're yeah. 23 pounds. Man. What we zowie. You have a friend that's going to take you to Argentina? Yeah, I pay You don't have friends like that. <laughs> this friend's no, no, no. He invited me. I have to pay the, we, the we flight. We just don't have friends like that. <laughs> Stand no, back. I get to go to Roscoe with Bob Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's great. I, I'm so happy you do that. Once it a year. It is beautiful, so far, isn't it? But I love it. I, I haven't caught anything officially. I, I, I was dragging my pole once, and I caught a fish by accident. I <laughs> promise you, take yourself to Montana, yeah. the big sky country. You get a great guide, and I'm t it's just, it, it's indescribable. To die for. To die for. <laughs> All right. So we have to. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank Henry, you so much, so much. And uh, we'll be back. We have D.L. Hughley. Yes. And, uh, coming in. And Henry, and, uh, please come back and see us again. Yeah. I will, you know I will. All right. Uh, you know I will. And uh, I'll see you in Atlanta. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. we'll go to the Italian restaurant together. Yeah. Antica Posta ah. is the name of the restaurant. Antica Posta okay. in Buck's Head. And, That's where I'm going to be working, I think. And, and Henry's I'm, active on Twitter, so it's H Winkler 4, four the number 4 real. real. H Winkler 4 real. You don't spell out 4. Yeah, no. we'll, we'll Twitter him and you can, you can yeah, see Yeah, we'll take ours. a couple pictures, we'll tweet them. We'll Thank you. Henry Winkler. Be right back. Thanks for calling the Opie and Anthony FU Live. Here's the latest batch of FUs. Fuck you! This FU goes out to Van Halen for that god-awful new song they released. It's been stuck in my head ever since I heard it. Hey, Van Halen, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! This fuck you goes out to Bob Kelly and Jim Norton and all those fucking comedians. Thank you for introducing me to Bailey J and Chicks with Dicks with sweet, delicious gifts under a skirt. Fuck you for making me question my sexuality. Fuck you! Yeah, I just want to say to those fellas over at uh, Obi and Agony Show and that, that vegetable with always Jim Norton, uh, you've been ragging on me for a while over the past few weeks, and uh, 
Uh, I told him I could get to me, I just pull up my guitar and play a little ramp way to heaven. And uh, I just want to say a big fuck you. Fuck you! Yeah. I want to give a big fuck you to horse face, chiclet tooth, rich boss, and his gum chewing while he's on the mic. No one wants to sit and listen to you go, Man, Sam, 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 Bonnie, Fram, Fram, well, smacking these fucking horse flips, all right? So go eat some oats and fuck you. Fuck you! Fuck you, all you bitches who ain't sucking my dick right now. Cut. Fuck you! Yeah, I'm gonna give a big fuck you to myself from all of my friends who decided to road trip with me down in New Orleans. A 13-hour car ride. They didn't all realize to be riding shotgun with like chip chip us in the stuff. And it's like every time we talk, we stop the snacks and they had to get chips or stuff. Fuck you! Yeah, this fuck you goes out to Anthony Cumia. Anthony, I love you, but Jesus Christ, all this hoarder shit, it's making me want to puke in my own mouth. Fuck! You! Fuck you! Yeah, I'd like to say that to you to uh, Tim Norton for introducing that stupid roper freaking sing song. I'm in office all day long and going wah 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 Fuck you, Tim. Don't be an angry show. Call the Opie and Anthony FU line. 866 FU line one. That's 866 FU line one. Serious XM. The Opie and Anthony Show. Henry Winkler. Gotta tell you, people enjoyed the interview. He put us on our best behavior. There's very few guests, Ant, that put us on uh, our best behavior. Where you just don't, like, I, I, you just don't feel like going there. Yeah, he you know was what I mean? a nice guy. It's very what rare. Do, uh, Jimmy, I was saying, there's like very few guests that put you on your best behavior and you don't feel like going there. Yeah. You know, going for that, uh, that, that little bit like of him. shock or that edge, you know? I don't like him at all. Uh, Kevin from Connecticut <laughs> writes, I'm a big fan of Henry. Great interview. Uh, smoke Pants from Jersey. Wow, he made you fucking assholes sound nice. And then DJ Anal Lightbulb, I was reading his during the break. DJ Anal Lightbulb. I was fucking yeah. howling. He writes, holy Christ, Henry Winkler might be the nicest person who's ever lived. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't want to, it, it's weird, guys like that, I'm, I'm comfortable being respectful of what they are doing, and not cursing or, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just, he is who he is. But my point is, it's very rare. There's yeah. not many guys that'll put you in that, in, into that place. This and, is And he's true. one of those guys. And yeah. I can't even think of a second guy that has done that to us. Yeah. Someone that was really nice where we decided just to fucking be normal. Pat Cooper? Pat Cooper. <laughs> to just be normal, you know what I mean? Like, forget about the mics and the radio and just go, you know what? Yeah. If I was in a coffee shop, this is how I would talk to the guy. Yeah. I was amazed that he did that to me, that second appearance at Pontiac Stadium. We wow. did 181,000 people in that's two days. That's crazy. I mean, that's, what do you do? Exactly. Like he wasn't. Oh, I should ask what he did. I, I don't remember. Well, like, he certainly didn't uh, sign for one hundred eighty one thousand. No. So that was more like you know mm. waving and saying hi and a few hey. Oh yeah. It's like when I saw Batman and Robin at the Walt Whitman Mall. They just stood up there in the parking lot on the back of a truck. Was it really them? And uh, yes, it was them. And uh, and uh, it was a bunch of people standing around in the parking lot, and I couldn't see them. I was getting crushed, and I started crying. My father called me a faggot because <laughs> I was crying in front of Batman and Robin. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was crying. I was like, ah, shut up. Stop crying. What the fuck are you crying for? Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Like, yeah. But, yeah. but you had a legit reason. You were getting s squished. I probably wasn't. Huh? But I probably thought I was yeah. going to, so I just went fucking crazy. Yeah. D.L. Hughley. Yeah. D.L., how you doing, man? You always know when D.L. has arrived. Yes. The beer. What's the, what's oh, yeah, he's gone. I, it, I, yeah. Mountain man. I have to explain. It, it was for Patrice. Mountain man. What? The whole Patrice thing. Well, that's when it started. Why, you wanted to do something you know he would have laughed at? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Started out as a Patrice thing, and now it's I just got shaved. Uh, it's that whole uh, that Tom Hanks movie. What did he do? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Cast yeah. Away. Cast I'm not, away. I'm not right. I'm not growing this to look pretty. I just decided yeah, to grow you, an ugly you, beard. You scared the shit out of me. That could. Yeah, yeah. I know. I like that. DL is the could. best smelling guy in comedy. <laughs> yeah, you really know how to wear well, some uh, shit Once there. again, 
For, I'm like a swooning fairy when he walks in. He smells great. No, no, we can't catch up. We can't keep up with you because your last cologne that drove me and Jimmy nuts, I finally got. And he oh, got yeah. it. And him and his wife got it for me for Christmas oh, yeah. because she was. Yeah, she. Well, she, she like I, I went because she, a, meaning Jimmy. It's good. Yeah, it's great. Jimmy it liked it too. A, it has a uh, has she's in it. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, there you go. It was the uh, oh, ooh. It's the dry down. No one of you fucking. And you're in Rio. You've been. You've been sober. Yeah, 25 years. What was it so called? Uga- uh, ooh, ooh. Black, uh, black Black Afghano. Afghano. Yeah. 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 See, we finally got that, and now I'm smelling uh, something new on it. This shit is so weird. It's called uh, Seven Veils. It's got some vanilla in it. It smells a little it vanilla. Yeah. Hold on, Seven V A I L S. Uh oh. Seven Veils. So how you guys been, man? Everybody, man, I'm very good. All I right. tried to get in contact with you after the Patrice thing. That just it was, sucked. Still yeah. sucks. It still man. sucks. Bad. Yeah, he was a funny motherfucker. He really was. Oh, and a good man. man. You guys yeah. knew each other? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was my favorite. Patrice used to. He was my favorite. I remember after uh, Don Imus, he called, and he was like, man, fuck them people right on, man. He's a, <laughs> yeah. He was a good dude. Oh, after you uh, stuck up front us. Mm-hmm. You were yeah, one you of the few. We we uh, stuck up for Imus, and I remember DL did, and I can't give you another name, especially no. radio guys. I'm like, what are you doing? Right, you we gotta really, stick up for this. We really, and now he's a bigger dick than he was before. Now, now he's yeah. Imus, dick, yeah, he's kind well, of now he doesn't dick. care. Uh, yeah, I think he's probably he, well, he has prostate cancer, yeah, probably. and he's not treating it. Is he really? He's not treating it. <clears throat> but Why? that's they, they, they told my father that. What they said you could not treat it. No, he decided not to treat it. Yeah, but that's one of the options. They that's get. like an option, especially if you're uh, a little up there in years. There. He's, well, he got to be 70-something? Like, yeah. He's probably... Uh, 72? Late yeah, yeah. 60s, early My 70s. My father's 74, tops. and they said one of the options, three of the options. You can radiate it, you can cut it out, or you can do nothing. And they mm-hmm. can just measure it because it, it it's takes... a race against, like, chances are... <laughs> right. <laughs> the old age might something get them. <laughs> before. Right, well, how how long do you, can you live with it, though? Forever. My My... Not forever, obviously, but um, hmm. my wife's father and grandfather got diagnosed at seventy something, lived to ninety four, and had it that whole time. Because it's, it's really small. Like if you get it in your forties, fifties, then it's kind of vir- it's got to do something tougher because it's, it's it's more virulent. But um, and it's funny because remember, I don't know if I told you, but like about four years ago, I I was going through like they thought I had something. Oh shit! Sure. Oh no! All scary as fuck. You know, uh, uh, it's a comic that had it. And he's 42. Prostate cancer? And they took it out. They took his prostate out. Damn. No, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know him. I, would, I don't know. Oh, you're on the camera. Okay. The right there, but the, you got to work. <laughs> there's a camera. You got to work yeah. that prostate. You know, you yeah. got to keep it That's pumping. That's what they say. Keep they it say pumping. You gotta, <laughs> like a muscle. Right. Whether you're, uh, you're doing it yourself, muscle. whether you're doing it yourself or mm. using a friend. You're right. You know, you got to keep a fluid right, going right, through right, that right, fucking right. thing. Can you, you get a fire back up some up. practice round? It's like leaving a toilet <laughs> without flushing it for a while, you know, it gets a little gamey. Yeah, backed up. Yeah. <laughs> backed up. yeah. <laughs> so wait, does he, can he still get rods? Can you still get yeah, a rod? Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 stuff now is so it's all uh, cyber knife they call it and it's all like because used to be they just rip shit out and, you <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> look, look, I don't think he needs fuck, this. You'll live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we can promise you. But but cyber knifing they call yeah, it. Yeah, the cyber knife. My old man just had it and it's so precise. Mm. Like you don't lose any very like like one or two percent of people lose sexual fun. But when you're eighty. We can't tell if that's yeah. fucking life. Or yeah, maybe that's just what you were no. doing. Yeah, right. the road right. you were on to. Yeah, they do like laparoscopic surgery now. That's they can really just it. poke a one little hole in and then do everything by a little fucking thing that you used to pick up a nut with when you drop it when you're right. working on your car. <laughs> that little thing. <laughs> yeah, and they do a whole operation with those things. Yeah, you see two people with little holes right here on their knees. Yeah, yeah. And, and they and did no it. T- it would have been. A, mm-hmm. It would have been a scar from your uh, yep. shin up to the middle of your thigh. Right. And uh, yeah. What made you think Amazing. you had something? You just were filled. I went to the doctor, and uh, first I thought I got burned, <laughs> like because I, you know, oh, I thought, wow, somebody, oh you know, shit, somebody gave me something. Been, something's happening. <laughs> and then uh, so I went to the doctor, and he for a regular regular physical, and my PSA was much higher, mm. like it's supposed to be like below four, is is what they say, and so it was ten point five. Oh so shit! He said, "Wait a minute, something's going on." So they sent me to a urologist. And he said it's kind of boggy is what he used. Like, and th- that was two anal probes one day, so I was a little sore. Wow, man, yeah. 
And then he, he said, well, I think, I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, it's prostatitis. So we, they gave me this thing called, stuff called Leviquin, and I took it for two weeks. Then I came back, and it dropped from 10 to 8. And he mm. said, okay, that's a promising sign because generally nothing can make your PSA go down except cancer, except treatments or you know, mm. cancer treatments or some kind of treatment. So I kept taking it and it dropped all the way down to one. And uh, below one now. Oh, damn. And so man. they were certain it was prostatitis. But then have... they had to do a biopsy, which yeah, is the most fall. painful shit ever. Did... What do they do with the biopsy? They have to go in and just scrape a piece no, off? No, I, I, I told a story because the same shit uh, happened to me. I, I, uh, I went through the exact same thing you just yeah. described. Scared out of my yep, fucking yep, mind. Yep, yep. And they went in and had to take, you know, some biopsies. Yep. And did you did you wince a little bit? Wince? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I almost had tears in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, not almost. And, and, and the, Saying goodbye? <laughs> and the doctor was actually patting my back. Right. Patting my back to comfort me because uh, that was some uh -huh. and, and with fluid, his chest <laughs> <laughs> and fluid shot out of my pee hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. called coming. <laughs> no, 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 he said it wasn't though. It was just yeah. the fluid it part. End. Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. what they said. Okay, I'll talk about it on some other. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give my urologist a <laughs> facial, but I'm just saying. <laughs> that didn't did me. you? Uh, did you? Uh, uh, and then you. Then you feel like you're shitting, right? Or have to pee really bad for about twelve to sixteen straight hours. Oh, you, you, man. you, you believe you go. How could anybody want to do anything that that is this like this all the time? Like yeah, it, yeah. It was so uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable and it's emasculating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like oh, and he's very close. Yeah, yeah. Just getting it, uh, the exam itself. Just getting a finger right. up there so he could check it out. Uh, I remember driving home after that, and I go to sit in my car and just felt <laughs> right. like squishy. And yeah. you just think how, yes, you well, can. You think how the chick feels when she's going home in the morning. Just squish. Well, the best is when they give you a bunch of paper towels yeah, and go, clean, yeah. up. Now, clean up. Now clean up and clean up. I'm done with you. But did you... Uh, <laughs> or, I, yeah. I talked about this a couple of years ago, but I want to see if it happened to you. The first time you had sex, did he warn you there might be a little blood in it? Yeah, and you know what happened? And the first I, time I, yeah. It scared the living shit out of me. I thought it was I in a vampire peed. movie. Uh, huh? The first time I peed, it was... Just uh, pure red. Yeah, and I was like, oh my, I'm dying. Beat red. Yeah. It was hard. But, but he warned me, and uh, man, that came flying out. I'm like, what? Did you, the did you fuck? faint? Did you feel like you were going to faint? I felt immediately that fuck. something was wrong. I called the urologist, and he's like, he started laughing. Because they go through that shit. You're like, I don't know if this is not funny. Blood, but he was supposed to tell you there was going to be blood. Yeah, he, 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 my guy yeah, he, told me. Mm, he didn't tell me. Oh, no. shit. Um, and then, they, they, were you on level queen? Uh, I forget now, to be honest with it's you. A, it's, a, it's like... Probably. A, I was on something. For 12 weeks, like, right? For a long, yeah. long time. Wow. Yeah, because the prostate is so small and so deep that it has no blood flow. So you have to just... Oh, it's fucking horrible, man. Jesus. You have to keep taking it. And then every once in a while, stress or, like, strange ass could make it... <laughs> it could make it flare up. <laughs> it could make it flare up. So you're susceptible. But it doesn't make you any more susceptible to... To prostate cancer, yeah, but it's just scary. Hmm. But you're you're a young guy, so it had to be really was, scary back you then. You just told my story. Yeah, me that. and you had the exact same fucking thing. Oh man, it's horrible. And then when they first and call that you, that like, snapping when they're hitting the prostate to get some samples. Oh, how did, what do they do? They, they cut a piece like, of it off. Yeah, no, it's it, almost it, feels like you're getting electrocuted yeah. for a split second. How many? It's the worst. Different he goes, we're almost done. I think he took six to eight. Is now, that how about right? How did they get to it, though? Because With a it's, big yeah, fucking thing that yeah, hurts your ass. Yeah. But, but, but if the thing is in your but intestine. But I've had dudes that had to go, people had to go in through the penis to get Fuck it. Fuck that. I've right. that. With the snippers? Right. Because they have, uh, he had interstitial something somewhere. His whole, they have to, oh, it's, it's so horrible. See, I don't know. How, how do they get through the intestinal wall to get... To know. the prostate, I really don't because know. if they shove something in your ass to get a piece of the prostate out, you got to go through the intestinal wall because it's not hanging out up I, your ass. I felt that class. They know. feel they feel your prostate through your your I, intestines I when they shove a finger up your ass. Some kind of needle yeah. going all the way through. Or oh, something. a biopsy. Yes, a needle, needle. biopsy. Okay, yeah. so, needle biopsy. I mean, okay. you, it sounds like a rubber band, like mm. it just snaps, and then you feel it's, this it's, it's, excruciating. It's pain. painful. Humiliating, yes. scary. It's Where like, do you work, feel like pain? working at XM. <laughs> you feel it everywhere. In, in your ass, it's like in your ass, asshole? stomach. You probably got like a stomach back, ache. Yeah. Legs. Damn, like you got to take a bad shit. You Instantly, feel it I, I thought I was going to black out. Really? Mm -hmm. God, this is fucked up. Instantly, I thought I was going to black out. I'm like, oh. I and aren't you just saying to yourself, like, this is for fucking old guys? Yeah. What the fuck am yeah. I doing here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. How do well, you get prostatitis? What is that? It's just an infection. It, it, it could be infection. It could be mostly. It's, it's probably some. 
kind of shit you did. did, did. <laughs> something <laughs> crawled right, back. Right, right. Something <laughs> took the something fucking... Something didn't take the whole train home. <laughs> 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 something that didn't, didn't get oh, off and stop. Shit. Yeah. It was horrible, oh, man. Shit. And it and it and it's that in itself is you know something's wrong like it, at that point because you, you did your back hurt like it was hard to pee and stuff like that. Oh God, uh, no. Yeah. You did nothing. No. What did he just did a, a, a he found a lump. check up and and then it turned out I guess there was an infection or yeah, something. Yeah, that, that, yeah. He mine. He I just, went in, you know, and he's putting a finger at me, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, all, all the jokes like, and and I turn around and saw his face. I'm like, oh great. Right, 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 right. Right yeah. away, I saw his face. My mine was normal, but the PSA was high. Right. Mm. And then, um, I he the next morning, like literally, I'm not bullshitting. At five thirty in the morning, my doctor called. And he goes, I don't want to alarm you. I'm like, motherfucker, oh, you just did. You. Right, you yeah, just did. That's right, it. Right, of course. What's the point of this? Yeah. <laughs> and like, and then he said, no, I don't think it's anything to it. Oh, but uh, in other How words. soon can you get to the well, urologist? Nope. And I'm like, I'm going out of town. He goes, Can you go today? <laughs> wow, <laughs> I go, man. I go. Yeah. Well, good because I made your appointment at nine. <laughs> that's like. Like horrible, and, yeah. and I'm waiting for results. We all could relate to this yeah. shit. And my guy goes on vacation, yeah. so instead of getting the results, I I, I don't remember exactly, but maybe two days later, mm -hmm. I had to wait a, a, about ten days. Mm -hmm. I was out of my fucking yeah. mind because he was on vacation. Yeah. I'm like, really? There's no other person that could read this shit for me now. Well, here's what I got. This is worse than you ever had the nurse call you with her cryptic ass or the results, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. then they always say, "We, they, they, <laughs> I can't discuss it. The doctor will have to." Right. I, that's fucking. Do you know for AIDS tests I've done that and I've talked to the nurse and, and she goes your results are in. I'm like I couldn't get in and she goes I can't get the results over the phone. I go all right look, I have a date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that. I'm like <laughs> you put it on her. <laughs> I said put it on should her. I enjoy this date? <laughs> and she went. You should enjoy it. And that let me know yeah. I was okay. <laughs> That's exactly how it happened. Only Jim Nor can come back. Hey, listen. You, <laughs> you gotta come back. When I get I the date. When I get like x-rays, MRIs, any of that shit, I I you gotta grease those guys. Because yeah. they've seen so many, they know right away. Right. Well you can pay and, those guys? Well, I'm I'm more joking, but I mean, you, oh. you kind of you you work them a little bit. And you go, gotta, well, I'm yeah, not yeah. supposed to tell yeah. you, and and you work your way around. They go, yeah, you're totally. I've had your it, doctor's going to tell you you're totally fine, right. but you can't take my word right. for it. Right, right. You know, it's all they, it's all fucking a get a gimmick. Like yeah, like, yeah it's yeah. all like they pass you on one guy to another man. to another, and there's probably kickbacks. I'm mm. sure. Down the line, the doctor that recommended you to go to another guy, that other guy's that got other to kick, guy is in kick the something back to the initial doctor. And, it's horrible. And you yeah. know what scares me? Like, like Patrice scares me. Mm. Like, when that happened to him, yeah, that that obviously scares me. Because, Are you diabetic? No, I never was. I'm the, I never have been. But what happened was, you can, you can like, I'm being on the road and eating crazy and mm -hmm. all that kind of shit. It, you can type 2 diabetes is what sedentary lifestyle and yeah, right. shitty food. Yeah, you can do that to yeah. yourself. You can do it to easy. yourself. Very and, so, and it's so easy. I, it's, it's like three or four people that I know what a, a variation. Now, he was the most extreme case, but the variation of that happened to me. They just kind of got sick and one dude uh, didn't know he had anything and he kept passing out, peeing on himself. Gee. And it was it was diabetes. He had yeah. no idea, and you just didn't never even know. And black people, that's like our, <laughs> that's like yeah, our, that's our, yeah. that's our thing. That's a sore throat. <laughs> that's right, like that's a cold. like what happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember once my mother <laughs> was cooking, and I said, "Mama, I don't want to look. Everything was fucking fat and sugar." <laughs> and I oh, go, yeah. "I don't want to eat that." And she goes, "Oh, you too good for high blood pressure?" <laughs> 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 I actually hope I am too yeah, good yeah. for high blood pressure. Oh, he got the sweet blood. <laughs> Why? They call it the sugar. That's, that's the sugar. sugar. That sounds nice, though. That sounds right, like right, some. Right. Oh, he's got the sugar. That's really funny. Just because you got to lose an eye to get it. <laughs> Man, I'm I, you know what I'm obsessed? Um, I'm obsessed. And I don't, I, like, I'm obsessed with these uh, Republican debates. Yeah. They are, like, I'm DVRing. You know, <laughs> I don't think the president was going to win. Mm -hmm. But they might as well have. He must have asked. He must have asked for some dumb asses for Christmas. He must have. You couldn't deliver the dumb shit that they do. Um, like they it, they can't believe that they can win like this. It really is uh, astounding, especially how they're beating the shit out of each other, and uh, they just don't come across as very presidential. No, uh, they, like, they don't even come across as very human. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Like. 
Newt Gingrich, his woman comes out and basically says he we had an open marriage. Then he brags all the time. Anybody, that's not a fucking president. That's a rapper is what that is. <laughs> like, I might not vote for you, but I'm sure buying your first album. <laughs> and then at the same time, you have the president singing uh, Let's Stay Together, a song about fidelity. And then he's singing I Got Holes in Different Area Codes. <laughs> like, the black dude is the symbol for morality <laughs> and monogamy. That's <laughs> that happened. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, this country's I, gone topsy turvy. I, I missed the L. Hughley. You were it was CNN, right? Uh -huh. God damn, that was a good show. I had a good time. You know what? It, it was. You it made was, it fun, man. It was a lot of fun, but it was fun only you guys. You know, you you could relate to this. These cats made it so mysterious. Like these, you can have a point of view, and the, the, your point of view can be informed by your experience. All it is mm -hmm. is informed by your experiences, and like. To me, I just, I never got why it was so, like, Wolf Blitzer and all these cats would be real serious. And nobody watches you. Nobody cares about how fucking right. serious you are. Yeah. <laughs> like, good that you're serious, but no one cares what the fuck you're saying. Right. So, what the... Just like when Herman Cain was running, that was the best shit ever. Oh, oh, yeah. How great was that? Herman was great. Oh, my God. I miss him. I, I actually I kind of miss too. the guy now. Now, you know what's funny? I would never vote for him, but I would rather hang out with him than Obama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, Obama's going to read a book and play Scrabble with his family. And He's a Harvard nerd. Right. He's a nerd. We've yeah. said it many times in the show. People got to understand that. Yeah. Herman Cain, pizza, jam your fingers in her. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his his Herman Cain rules. His greasy pizza yeah. fingers going to job. A bunch of pop this in your mouth. We'll talk about it. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do if I was Herman Cain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know any dude that blinks that much when he talks is like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is fucking, and it would have, it would have been, like, to me, it would have been great, like, people are going, oh, if two qualified black dudes, bright, urbane, intellectual, bright dudes, black men had had, you know, a difference of political ideology, I would have been, it would have been a hard decision to make. Mm -hmm. Like, then I'd have been like, wow, it's two dudes that are expressing different viewpoints, and they're both equally as bright, but Herman Cain was the he literally made me miss Sarah Payne. Like, I like, I like, <laughs> and I, it isn't that I don't like black Republicans. I just never see any. I like, I like wonder whether, whether they are they, rare. Yeah. Only four years, every four, like leap year. Yeah, like, yeah, they come out of a hiding. Where and... do they store them? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just you open the shed and <laughs> dust yeah. them off and let them adjust to the yeah. light. And then <laughs> I love when uh, uh, Republicans giving a speech. And they talk about, you know, we need diversity. Right. And, they, and they just start touching on a racial issue. And the camera is going wild. <laughs> like, like yeah, the camera's going like the price is right when they're trying to find the name they just called. And it's like, there, there, there. Third row back, six <laughs> over, get her. And there's some woman going, mm, I love this man. And, and they just get the camera on her. And the one woman in the yeah. whole crowd. And, and the camera swinging on the gym. Yeah. And then they get the one guy that's serving the drink. Oh, we think. We th <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. He's got a tray and some cocktails. What? Shit. What do you got? What do you got on Mitt Romney? Uh, you know what? I just don't know why you're ashamed that you make that much money. He makes a right. lot of why money. Why are you ashamed? If you didn't, I, I know cats that do illegal shit and are happy. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't think he's ashamed. I think he really wants to tell everyone how rich he is. No. But he also knows it'll hurt him. No, I, he I, seems I, like that type of guy. Like I really do want to tell you. I think I'm that he's not comfortable being around humans. Like mm. he's oh, not yeah, comfortable. Yeah. I agree. And I think guys like that. You get the sense that he's not confrontational. Yeah. Like, he probably had people fire people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, he, so he get, he's just he not. He wasn't a hatchet man. No, he's not a hatchet man, but he, he, he benefit and he looks, and he, he looks so, like, if right? I were worth a quarter of a billion dollars, I would walk around my tax returns in a fucking t-shirt. Like, you would know, <laughs> black people go broke trying to prove we have money. <laughs> <laughs> I would make my tax return out of some fucking rims. Are you crazy? <laughs> I don't, and I, I like, like, I love Ron Paul. I think he's a, you know, incredibly principled man, but, 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 because it's cool when an 80 year old dude says he wants to smoke weed and stop war. That's right. always, but when an 80 year old dude is the, is the answer, we got to change the question. What do you think about <laughs> him as a vice president? Because I thought they have a shot if they have Ron, because I like Ron Paul too, but he is old. And uh, I wonder if him as a vice president might not be as bad. I just think he doesn't. He just doesn't fit the American. Like, yeah, like, he's too. Uh, he's too out there. Yeah, he's gonna for fall the, short. The not for me. Public. Not for me. No, for no. The I, I, I believe me. Anarchy at this point isn't right, too out right, there for me. Right. But he's I'm gonna ready. fall short. They're not. They're, they're not gonna be brave enough to make that move. <laughs> well, plus he doesn't. Like he doesn't look like a president. Right. No. 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 He, you gotta wear. If, I, he might be a right fit for America, but he should get a suit that fits. Like, yeah. He, <laughs> he should be a bean counter, like yeah. in the fiftieth level below the Pentagon somewhere. I like it. I like uh, the Santorum is just fucking 
it's dumb. He comes off He's like hateable. a uh, yeah. hateable. He's he a almost comes off bag. as a Dan Quayleish, yeah, kind of thing. But, but, like, but, yeah. but that, but that. Well, he's trying. He's trying to convince everyone he's mature enough to be the. But president. he's not. He's you don't not, have to fucking wear a sweater vest to right. be. But listen to him. He's just trying to convince everyone. No, I can do this. You know what's funny? Like when Newt Gingrich said that you know you need to you know take the jobs from janitors and give them a kid. Like my father was a janitor, mm -hmm. raised four kids as a janitor, and a lot of the cats that I grew, lived on my streets, father were janitors. They worked maintenance. Right. No. So if you want to give us their jobs, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck would we do with them? <laughs> yeah. Like the quickest way, and you you're supposed to love the family. What the quickest way to make a black man leave is to take give his job to his kids. See how long he stays around. <laughs> <laughs> Get his job. And, and like, and who the fuck wants their son like teach him how to work? Who the fuck wants to teach their son to be a janitor? It's a thankless fucking job. Nobody yeah. cares about it. I, I didn't get it. I, it's just, I, I, and I'm just obsessed like what like this whole Joe Paterno thing. I, like, did you how mean people were when he died? Like yeah. that's karma. This motherfucker was eighty years, eighty five years old. If you can live eighty five years old, have your teeth, a great job, only suffer for two months, who I got the fuck to get that deal? <laughs> <laughs> Some kids. <laughs> yeah, there is no karma. There. You're if right. somebody said right You're now right. you can live to eighty five years old, keep your fucking wits about you, only suffer for a month and a half. Right, with a crazy scandal that's been going on a long fucking time. What would yeah. you? Right. Yeah. Sounds like you, a good enough deal. You take right. that deal right now. And Hell then, fucking yeah. I, I don't get. I was the only reason, I, and I was very sad. I, I've never been a Penn State fan, but I think he's a great dude. You you let one kid get screwed, and then all of a sudden you are fucking the <laughs> devil. I don't get it. Apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you let one dude tell somebody's nuts, and then all of a sudden, uh, you're yeah, you don't really go to the to bat for the kid. Man, uh, you yeah. know, you do you do the absolute minimum. 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 Like, you look on the milk card and go, I think right. I saw that guy. I right. think I just saw him. <laughs> Ask someone else to see him, too. It's not my problem. No more questions. Right. It's not my job description. That's like witnessing a rape, and then he emailed somebody about it. Yeah. <laughs> you might want to hey, check this out. She's bleeding <laughs> in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I don't think she's got, got much longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah I thought he was a douche. He, he was. But, but, but he was a, the kind of institutional guy where he wanted to protect his... Mm -hmm. Institutions right. like churches want to protect the church more than they want to do the people. Right. Like institutions, like and the fucked up thing for me is that when they when we was growing up, they said if you want to be a positive member of society, you go to church, you play sports, and you go to school. <laughs> now between Catholic priests, Penn State, and Syracuse, I take my chances on the street. <laughs> it's safer there. Like when a dope dealer tries to fuck me, it's just out my money. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the kid who was thirteen? Said he was molested from thirteen till twenty eight. If you got a right. coach fondly, you then you got a fucking boyfriend. That's really <laughs> yeah. That is at some point, it becomes a relationship. <laughs> that's said, not abusive. Was it anymore. Jimmy who said if you have to drive yourself? Yeah, that you was to your drive right, to your own molesting. Yeah, drive to your own molesting. What a great yeah. fucking line. If it's, you have to drive yourself, it's a really <laughs> molestation. If you can't get point. molested for a while because you don't have easy pass. <laughs> right. And you're stuck in traffic. Uh, yeah, that was Jimmy. What yeah. a great line. Yeah. Fuck. And, and you know, it was like, because uh, when I grew up, it was cats in the neighborhood. Like, it was just one cat in this neighborhood and goes, like, I'm seven years old. And he goes, I want to suck your dick. And I go, mm, that ain't right. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, you know at a certain point that just, like, yeah. as soon as you take this knife away from my throat, I'm telling you, you do understand, <laughs> yeah. the, the authorities will be getting caught. Yeah, Did he really yeah. say that to you? He like, really yeah. said it. Like, I'm seven years old. Or seven How old or was he? he? He was 20, 20-something. Jesus. And he goes. He was honest. Like, I, yeah. I, I, let me suck your dick. And I'm like, seven, I have no icons. I don't even know. Like, only, I only pee out of this thing. I don't even Yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean? Me. Why would you want to do that? Like, I, like, it, was like it was like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. And I go, uh, no, nah, I don't think. Nah, I'm, mm. uh, and I'm telling. Yeah, yeah. And you got in trouble? And I, no, I, to, I, I, I told the cats in our neighborhood, and they whipped his ass. Like, wow, like, yeah. Like, I said, man, this dude said, could, could, I, could he suck my dick? And he goes, this mother, he's lying. And I go, and the dude goes, he didn't even know, he don't even know what a dick is. So oh, know. shit, yeah, yeah. And so they be, but I just don't get how people allow, like, don't get that that's at a certain point now. Yeah. Well, he yeah. started wrong anyway. He, something he should have just said, "Look, can I can I just tug on that a little bit?" And you might have been like, "All right," because people use their hands, but um, even a mouth is just too creepy. Yeah. He overshot the mark. Right, right, right. The, the you first gotta time. warm it up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't fucking. T you got to take a girl to dinner first. You have to go, "Hi, can I fuck you?" The first time you did get a blowjob, you think back and go, "Damn, I should have taken him up yeah. on that." Oh. This is pretty good. I was like, hey, you know. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> this is pretty good. I just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just so much weird shit. Like, and and the thing that they take advantage, like people get mad at the at the at uh, at, like when you drop your kids off because they take advantage of poor kids. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. It's mothers who want their children to get 
you know, around positive mm. male role models. And they drop them off unsupervised. Like, they leave yeah. the lambs to fucking slaughter. Yeah. And if you don't, if you, like, shouldn't you be in tune enough with your children to know, like, that something's not right? Like, you, you, You'd think, yeah, you, right? You would, you would think, think but, but it's happening too much. It, well, I think it's happening more because people just turn their children off. Like, my mother would never let us. Like, they had to know. Like, I have two daughters, and I love them, and I hang out with them. And you have to think about having daughters, you have to listen to them, which is mm -hmm. kind of weird because when you listen to a woman, usually when I listen to a woman, some something in it for me, some, a blowjob or food. <laughs> 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 but I'm just listening to them so they feel good about themselves. Yeah. So I go out to dinner with my with my two daughters, and I, like oysters on the half show, and I give... How old are they? The 20 and 24. Oh. What? Yeah. I, I know, we've talked about before. So, so <laughs> you don't look like you have a 24-year-old. Yeah, oh, man. And you certainly don't act like Oh, man. <laughs> and so we had to dinner, and I, and I offer my youngest daughter to something. She goes, no, Daddy, I don't like the way they feel going down my throat. And I was so proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made me so happy. And then my oldest daughter went, I love them. And oh, I went, shit. Oh, oh, no. Ho, you ho. You failed the, you failed the test. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. It is a... Uh, that's got to be something when you just, you know, at some point they become women yeah. and you got to know, like, you know, look, I don't know any details. I don't want to know, but she's got to be fucking. Yeah, she has to be. Ah. Like, I, I, you're a job, I, I've, you know, you want them positive members of society. You want them viable human beings. At a certain point, it boils down to the fact you want your daughter to have as few dicks as possible. Like, that's just... <laughs> that's your goal. <laughs> like, I Every don't dick just does more psychological damage. <laughs> it's like it's fucking me. Like, yeah. like, 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 because I don't want to wake up like... This true story. I was on a train. I was in Europe. I was on a train. We were on a tour bus. And um, on the tour bus, they were... They, yeah, had videos, right? So I woke up to... Uh, Montana Fishburn, and I, the first thing All I right. thought was, if I, if somewhere some dudes were on a bus with a picture of my daughter, oh man, I would be with pimples on her ass. I would be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> mortified. Like I would, that would crush me. That yeah. would be, that wouldn't. We we ended up talking to her. Remember? Guys? Oh, that's right. Yeah. She called in. Yeah, we felt so bad for her because she something looks was... like Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she does. And something Morpheus. wasn't right about that. She whole thing. Morpheus. Yeah. yeah. That, that, we let her off easy because we were like, wow. daughters have such power to just fuck over their fathers if if you do if you make a mistake. Yeah. If you make a mistake and send them off on another road, yeah. boy, they can come back and fuck a, yeah. a father over. Yeah. <laughs> you got a son too? I got a son. My son has Asperger's. But okay. he just graduated. He's he's the best kid I've ever met. But it's hard. Like like uh, my wife, like it's hard having a kid who you because everybody thinks. They want the son to be an athlete, or mm -hmm. you want them to be a ladies' man, or you want them to be like he's just a good person, but and and a you know one like literally people say this all the time. He's an angel with clip, none of that. He's just a good guy, mm -hmm. a really good person. Like my son is, like he calls me and goes, "Dad, I love you." Or, Dad, are you all right? Dad, like my other daughters are like, they don't really care. <laughs> yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> but but I never felt the need to protect him. Like mm -hmm. I never felt like I never thought. You know, I thought he was going to get teased like everybody else does. Yeah. But I do a joke about that. My wife used to be just upset. And I'm like, you deal with shit your way. I deal with... Like, he asked me when he when he graduated, he asked me to give the commencement address at his graduation, which I... And I felt horrible because I never even got out of high school. So I, why would I... Like, I feel like yeah. a hypocrite. Listen, kids, take advantage of your education or it ain't going to work out for you. Pull my Mercedes around, like I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, so... But now the thing is, it's more socially, but now he, like, takes Krav Maga and he's a Krav Maga instructor and a, the most fit dude I ever, I've ever seen. Like, mm -hmm. muscles everywhere, really thin, that, 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 but can't get any pussy. Oh, shit. Can't get any pussy. What's, the, what's it called? Has it no game. Asperger's. Like, has no, no like... What does that make you do? What is that? It's like you stand too close. You talk like it's a social Socially, thing. Little, you, don't, you don't. You don't. Get little, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how old is he? He's twenty three. Do they say? Does someone with Asperger say things that are harsh, or do you not know that? Like, if someone's fat, well, you go like, you know, wow, you're pretty fat. Oh, they don't know that. They don't know that. That's they don't. They don't. They have no like a bullshit in them. Mm. Like if you tell them something, they'll literally believe it. Holy shit. They'll literally believe it. So what is the, how do you know someone has that? Or someone's not just... Well, you can, like a lot of people, you know who make, like, and they're, and they're really task-oriented. Like if it's, uh, 
Like they did a lot of the BlackBerry application because you can just point them and they'll do exactly that thing. Wow. And so uh, they'll have the same kind of like he goes to Krav Maga five times, like three, four times a day. Wow. Um, like wow. he's obsessed with it. So it, he doesn't like they fixate on one thing and they kind of. And so I told him, I said, no, you ain't going to get no pussy just being <laughs> it's just at the gym all the time. It's just not going to. So he did get some one time, but he got it from an older. This is man, my wife got upset. He came oh, home and he said, oh he said, he came home. He said, I did it, and this was like five months ago. Oh and no! And I go, what? And he said, I had sex. As I said, how was it? He said, I used three rubbers, and I went, Oh man, I'm so proud. He went, I, I was so nervous. I kept, you know, taking them. I'm like, so I thought it was gonna be a great story, but it ended up being fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, my, he's telling me and my wife the story. Oh shit! And he, he, he the woman was from Swin, Swin, Switzerland or Finland. She's 35 years old. She sees this hot black dude who is fit and incredible guy. So she gives him some. And um, you know, and I, I said, you know how sweet that is, because she knew it was his first time. You know how sweet that is that. A woman would know that you like, cause I'm just glad it wasn't like a ghetto chick that went. You can't oh fuck. man, yeah, <laughs> like, you, that can't fuck. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like, you need you need a confidence like, boost that first time, yeah, yeah. yeah instead of a ghetto rap, a layup. That first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a layup. It's gotta work his way up to a oh ghetto rap. Oh my god, you gotta make your way up to a hood rap. You can't be. Bring it, daddy. You don't need that shit in your life. <laughs> what the fuck you think you're giving me? What the fuck oh, is that man. shit? Oh, oh man. And I was, no. and my wife. Actually said you should call her and thank her. Oh shit! There was the, I was like, am I hearing this? Too? Like, she's this, like, is this protocol? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is? Like, he could talk to us about anything and does. Mm -hmm. He could talk to literary literary about anything and and and. But he's he's at that age where like he's. <laughs> my wife goes, he's mad all the time. I said, like, because he's not fucking. <laughs> that's what that's what guys do. Right? They get mad. <laughs> you get you you're mad. He said he, every time I say something, he's snapping. I said, I you should let me hire him a hooker. Like really, <laughs> like, yeah. like, and not even like, like, kind of like, not let him know, like, like on cable guy, like, not let him know. That, yeah, kind of just a uh, girlfriend experience, right? Uh, night, you know. She, she, ah, he should, he should. At, at a certain point, he just has to get off, or he'll kill somebody. Plus, but the thing is, if he, if he gets a hooker, he doesn't know he might fall in love with her, because she'll be not, you know, an, like a real good escort really makes you feel loved and he might go like I want to see you again and then all of a sudden that could be a problem no, but then that, that could be, could be <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying yeah mm -hmm. that's so you would have to tell well, him you might have to build in a backstory or something yeah yeah, yeah like she's, yeah, she's yeah. getting on a plane the next day yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. she's by train I don't know son you, <laughs> you know what that Hughley bank account could yeah. probably work for him yeah. oh god Just yeah wave that around to get the hey, that's what I'm saying son we yeah. got a car <laughs> fucking I, I would I would have so many uh, STDs when I was young. I would literally be at, I would keep antibiotics on an IV I would, <laughs> yeah. does, put a tic tac uh, container does he live on his own no can he, he someday like, oh yeah obviously he, yeah. he can do well we don't know much about that he, he's the literally he could do anything the thing about him like I remember when he wanted to go my wife wanted him to go off to college I'm like this dude doesn't even know his address so why would I let him go off to college you know college is crazy because a lot of people go crazy anyway, and first you get your first, uh, I, I want him to be in his first relationship and get his heart broken, and then he can leave. Oh, because, right. Got to be close to home base yeah, when that happens. because everybody's going to get their heart broken. Yeah. And you're going to be devastated and fucked off and think all kinds of crazy thoughts. Get and if you're by yourself. Early. Yeah. You know, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, for, Man, it, it, isn't getting, it isn't getting ass. It's that getting ass, falling in love with it. And having her fuck your friend. That's oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> that's when wow. you need your father. Yeah, that's a bad one right there. So, yeah, because yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. You need your familiar bed to cry right. on. <laughs> that's, that's the last time you need your father. Right, right. right. That's that the, the last, last time, time you really right. need dad. That's that last one, and then right. you move on. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, I you made it through. Own. Thank you, and right. uh, take it easy. And that's you're it. never the same after that. No. no I, you a little never... piece of your soul is gone. You've been yeah. jaded. Oh, uh, we talked about A little about part of the innocence, a little part of uh, your this holding a woman up on a pedestal it's thing. Like, fuck Kind of goes away. Yeah. But that happened to me. In the, I was in the seventh grade. This girl named Catherine. I don't want to say her last name, but I'm in the seventh grade, and we had to go. We had all rode on school buses. It was the seventh graders in the front, eighth graders in the back, ninth graders in the middle. And it was a song called Gloria. For not your Gloria, because we, we discussed how you guys have different songs. Right? Yeah, of course. But this is a group called Enchantment, and um, 
It used to come on every day. And, you know, you know, a seventh grader and a ninth grader, she's so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. I would look oh, back boy. at her when the song was coming on, and she would kind of smile, and everything would be cool. And one day, man, and this went on for months, and then one day I, I, I looked back, and she went, What you looking at, motherfucker? Oh, <laughs> shit. Stop looking at me, you nappy-headed fucker. Oh, and you had this image in your head that you guys oh, are building a relationship. Oh, man. And everybody laughed, and the bus driver <laughs> tilts his mirror back. <laughs> that big, what the fuck are you doing, mirror? Yeah. <laughs> With oh, his hand man. gloves that drivers wear. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he, and he went, it's all right, little man. Uh, It'll be cool. And then he started fucking her. Like no that kidding. guy. Oh, shit. <laughs> that guy. No kidding. But I was different from that time. Like, from that minute on, I remember the first time I went, you know what? The, like, from that, all I did was love her. Right. That's yeah. all I did. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And the bus driver started fucking her? He, yeah, he was like 21 years old. Oh, my old. God. Where was that in CeeLo's video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Holy not that shit. day, but, yeah, but yeah. eventually. <laughs> I mean, he raised her, like kind of like Woody Allen. He, like, yeah, he, let her, yeah. he, let her, he stayed on oh, her route until she was older. I had that happen to me with uh, uh, my best friend, one of those th deals. I was going out with a girl uh, for like nine months, and it was, uh, what was it? I guess ninth, tenth grade, something like that. Yeah, probably tenth grade. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, oh, I call her up. She's not home. This, oh. that, the other, and that. And I'm just like oh, freaking out. And found out she's just fucking my best friend. Yeah. And now, you know, it fucks things up with the best friend. Fucks things up with her, obviously. And I was just devastated yeah. to the point where I would just sit at home and just drink i do that now though yeah uh, let me think what would i do different yeah maybe you never got I was, maybe I was you never got over it i took uh I, t I like for no reason would just drive my car in the woods and just like hit trees with my car and get all pissed remember off. that feeling though but, really that's a crazy yeah, white, that you that's some white, that's white, right that's some white yeah. shit yeah. Yeah. let me take my car into the woods out on long island and just drive fast down the little trail is that when you took the bath Oh, oh, yeah, and then yeah. I tried. I tried to uh, after, uh, yeah, because this went on for weeks of just depression and yes. sadness, yeah. and, and I thought it would be a great idea. Oh, Let boy. me go into my garage with Don't the uh, him, Louisville Don't Slugger. Don't look at him. And hit my arm because if I break my arm, then she'll have sympathy for me and come back to me. This is the thinking of a fucking dumb tenth grader. Are you, you, you're not when, bullshit. Right? I'm not bullshit, man. You, I actually, but wow. I couldn't. I couldn't close the deal. Like I'd swing and then. Oh, I'd hold up. I'd go for the bunt right when I hit, like, right, right, got right, close. Right, 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 right. He's like, oh, he's squaring off for a bunt. He bruised his Think. wrist. <laughs> I bruised my fucking wrist, uh, and it, it wouldn't have uh, You didn't helped. put it in a sling? Uh, yeah, and I did put it in a uh. sling. So, like, what happened? Oh, yeah, I, I fell off of this. I fucking like was doing something Man, manly. Women, and I... the, 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 women, like, especially, like, they have, like, I have a friend. He's a really good friend of mine. And his wife is just the horrible, most horrible fucking bitch I've ever met. She's fucking horrible, yeah. man. Like he, she fucks another guy, and then they get back. Oh. He takes her back, and then it's just. Uh, and and I'm like, at a certain point, women say they want a good guy, but if you're nice to them, you're getting fucked. You get. It's just yeah. really hard to not like. Yeah. Like, I, my wife like is a wonderful woman, but at a certain point, she understands. I'm. I'm. You have to disappear for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> you do a relationship, yeah. a long-standing relationship is directly dependent on a, on a woman's uh, ability to take some bullshit. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You can't like. Yeah. That can't a man can't take bullshit because then he's impacted. Yeah. Then she thinks she can run over. It has to be her that takes bullshit. But they have something else that they get in the deal. Too, yeah, they don't have as, to work. You know, right, the bullshit. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, that's what you see. But you're right. They will fuck you over if you're too nice. If you're too nice. Yeah. I'm, I, like he said, man, what should I do? I said, you should slap the fuck out of him. You should literally. Yeah. So I, you say whatever you want to say. Not necessarily hitting a person. Like, you don't have to do that. Like, me and my wife were having an argument five months ago. And she woke me up to have this uh, this argument that only fucking women can have. And... <laughs> And she started getting a little like, and I'm like, hey, hey, girl, you're talking to me like a man. I said, now, at a certain point, you've made your point, and I've respected you and listened to you. Now, shut up. <laughs> like, and I, I never talked to her like that. Wow. And she yeah. went right to sleep. And, she said that, and the next day, she's cooking, and she goes, I, I, I just, you know, I, I'm sorry. I got a little bit. You can't. You, at, a, at a certain point, this can only go bad. And you've made your yeah. point. No, stop. Now but you don't, you morning, don't normally do that. You, you're normally nice. Normally, I, I'm, I'm, normally I just kind of just be quiet till she 
realizes I'm not I'm asleep. So yeah. then, but this time I'm like, this is enough. Like I don't. The next Shut morning, up. when when she said that, did you get all like, yeah? No, no. Did you get just, all manly, like, mm, yeah. no, I mean, e even inside, like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. that was the right mm -hmm. move. Because I, I just, I don't like to, she's my, I love her, but yeah, I don't, sure. shut up. But That's shut dumb. But shut up. I mean, even in the wild uh, kingdom there, you see, uh, you know, occasionally that big lion is just laying there doing nothing. Right. The lioness will come over, give him like a nudge, and he'll fucking claw right at her. Yes. Yeah, that's that's him giving her a little right, shit right. and getting keeping her, uh, you know, you getting her to respect say. him a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I think that women, women are like animals. Like if you got a dog, mm. that dog every minute of that your existence with him is trying to see who's in charge. <laughs> well, if you no, really, you let him eat first. You let him jump on the fucking couch. You let him, all of it is about either I'm in charge. They don't. It's just instincts. Well, they don't care. Mm. Like you think they love you, but open the fucking door and see if they they right. won't stay. <laughs> <laughs> they won't stay because every minute of their existence or interaction with you is all about seeing it's dominance, right? It's yeah. seeing who's yep. fucking in charge. And I think women are like that. seeing who the pack leader is, right. as Caesar That's, would uh, say. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think women are like that. I think that every minute they're trying to see who has the reins in a you, relationship. You said something in there that's important that I didn't want to skip over. And the argument always begins right when you're ready to fall asleep. Yeah. Oh, God, why do they pick that man, time? Man, yeah. Why do they know. pick that time? They think it's because maybe they feel like we're more, weak. You're more vulnerable yeah. at that point, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm. We're speaking for many people. That's when the arguments usually start. It, right when you're about to fucking close your eyes, or something like, or you're watching a game, and like it's something where you're not <laughs> going to be able to focus. <laughs> right. You can't just get like like it's never right after I'm done working out. Right, it's right. Like when you're ready, you're all ready. ready. Yeah, you're right. Right. I'm alert. I'm <laughs> super <laughs> alert. Let's do this. Come on, bring it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm running through tires. Come on. Yeah, it's, fucking, it's never that time. It's when you're very sleepy. Oh, oh, yeah. Your day is over. Bottle of wine. I'm fucking <laughs> passing out. Right. And, 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 I, I think we should talk which, about nothing. Which, right, which right. proves they are smarter than right. us in the end. But, but I'm, we, I have we no, haven't figured that shit out. I have no doubt. She's, and the thing, my, my wife's very religious, and I don't go to church. Because I think... At black churches, you only see gay dudes, women, and children. Like, you never... If a straight dude going to church, just to see how much buzz you can get. It's not... <laughs> yeah, it's not there for the religion. It's not there for the religion. Yeah. How, how did you guys get together with that? I was... You guys come from different walks of life, yeah, obviously. Yeah, and, and she, like, I grew up in L.A., and she grew up in a little suburb called Carson. And, yeah. And she's... Uh, uh, she went to college, and I didn't. And I and I instantly knew that I would marry her. Instantly. Mm. I got married at 2021. 20, so. Wow, man, yeah. So... But, and I knew I wasn't ready to get married, but I said, I'll never see another thing like this again. So I'll get ready. Like, I knew that I said, if I let her go, I'll never see anything And have like you? Again. No. Yeah? Never. Wow, but, that's but, pretty amazing. But, like, I would never, like, if I was going to get married, I'd never marry another black woman. Like, I, <laughs> I would, like, be a, like a murderer. I've done my time. <laughs> You've it. done it. <laughs> it's a Puerto Rican woman for me next. <laughs> yeah. oh, like, if she's ever struck by lightning, I'm going right <laughs> to the Bronx. Oh, good luck with that Puerto Rican thing. <laughs> um, but the religious thing, does that get in the way? Yeah. In what ways? B because she doesn't like... That like if I say God damn it or if right. I, she's very religious. Right. Like she's she's not quite the religious right. But is there certain movies or TV shows she wouldn't let the kids watch yeah. Harry Potter? Mm. Like oh, you okay. come to my house, she has angels painted on. Remember the growing yeah. up, Aunt the list, the Catholic Church would put out Catholic the list of movies Digest you weren't allowed to watch. Out movies that were condemned, you couldn't yeah. even go see them. No, and we knew those were the ones we had to watch. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that did, that backfired. She wow. just doesn't like, and I'll, she has these these horrible fucking prayer meetings where, <laughs> oh, like, her God. friends will. I'll come home and they'll be praying in your living room. In my living room, they'll have like these books. Like meetings. a Tupperware party. Wow. Uh, yeah, a Tupperware party, but Jesus everywhere. Oh, and it's you ever walk in mad, not knowing, to, motherfucker? Yeah, oh, yeah, hi. Yeah. They, hey, how no, you doing? I never <laughs> like. They always go, oh, please come join us. I'm like, no, so, <laughs> no, I'm no. Not, I'm not. So I don't how care. Does, how does she deal with your comedy? She's got to be one of your biggest fans. She but. is, but she doesn't. She wishes that I wouldn't do like some of the things I do, and she wishes I wasn't so like she thinks I'm obstinate, and she thinks like that I'm like I'm not hateful because I, I I generally I, I honestly love it. like I'm not mm -hmm. one of these comments who fuck people. I, I like right. people, but I think that they just in general are hypocrites. Right? Sure. Like I don't I don't believe like like she gets mad because I'll say stuff. Like I don't believe monogamy is a natural state. Mm -hmm. I believe that you just uh, get, like, now, you just have so much to lose, you kind of go, fuck it. I right. 
Just if monogamy, fuck you. if monogamy, monogamy was so natural, it wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't get those urges, right? And they wouldn't be so fucking strong, right? <sighs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and and she like, she instills it in my children, and they are more like me. They more like like really? my daughter, my mm. oldest daughter. She. She goes to church, but it's not only because they'll do whatever. Is she they want. the one that swallows the oysters? Yeah. Oh, God. See, that's horrible. Jesus. See, that's horrible. You can't, Jesus you can't tell oh, someone. Oh, I'm, just, oh, I'm just trying man. to, you know. <laughs> right there, Gina, you can't we, tell. We've nah, talked about nah, a lot nah, of things. Nah. I'm just trying to relate a little yeah, bit. She's okay. That, she yeah. swallows the oysters. Yeah, she swallows the oyster and, and not the bullshit. But, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just, I like, uh, shit. like, there's so much hypocrisy. Like, there's no, like, like you have some preacher railing on about gay people, and then he's fucking the boys. In there. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And it's just like a like you you'll hear people doing all these things, and then the the the, the music ministers is is you like this is bullshit. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's complete bullshit. And uh, so I won't do it. Do you believe in God? Of course, I believe in God. You just I don't, don't believe in the organized religion part. I believe that organized religion, particularly in my community, like like look at. All the shit that is like, look at how, how skeptical you'd have to be. You come here, they take you out of this country, they beat you, they enslave you, they sell your kids off, and they go, "Hey, look!" But you can believe in the same God that gave me all this loves you. That's the whole. That's the whole <laughs> introduction of it. So, from the beginning, <laughs> you're tainted. And then I've never seen a black atheist. And the thing about it is, there's very little evidence that God has ever lived around black people. Like. Uh, <laughs> like God's never been to Haiti or Detroit or Nigeria. But he was darker than we like to betray him. No, but I'm just saying, like, at a He's certain not, point, you can see a black person going, maybe yeah. God doesn't like him. Right, right, right. But he didn't have blonde hair and blue no. eyes either. So. Well, that's Jesus. Right, true. Talking, you know. Well, God is the Jesus. The big, big God. Jesus is God. Yeah. Well, same person. No, One God the is the same. This, Jesus is the son right, of God. I know. <laughs> is he? <laughs> like, I don't know. But, but That's what I just told when I was a kid. And, 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 and it's all story. these things I was told, and and I believe a lot. Like I I I think that anybody that would believe that they're physically superior, I mean spiritually superior to somebody based on mm -hmm. what they believe, is already like we have. We live in a Christian country, and we we espouse Christianity. But in Japan, when they had those horrible nuclear, not one riot, nobody asked the government for mm -hmm. anything, nobody price price gods, gods, and they're Buddhist. Yeah, yeah. Right? Can you? If that shit happened here, oh, oh gosh, oh yeah, we, 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 gosh. we're America, and people. When Katrina happened, people had to send us money, and we're America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Puerto Rico ponied up some money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a couple of pesos. Right. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like, that's the ugly side of America. <laughs> Good point. Like, people like we are the richest country in the world, and people got together. And they helped us out. Right. <laughs> yeah. You didn't you see Get us one... back on our feet. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Let me help you. Right. you give it... Well, you didn't see one telethon for nobody. Not one celebrity <laughs> sang a, a song for Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Not not one. Yeah. But no. we're... Because so... it's too far away. <laughs> too far yeah. away. People do love faraway disasters. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, but, but, but Indonesia's far away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of helped them out. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Chile's far away. Well, if they weren't Does so... Does Japan take foreign help, though? They're like one of those countries that doesn't like a lot of foreign aid. If they, they're if, kind of a proud country. It's dishonorable. If they didn't yeah, come across really so emotionless, then maybe we would have helped them. Yeah. No, I just think that they don't... <laughs> right, well, fuck that's you. Like, yeah, we're all right. It's a radiated I country. Know, show some emotion, <laughs> and then maybe we'll feel bad for you. I, I, I think we, they just don't... They, like, they have... Uh, <laughs> nobody's greater than the other, they believe. Like, they, mm. like when a disaster happened, nobody said... Like, those men went back into the nuclear plant knowing they were going to die. Yeah, just for the greater good. I'm like, mm, mm, that's not unbelievable. So much. No, not at all. You no. can't even wrap your mind around that no. mentality. So how is, they, how is the, the God that would make them that way? Yeah. yeah. And the guy that makes us petty and small, like, at least <laughs> split the difference. Yeah. Yeah, but let's yeah, be honest, they also sell niceness. panties and vending machines. <laughs> let's not act like they're all the fucking messiah. <laughs> they like the little, yeah, let's not totally, <laughs> yeah. let's not totally <laughs> praise them. They do like the like school girl yeah. uh, anime. Yeah. Yeah. They can't yeah, come yeah, unless yeah. somebody's crying with they, shit on their they, face. They <laughs> love serpent <laughs> cock yeah. in their anime. You know, and tub girl. Yeah. Tub girl, yeah. sure. And Japanese porn is horrible. And German, too. But they, I mean, I've theorized access, that when you lose porn. a world war, you take it out on each other sexually. Man, because mm. like the thing I don't like, like I like I was in Japan uh, two weeks ago, yeah. and it's it's like it's everybody's it's a nation full of Tiger Woods because everybody it's black dudes in Japan, and I get it, it's kind of exotic, and I get it, but like 
and they I can't they're just so like uh I watch Japanese porno and everything you do hurts them. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 All right, this is not kind of a turn on though. Kind of a turn on. Not, it hurts a little. Yeah. A little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Right, so okay. so not like, like, and it's this little Japanese that, like, uh, look, I would crack a fucking rib. You know? <laughs> <laughs> crazy? Yeah, they like crazy? them all little and... <laughs> All right. Uh, they're, they're, why are there octopus on these girls' heads? Well, yeah. Like, there's well, octopus on their heads. Because why not, Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, I don't. That's not. I don't I'm, see that. I don't. Nothing really is going on there. Yeah, no, no. I'm no, not no, feeling no. it. They just like the weirdest shit. I can't enjoy an eel crawling out of a vagina. No. It does no. nothing weird. for me. Fucking no. weird. But why Jerry are porn I like. Jer oh, I, I, I don't. Who doesn't enjoy a good caviar party? Yeah. But caviar. I just mean the bar the barbaric shit they do in those yeah. porn in, in that stuff. Why were you in it's Japan? Summer. Anything I good? Was touring for the uh, troops, but I actually just uh, I was doing a bunch of uh, marine bases, which I and I actually dig working for the troops, and I, yeah. I dig like that they let me be who I am. You like, like going I, there? I, I didn't. I didn't like Japan. You didn't like it? No. Why? Why? Because I don't. I, I just too the, the, different. It's too different the food and then then it's seventeen hours like a, oh, I'm man. California yeah, that's seventeen long, hours yes. and then I was just it's just a lot. But how about much. the people? The people are the nicest people. Oh. Are. You know, people get like I live here a lot now, and this is the most. These are the nicest people I've ever been around. Japanese? No, the, uh, New York. Oh, New York. Oh, New York? Yeah. Except like they, they'll do shit like this. I was eating so I was eating so hard and I had dinner and I was trying to get a taxi. So after the taxi. I left my bag. I finally get a taxi. I left my bag and wallet in the restaurant. So I tell the manager to bring my bag out, out to me, and she's going to do it. But the taxi driver, I'm not going to wait. And I'm like, well, start the meter. Once the meter starts, Who it's cares? the same. It doesn't matter. Who cares I just want you to park here. Right. And he goes, I will not wait. And I'm like, well, I'm not getting out the car. And he actually says, see, you see, that is why no one wants to pick you people up. Oh, shit. True story. <laughs> no, it's because you might get shot. <laughs> right, get it right. straight. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, honestly, I said, that's why everybody think you're a terrorist. So we're going back to <laughs> Haji from Johnny Quest. Why am I taking this shit from you? Right. <laughs> he closes the little window they have and goes, fucking nigger. True story. Story. Holy oh, shit. And, and, like, you call a black man a nigga, eventually a nigga will show up. It's right. Like, <laughs> when you rub that lamp and the genie pop out, so, <laughs> Shazam, the nigga you asked for is here. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think he's paying. Oh, shit. So I choose to, I, 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 I grabbed him through the window, and, and I grabbed him. I'm like, motherfucker. And I didn't know those turbans were tied up. I thought they were hats. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but they're not. <laughs> it unwrapped. Like, I'm like, who the fuck is... And he calls the police, and I get out of the taxi, and I go back to my apartment and left my bag in the car. Oh, oh no. So I have to call Precinct 1, and I actually had his Precinct 1. They run down the taxi, call the, got the taxi. He comes, and so he says... And I have pictures on Twitter of this. So the police officer says, well, look, he says that you tore his shirt and that, you know, you give him $30 and it'll, oh, it'll be okay and he'll give you a thing back. And I go, I gave him a 50 and I said, this was exact, the exact same 50 I was going to give you for taking me home. And the turban was funny because it was red at first and now it was yellow. <laughs> like a caution. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> caution. It was, it was and I'm, I'm just like, I'll have experiences like that. Like, I'll, yeah. It's like, even, even like, when I was like Mark Twain, like we're very uncomfortable with race. Like Mark Twain, they decided to pay, take the word nigga out of all Mark Twain's books. Right, yeah. He said it 219 yes. times, Huckleberry Finn, and wow. four times a Tom Sawyer. And they decided they would replace the word nigga with slave. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, because, like, and, but they didn't ask her because I don't, <laughs> that's not an upgrade. <laughs> no, like, that doesn't seem yeah. to be an upgrade, right? Like, I'd rather yeah. be a nigga than a slave. <laughs> you call me nigga, I could be offended, but I could still drive home to my house. <laughs> <laughs> you call me slave. I gotta go with you. That's not. We were all about that story, and that's the best take yet. That's very funny. We were so pissed off that they're changing right. books. You yeah, know, they change books because we're uncomfortable. Like Texas doesn't mention slave. Who's trade. uncomfortable though? But I, think, I was on Twitter. No one was uncomfortable. But even if they are, didn't understand why they were doing this, yeah, yeah. you're supposed right. to be. Because that There's was your no, word. Sometimes being uncomfortable is a good thing. Right. It, it reminds you that you can get uncomfortable. Right. Jesus. And it also make... reminds you how far you come. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Well, we I know. actually wrote. I didn't. I didn't feel the word was used enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was upset. I was a sellout. That Mark Twain was. But yeah, it's amazing how we do try to structure things so we're all 
completely milk toast and comfortable. Right. And nobody has that. Uh, people don't know how to deal with social awkwardness. No, and you know so what? F- race is socially to. awkward. Tough right. shit. You have to deal with it. It's but all, it's only socially awkward. Like Texas changed all of their books. They took the slave trade out. And they call it triangle. The triangular trade. Mm. They don't they mention slavery. And first, uh, I, it took me long enough to get used to getting called a nigga. Now I'm a triangle, too. I don't want that. <laughs> triangle. <laughs> but I think that it seems disingenuous. Because they, mm-hmm. you like, political correctness means I won't say how I really feel. Right. I'll just be urbane. Right. You still genteel, feel the same way. Just won't you're just say being it told you can't, yeah, you're not you know, changing you can't anything. say it. You're not really changing no. anybody's uh, thoughts. I like when they switch to N-word because where they used to just have to say... A racial epithet, which right. could be a couple of things. Right. Then on the news, when they're like, and he used the N-word, mm-hmm. and you're like, all right, now at least mm-hmm. I know exactly what he said. And boy, they say N-word a lot. Yeah. And you know what's funny is that is that I, I'm only mad that we don't have a word that's equally as incendiary. Yeah. Like, that's what our yeah. scientist needs to give us. Well, keep trying. <laughs> like, yes. like, you guys like, will come up with some eventually. Because yeah, eventually, you know what it is. <laughs> keep trying. The only reason Russia and America never went to war because it was mutually <laughs> assured destruction. Right. Like, yep. I got a lot of shit. You got a lot of shit. Right. We don't want right. to. Mm-hmm. We need some shit like that for y'all. Some kind of, uh, yeah. What's the best one you've so far? It's, no, it's not. There honky. isn't even yeah, a yeah, yeah, That's no. just silly. I'll tell you, it's a combination of words. Jefferson, and that's I fucked your daughter. Yeah. That's a rough. <laughs> <laughs> that trumps them all. <laughs> it's a little long, but it works. Father-in-law. Father-in-law. There you go. That's <laughs> father-in-law. Neighbor. <laughs> Baby daddy's worse. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> and you know, thank you for that because I have to have that. Yeah, that's that's so a good one. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, like when I watch, like the whole reason Gingrich did good in South Carolina because he looked like he was taking black people to task. Yeah, yeah. It really did. Oh, yeah. He got up there and uh, spelt like, out a few things about the welfare, right. you know, uh, Obama being the welfare president. and um, no, Yeah, stamp, food stamp president. Food stamp president. Right. And uh, how, how uh, blacks and Hispanics should uh, should operate to get right. jobs and things. Like you said, the janitor right. thing. And, yeah. Gingrich is just a douche. And he <laughs> looks like a douche. Yeah, but he's, he's making it fun, though. He really uh, is. I'm watching debates. I don't watch debates. Right. I've been watching all of them because of him. Yeah, he's... Imagine him and uh, Obama debating. Mm. You know what it'd be? The problem is he'll look raging and angry. <laughs> right. And although Obama's... someone told him to start like loosening up a little bit and smiling. Yeah, that's he just is... like being a less. It's uh, fake, less... but he's changing in the last week or two because I really I'm all about this lately, and and he's starting to smile and not be so fucking. But even when he smiles, he's ornery. <laughs> When you like when I was watching the State of the Union address, right? Uh, he, Obama, when he smiles, he looked like he's. Really Were you worried smiling. about his color, though? Yeah, I thought. What was what was that about there? I, I, between him and Bonner, I thought it was two black dudes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I, it, it has to be rough. Like every time I see him on, 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 on giving the State of the Union, it makes me proud. I just I like because yeah. usually when I see a black dude with two white dudes sitting behind him, he's in court. So this is <laughs> a little different. This is so. I wasn't sure if my TV was fucked up. No, or, it, or everybody his, on Twitter was something. Or his liver's or, failing. No. You know? <laughs> or is this, they got the wrong. He's got to fire his makeup on. Yeah, that was renal the wrong color. <laughs> right. But uh, who do you think is the biggest threat to Obama? As far as uh, I think the biggest threat to Obama, Romney is is not even Romney. Romney looks so between who's left though. Mm. I don't. I think that Obama's biggest threat. Is really if the economy keeps oh, kind of uh, sputtering sure. along. Mm, mm. What person is? Yeah, no, which, none what of these guys. They, they, their negatives are going. Like, the, Gingrich is almost sixty percent negative. Like already, he's not a dude that people don't know. They know him and they hate him. Yeah. And and Romney's negatives are almost close to fifty. But you have to love the way Newt handled his marriage. That's the, the the thing they tried to get dirt on him is the only thing I like about him. He was married to an ugly chick, and he's like, I want to start fucking other people. <laughs> I, I actually made me kind of relate to him. If you want to hang around and continue cooking for me, feel free. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to be fucking yeah. other prettier women. I'm, I'm tired of fucking one of the way outs from the Flintstones. I'd like to move on to a younger lady. Yeah. I have cancer. Everybody has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> when a, like when a dude leaves, like I don't like when you leave your woman that had the mother and children when she's struggling with cancer mm-hmm. like you leave right there like what would you do to 300 million people you don't know right right that's someone he apparently loved at some point right. in his life you married her you had kids mm-hmm. with her. I, I don't really i mean i don't have the moral i think that you you can you, can, you should have as many women as you can afford like <laughs> I, I really do i think that that's like or, and, and then you can get away with hiding right but 
he just seems like a horrible like he he brags a lot about how, how he you know everything he did he didn't he didn't fucking Reagan didn't know you he didn't <laughs> he's like Al Gore who invented the internet but only yeah, he, yeah. like he's a fucking horrible dude and Mitt Romney is first off I think they don't like him because he's uh, Mormon. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one, especially with Middle America uh, uh, Christians. They're going to yeah. be like, "Hey, fuck this guy." So we can they can hate black people, but uh, obviously they can be Christians. God mm -hmm. loves it. Yeah, you, you know you can still be a Christian. I, I think they don't know what a Mormon is, and they don't dig it. Yeah, yeah, they don't know anything about no. the history of magic it. underwear. What is that? All? Yeah, no yeah, magic underwear, and the uh, it's it's not an old enough religion. No. Did you, you know? see the Book of Mormon? I know, but I keep. Oh, DL. Fucking you can't call get your pizza. It's a I masterpiece. I asked Roland a, a couple times for tickets call and your he's got to give me nothing. Don't get, get your seat. seat. What? Yeah. yeah. Don't get Just your pay seat. for him. You, if you got to pay for him, but you can get in. You guys can get in. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's it's always sold out, sold out like yeah. weeks in a row. I've never really even been to a place. I don't. No, I no, hate no. musicals. I despise yeah. them. Go. It's really? great. Yeah. I love it. I gotta see it. They have kid fucking jokes. Really? It's really good. And it works. It's really dark. And it's really. You've watched The Wire? Yeah. Brother Muzon is in it? Yeah. He's really? A, yes. Yeah. See, Michael Potts. Yeah, he Father sings. Was great. I couldn't. I didn't know it was him till after, because he's not. He doesn't have glasses on. He plays. Uh, he's one of the leads. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, I, he looked. It drove what me is nuts. It about? Is this Mormons for real? Mm -hmm. Mormon they, missionaries. They just make fun of the religion. That go to Africa. It tells you how Mormonism started or whatever it's called started, and then this, these two guys go to Africa to, to try to recruit uh, these 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 very 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 poor villagers to become Mormons and it's a musical and on the surface that's sell, selling it like that I, I, there's nothing I wanted to see less right. <laughs> but we had a couple yeah. of them coming in I'm like let me go see it and because it was Matt and Trey from South Park I'm like those guys are kind of right. dark and even right. they're very dark so I knew kind of. Were, yeah 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 <laughs> kind of, like, like you were kind of dark yeah they're, 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 they're <laughs> slightly <laughs> creepy but it was brilliant man it's fucking I gotta see it dude. brilliant and funny it really is and it's not there's nothing cheesy about it no. and it makes sense but it's not like the typical attack on religion where you're mm. like, all right, we got it, predictable. Um, they humanize Mormons, but they also make fun of them. It's really fucking brilliant. Really? Yeah, it's great. It's one the, of the best things I've ever seen. What is the basis? Like, all I know is, like, up until the late, late 70s, it, they believed it was a sin to be black. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was wow. it. 1978 is when they, they, yeah. they turned their the corner on black people, and I don't yeah. know what... But it's the, the government. They, they basically, you can't keep having exemption as a religion if you're if you're excluding people. That's right, is that what right, it was? Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, my problem with that is, you still, if you really believe what you're saying, then the government can't make you change it. Mm -hmm. right. You still always believe that. Right. So my problem is that I know that they're doing what they have to do to kind of keep a religious status. But they still feel, if you believe from inception that it was a sin to be black and that the only person where a black person can get to heaven is if if, if a white person vouches for them and they still would have to be slaves in heaven. That's they believe they that. Do they really say that? They really believe that. Now, why would you change just because the government says uh, you no can't have a No black people are voting for Romney. Right. Oh, you can't, wow. just because you can't have just basically, you can't you can't call yourself a religion and and enjoy the status of a religion if people are excluded. And so we're going to you know you change for that reason. You still believe? Well, DL, how else would heaven be for white people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, you just described heaven. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Look at I just fucking recruited half the sun. Where is this? Oh, well, you know what? That's why. Like, why do we sign up? <laughs> that's yeah. like, that's, that's why be a Mormon today. <laughs> Remember Sharpton blasted it uh, and. and Everyone was annoyed, but actually looking back, I kind of agree with Sharpton on that one thing I'll right. ever agree on Al Sharpton on was when he blasted someone for being a Mormon. Somebody yeah. smashed their religion. It's like, yeah, no, I kind of get it. Mormon. Yeah. Who? Oh, is it? And I get it. Like, I live in, in, in L.A., Calabasas, the the, 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 uh, the Moore Park, Thousand, uh, Thousand Oaks, there are a lot of Mormons. Mm. I just don't understand how it is that you can actually believe up until 1978, we ain't talking about... 78's disco. Right, right. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. you, you most, like, like, definitely Romney's children were raised right. part of their life believing that black people couldn't get to heaven. How are you supposed to stop sinning? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, what's the Like, what, what is the incentive for me <laughs> to, like, <laughs> yeah. well, I get to heaven, get, get, get to, um, I live an exemplary life, and then I, my reward is to drive the Osmonds around? What the heck? <laughs> 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 well, I'm bad. If I hear this song one more goddamn time. <laughs> like, what is the, and that, so I, like, and, and the, it's just like, you, you, you kind of know these things, and I think that most people just, uh, 
think that that's like kind of a they they don't know what that is. Hmm. And so I think the South, you know, is Jesus said it. I believe it, and that's it. You want to talk to a yeah. Mormon? Yeah, I never talked to a Mormon before. I think. <laughs> hey, uh, Mitch. Are they? Are you a, a Mormon? No, not a Mormon. Ah, oh, yeah. Piece uh, of shit. The, show the other night. And uh, one oh, of the funniest it. jokes was they said in 1978, God changed his mind and said it was okay to be black. God changed God his mind. God changed his mind. <laughs> Wait, what, what did you say? He's saying that's what the play said. In the Book of Mormon? Oh, yeah, it, so they, it, the guy they sings acknowledge this. He yeah. sings it. He goes, yeah, in 1978, yeah, yeah. God changed his, his mind. mind about black yeah. people. Yeah, it's a really yeah. great. But it's, it's, it's the government that did it. Yeah, you got to go, DL, to this Yeah, book. I do now. I'm telling it's you. It's very, very funny. I, I, I'm not a, I don't like musicals at all. And usually when you go to this, you, you start looking how many songs are left. Not once did I do that. No. Really? It was amazing. Yeah, and it's a long play uh, musical, too, right? Two hours. Two hours. Yeah, with, with an intermission. But it flies by, man. I it's, couldn't it's believe. Funny. Hilarious. As a comic, I left out loud go. alone on a Wednesday afternoon watching. Oh, well, went to a matinee. Yeah. And um, I believe me, I had no because I fucking loathe music. Right. I've never. I no. Think the kids are Lion King. Hey, I hate all of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is an adult musical, mm -hmm. and it's funny, and it's really smart. Everybody's talking about how great it is. Yeah, too. and it, it, it's like, I didn't, I, you know, you never want to buy it and go, yeah, it is as good as everyone said, but it really was. It and was it's funny, and it's acerbic, and it just... Really? I bought, the, I, I bought a musical soundtrack. Right. Don't, I, admit. Yeah. I bought don't, a don't admit soundtrack. that. Don't admit that. Don't admit that. I enjoy don't it. Don't admit that. I have to go, because I have, my, I, I have well, to catch a plane, and my camera... Oh, you're, going to, you're doing a... I'm stage. doing Tempe. Yeah. You, you I'm do doing that on Monday. Stand up live, right? What? Uh, stand up live. Tempe Improv. But that's the. Uh, you, you, oh, I'll tell you about the new joint. No, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the Tempe Improv, yeah, tomorrow and Saturday. And then I'm doing Leno Monday. I love playing it. I was just in Arizona the first time. I love time. Arizona. I do too. You know what I love is that they're more. They they always come out to see me, and they're the yeah. whitest people on the face of the <laughs> Really nice. Like Scott still. They're very nice. People nice. Down there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, between the fact of sending the Mexicans out. Well, I guess I moved up since all the. Essays yeah, yeah, out. yeah. The the Mexicans are the uh, the enemy right. in Arizona. Yeah, no, you know, they don't like well, those uh, Mexicans. Man. We'll all finish. Up. Okay, I'm gonna run. Yeah, I, we're all Kenny has my up. camera, by the way. The, the but, cabbie returned it. And I, I had a camera I left in a cab yesterday. So you all just gave us a, a great hour of radio, and no one even knows where you're going to be. So make sure uh, you check out DL tonight at Caroline's. One oh, show man. only. Oh, you only do it tonight? Nice. Yeah. One fucking oh, show yeah. only. I guess it's a little warm-up for the big Showtime special, right? Because right? Right. Yeah, yeah. he's filming his uh, Showtime comedy special. Uh, can you get tickets to this Call thing? Said, yeah, you can. Just a few Okay, left. so it's going to be at the Union County Performing Arts Center in Rahway, New Jersey. Free tickets, register at theblacklistnyc.com. Not because I'm black. It's right, yeah. Name Samantha Black. Samantha black. Right. Yes. <laughs> Slash, She's great, by the way. Best yeah, audience she coordinator. Great. She is great. Slash D.L. Hughley. She did her thing last time. Yeah, yeah, she did in D.C. D.L. Yeah. is a brilliant stand-up. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's great, love man. D.L. You, you know what I just did? I just sold a, uh, a special to Comedy Central. And it's, uh, I'm trying to get the black man put on the endangered species list. Like, actually, <laughs> like I'm actually going <laughs> to. Wow. Because if you look at the criteria for getting a species declared yeah. uh, endangered, like yeah. we met, you know, so it's like, I'm, you, I'm very excited. You fit the criteria. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> Societal neglect. <laughs> a lot of males in captivity, same. It's, it's well, hilarious. Ha habitat shrinking. <laughs> right, habitat shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> pretty good. <laughs> let, me, let me give out that web, uh, web address again. The blacklist, nyc.com. Slash DL Hughley, if you want to go see the taping of his Showtime comedy special in Rahway, uh, New Jersey. And Caroline's tonight, that's awesome. Man, that's thanks. So Caroline's always great good to club, see man. you guys. Man. Fuck yeah. Always good yeah, to see you guys. Absolutely, man. Last DL, time we thanks. had a problem, so I want to apologize personally. Yeah, you got sick. There, I don't know. No, uh, Somebody got yeah, sick. Yeah, something went on. You were here, but we yeah. weren't here or something. Yeah. And, I, and then, then right after that, I, I didn't, like, I want, Patrice was just a. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. a bummer, man. Yeah. Fuck. Good dude, man. Yeah. Really good dude. And always. not one of those dudes you can. Uh, he's the kind of dude you you're really sorry that you you could think of fifteen other people that that should because he's so irreplaceable. Him. He's so he really irreplaceable. Is. There's nobody else that you could even go. Oh, this guy's kind of like right, Patrice, right? You know, right. there's not even no one was even close. Like, and he's a good guy, which adds to the credence. You should be a fucked up human being because fucked up people yeah, live. Yeah. For, like, yeah. their good grandmother always lives a long time. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what he was, somebody asked bad me yesterday? The bad and, grandmother. Yeah. Adrian asked me in an interview. We were talking, and uh, we spoke at his wake, and she was asking me, what were you thinking he would say to you? Mm. 
And I l really mean this. While I was talking, I, all I could think of is him going, Shut up! Yeah, right, yeah. Right, shut right, up, right, Jim! Right, right, shut right, up! Right, right, right. Just telling me to shut up. Right. You'd shush people really loud. Right. There was nothing better. I would beg him to shush people. Oh, yeah. There was, there was nothing funny because yeah. he had that big <laughs> fucking mouth and he could shush <laughs> 500 people in a the theater. Yeah. And the, it's an instinct that when somebody goes, Shh, <laughs> that you just stop talking. And he would do it at the cellar for hours. And they would stop and they would like, <laughs> and then he would do it again. Uh, fucking hilarious, man. Uh, that was, was like a, a little child dude, just begging man. him to shoot. Yeah. He was a great dude. Absolutely. All right, D.L., kick good luck, man. Kick, kick the ass. You're doing Jay Little, too, man. On good Monday, job. yeah. Good job, man. Oh, I'm, I'm going to back next Friday. I gotta, I'm got i hosting with uh, Kelly. So, ah, so, you're doing yeah. the... Uh, yeah, it'll be cool. We look yeah. like if you tune in and don't uh, we don't say anything. It looks like the new Mod Squad. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be cool. And it's uh, <laughs> real DL Hughley on Twitter. So there yeah. you go. I think cool, we're man. done for today. Hey, thanks right, thank so much, man. What a good time, man. Absolutely. Right I'll see you guys. All Very right. cool. See you tomorrow. Oh wait, I'm gonna end with this—a new production piece. Oh. The O and A Show presents True Confessions from Anthony Cumia. I like uh, putting on women's underwear every so often, those silky ones. You look funny with the top of your boner sticking up. That was another True Confessions from Anthony Cunha on The Opie and Anthony Show. This is The Opie and Anthony Show. Anthony show continues. continues. This is after ONA Live. Here's your host, Sam Roberts. You know, without getting into too many details. Sam, I got five minutes. I know you were uh, about to intro me. I oh. got five minutes to do a lot of shit right now, okay? You, you've taken on the task of Roman Life Coach. You saw that? Yeah. Who, uh, who's, who's, whose job am I taking? Well, we all quit. We all tried. I, I, I assigned, know, but I mean... I assigned Troy to it. He quit. I assigned Sal to it. He got fired. I'll try. I, I, I used to hang out with Roland a lot because he lived two, three blocks away from me. And then, you know, he couldn't afford to live where he was anymore. And he had to, like, move somewhere weird. I don't even know where he is because he hasn't invited me there yet. But uh, <laughs> yesterday in the hallway... Because yeah. Roland thinks he's he, he Roland thinks everyone thinks he's doing a shitty job and well, that he, and he, and that he doesn't do enough for for Sirius XM and the Opie and Anthony show. He doesn't and handle I, the stress while well. he's worried right. about them thinking about this. And I try this. to tell him like when we were sitting in our meeting the other day, Steve Blatter was praising him, saying, "Wow, he's really up the guess and really in that area the show has never been better." Just look at today. And I and I tell Roland that the boss tells me this. And, right. and, 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 and it goes right over his head. Then yesterday we're in the hallway uh, talking to this guy that's really fucking big in the company. And he said to me... Bigger than Bladder? Way the fuck bigger. <laughs> wow, Roland. Way, uh, like, that's pretty like good. Bladder's halfway up the ladder oh, compared wow. to this guy I was talking to yesterday. That's really specific. And he, and he looked at me and he goes, you know, you and Anthony, you're one of the most important shows here at Sirius XM. Yeah. How many times have we bitched that we don't feel that? Many times. But this guy is so up there on the ladder, I went to myself, you know what? How about you fucking take that to heart and, and bring that home with you today? You were okay. Which that I made did. you feel a little better. Way better. Okay. But in that same exchange, uh, when he wasn't uh, giving the finger to somebody uh, very... Who? I can't say. Which person was giving it's, the finger? It's got to be a blind item for now. Okay, but the big... This, this guy who's saying how important we are might have been... Uh, F, F you and somebody else. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And it wasn't a, a little show like the morning mashup. But that's a... <laughs> so, in the same exchange... But that's a blind item. It's a blind item for now. Okay. And this... For now. Everything okay. always comes out. We don't... We don't just... Te we tease shit, yes, but in the end... Eventually... We let it all be known. You just say the so, name of a show and everybody will yeah. know. Yeah. So, in the same exchange, uh, Roland happens to be just kind of kind of on the outskirts of this discussion that was happening in the hallway because yeah. of course he had some guests that he wanted to you know run by me this guy who's very powerful was saying how great the book guest uh, 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 the guest bookings have been and that you know it, it it makes his job in the company a lot easier that's got to give you some comfort Roland and then Blatter goes yeah it really he's really doing an amazing job so I looked at Roland and I'm like but will you listen to this shit? Because he's always worried about getting fired. They'll fire me for this. He They'll fire me for constantly that. Constantly has anxiety, yeah. stress, sometimes tears in his eyes. The famous dick in the ass that he always has to say to you on uh, this hour. Yeah, that's his catchphrase. It's his catchphrase. And I'm like, well, will you take that with you? Because it's going to make you sick. 
It is because it's not an exaggeration. It's not like he's doing a character. When Everyone he's has said how ass. great of a job he's doing, but for some reason he, I, I, I don't think he wants to feel good about himself for some reason. Well, it's it's even clear to the listeners. Like it's such a black and white issue. It's like before Roland, the guest caliber was on one level. Right. After Roland, the guest caliber is on an entirely different level. Right. Like, and that's all there is to right. it. Like that's the so, job. So, yeah, I, I get that. There's going to be frustrations, and you're going to think the boss hates you here and there. But you also got to listen to the positive stuff, Roland. The positive stuff. Then mm -hmm. guess what? You won't have to do as many pizza parties to make yourself feel better. <laughs> I'll celebrate tonight with wings. Okay, wings. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, baked wings from Rub. They're delicious. All right. Low calorie. But that oh, doesn't God. mean you're slack. You keep doing the same job day in and day out. Oh, yeah. But you got, you got you know, some, some people talking uh, highly about you the last couple of days. All got, right. Before you go, I got to hear about this, the video because I was watching the video what that video? you put what up yesterday. About? Well, it's on your YouTube channel, what? Opie Radio. Video? Right what? here. Uh, no, that's a Bruce Springsteen video Look. that you just put up, Roland. Look, this is very awkward. I, I don't like. I, I, I don't like all this attention. Yes, you do. You no, I, I don't. <laughs> Didn't... I don't like being in the spotlight. It's awkward. I want to help Roland out. Next thing you know, you're you're promoting something I did. It's it's not important. You're a public figure. No, I, okay? I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the attention. I don't think that's true at all. I don't want to be a YouTube star on the Shorty Awards. Then why'd you mention it just now? Nobody brought it up. Because I figure if I mention then the people will finally understand my request and they'll stop voting for me. Everybody's I, I'm very uncomfortable. And what do they have to do to vote I'm for you? I'm very uncomfortable. What do you not want them to do? Th don't vote for it. I, on the Shorty Awards? Yes. Oh. I can see that right. means I have to leave my house and get like maybe a tie. Yeah. I, I don't I don't show up in public often. Well, me and Ann are going to be there because right now we're number one. We'd love for you to join us if you would stop this false modesty charade. Nah, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable. Well, this video very that uncomfortable you put with up. the attention. What, the what video? Why are we talking about this video? <laughs> Why are we talking about this video? It's about Roland. No, no, no. I wanted to because you said you were going to go. Right. So I wanted to ask you before you left the electric wheelchair homie singing karaoke yeah. on the OP Radio YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big laugh when he appears, right? Yeah. Huh? It's this guy, Opie is or or whoever it's, uh, is filming from the car. My brother in law AJ down there in Philly, he was, he was in the ghetto. And you could just hear this music playing. Yeah. And it's whenever you need me, I'll, I'll be there. there. And at first you're like, what is this, like a really bad version on the car radio or something? Right, right, right. And the music you can hear it getting louder. And, and all you see on camera is just uh a street. Right. And it's not focused on the guy. And then the guy just drives past. Drives by the camera. And it's a guy, it's a black guy in his electric wheelchair with a karaoke machine on the back who's just <laughs> driving down the street, not the sidewalk, <laughs> driving down the street in his electric wheelchair. Singing. Singing. <laughs> Whatever yeah. you need. And I thought it was just a speaker, but then I guess he's well known in Philly. <laughs> and uh, it turns out it's a karaoke machine. It's a full on karaoke full, machine. Full on karaoke machine in his electric wheelchair with a microphone and speakers, and all he does is just tool around singing. <laughs> and at the end of the video, this is where my brother in law kind of blew it. Yeah. A white van almost takes him out. You see him fucking jam on his brakes? I was noticing that, but then I a also. Very noticed, subtle, but you got to watch closely. At the very end, it looks like the guy jams on his electric wheelchair guy just. Pulls right in front of him anyway. He won't let oh, him no, go. Oh, no, this fucking guy is not stopping <laughs> for nobody. And he won't even stop his song. Like, he'll right. go, oh, whatever you need me. Yeah, AJ's the man. My brother-in-law, he uh, sent it to me yesterday. Well, and then these idiots, because I, it's in the description. Yeah. I, 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 might, I made an exception. I fucking hate videos that are filmed in portrait mode. But mm -hmm. this one works. The quality... Because now people are like, hey, asshole, you were just talking about how you hate portrait, and now you have your, your latest video is in portrait mode. Uh, no, I got it from my brother-in-law. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's not in landscape. But the content makes it worth putting up with. Yeah, but I, I you know... But you got it. I mean, he's your brother-in-law. If anybody should know how to make a video, this I mean... very uncomfortable. I feel like I'm whoring myself out, Sam. Then how come you're just describing I, the video? I... I, I I, I just feel uncomfortable. You got to teach your brother in law how to make a video, though. Yeah, please don't go to my YouTube channel, OP Radio. Why'd you mention what it was? 26 you... million views and counting. But different. Uh, but I, I think it's uncomfortable. Oh. It doesn't seem uncomfortable. It really is. What's uncomfortable is this whole charade, this whole, all the false modest OP. I don't know character. what you're talking about. That's what's uncomfortable. I don't for know everyone. what you're talking about. Can you get the spotlight out, off my face? <laughs> I'm not comfortable in this situation. As you say, next to the wall with your name in giant letters on it. <laughs> yeah. it's, the, the name Opie is Look, gigantic on the I, wall next to you. I didn't ask for that. I asked for uh, uh, a place to hang my coat. 
The it's, next thing I know, the whole fucking studio has our name. How many times you think? It's literally two feet by one, one foot. Two, three. Opie! Yeah, but that's that's how many of those? Okay, one, two, three, four, four of those. And then small ones scattered throughout. One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Uh, about one, 20. Two, th- yeah. Uh, more than 20. Like you're saying, yeah. about 25. And, and then it's lining the glass. Well, Opie, 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 Opie. Uh, Every mic uh, flag either says the virus, which no, is not accurate. Make sure you say Opie and Anthony. Uh, I'm just saying, Anthony doesn't pretend he doesn't want it to be in the spotlight. Uh, uh, so Anthony there, wants the shorty. Sam, award. there's no spotlight, just bad lighting here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, maybe that's why you're uncomfortable. I'm very. Because of the awful this gel, of, <laughs> the jaundice gel that it I didn't shines. get into this business for this type of attention, Sam. It's. Yes, you did. No, you're, it's you're uncomfortable. It's if really, that were the case, really. you got into the business to be air talent. Huh? Yeah, I didn't think anyone actually would pay the, attention. Then why would you want to be air talent? Because I got free records. That's all it was. And there were records back then. You got into the... I thought you were a child this, of the 80s. And now this all all this uncomfortability. It's, I'm, not, I'm not good with this you just thing. You just stumbled into this. Yes. This was also... It's not something you work towards. Look, man, please don't make this latest video viral. That would be very <laughs> uncomfortable for me... My family. I bet it would be. I bet uh, AJ, your brother-in-law, would probably be really broken up about it. Uh, no, he would love the attention, to be honest with you. <laughs> it really is a good laugh. Huh? It really is a good laugh. What is? The guy, when he, ro- when he rolls down the street, <laughs> just singing his song. But now you're talking about the video again. Yeah. How do they find that video? I don't even know. It's on your YouTube page. You know goddamn well Why? how they find the video. Why would you mention it? Because you just asked me how do they find the video. Oh. OB Radio on YouTube. All right. Vote for OB Radio on Twitter for YouTube star for the Shorty Award. No, please don't. We want him please to join us. don't. Right now he's in 10th place and he's feeling bad about himself. So the false please modesty don't. thing. I'm not, I'm not joining the table with you and everybody else. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, but I, I, and then what? All eyes are going to be on me and stuff? No, all eyes are going to be on us. That's why, that's why I picked radio. Because you figure it out. You just want people listening to you. Yeah. You don't want everybody no looking eyes. at you. No eyes. Think so you, about it. So you prefer not having a visual element to the show. Yes. You like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there any reason? Now, I get that. <laughs> Look. So I then pick- you went out. But you went out of your way, for no reason. Right. To start a YouTube channel, where you would put many times you've pointed the camera back towards yourself. Well, the guy I know who's making the video. <laughs> well, then why would you start the channel if you didn't want the attention? The channel's called OP Radio. See? Once again, radio. Once again. Radio means no eyes on OP. Once again, OP. You have a segment called OP's Eye. I didn't do shit. OP's Eye. Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Not listener's eyes. Opie's eye. Because you don't want the, I see shit. Because they don't see me. You don't want the attention on the listener. You want the attention on Opie. No. It's it's videos that I see through my own eyes. So and I, you just have to share with everybody. Dude, if I really wanted the attention, I would have made the channel uh, name Look At Me. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube.com, Look At Me. That's a horrible name for a but channel. But that's what I would have done if I wanted the actual attention. It's not a very clever way to get attention. You're not a good thinker. All right. Jay in Huntington says, unlike the wheelchair guy, this video has legs. It does? You get it? What has legs? The video. What video? The one that you filmed on your dumb YouTube channel. (laughs) No one likes me. (laughs) My pressure roll. (laughs) Ah, Roland. Everyone thinks I suck. (laughs) You like having Opie as a life coach? (laughs) Dick in the ass. Blueberries. (laughs) Blueberries. <laughs> oh, I got your I'll back. I'll fucking throw these blueberries at you. Yeah, that's All right. Nice. Well, you did a great show today, Opie. Have a great day. Roland looks like he's going to follow you out to pitch guests. Is that what's going on? No. Did I hear right on Twitter, Roland? Donald Trump Jr. is filling in for Jim tomorrow? Yep. That's huge. Yeah, we're psyched about that, Sam. It's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, I know Celebrity Apprentice. Goodbye, Opie. Goodbye. I'm sure, Roland, you'll be back. I know Celebrity Apprentice is coming on soon, uh, next month. Um... And yet, Donald Trump Jr., usually, this is unprecedented. Usually, uh, a comedian will come in or whoever. But this time, Donald Trump Jr. is going to be on tomorrow doing the whole show, filling in for Jim. I don't think he'll be there right at 6 a.m. Because let's face it, he's a millionaire, and so is his father. But he will be, I don't know what time he'll be on, but he'll be on uh, for most of the show. 
Um, Henry Winkler was on today, and he really is. Like, the, the striking thing about Henry Winkler, can you pass me that pad and that pen and that bottle? All three things, and this and this. Great job, Eric. And not E-Rock Eric, the intern Eric. Great job today. I have everything I need in front of me now, and it's all thanks to you. Anyway, uh, Henry Winkler is not, like, he's one of the few guys who's impossibly nice, and that's how he is off the air, too. Like, he's this, hey, I'm the Fonz guy on TV, right? You've all seen him before. His leather jacket with the collar pulled up. But, like, you meet him, and I walked by him before he came on the show, and it was, uh, hey, man, how you doing? And he looks at you right in the eyes as if this is the most important important conversation of his life and he goes i'm doing well how, how are you and I, well i guess i i guess i didn't think of it on that level i i think i'm doing all right but but i don't know um we didn't we, i mean we touched on it but we didn't really bring it up is uh henry winkler's history with the show uh, a few years ago during the k-rock days we uh uncovered i think it was thanks to the laszlo show is that right travis did Laszlo first uncover the Henry Winkler PSA? Sure. You'd have no idea. Not a clue. But it seems like that would be correct, right? You know, he's found so much good stuff before <laughs> that we've yeah. used. Well, I'll Laz just say yes. Laszlo does use the internet. That's true. Laszlo from Rockstar Games. I think it was him. Yeah, I think it was too. Who found the PSA? Uh, do we have it in the system? Just the PSA? Or no. All right. I mean, Sex Man might have it in his vast archive. But yeah, but the Sex Man is not here today. No, we are sans Sex Man. Sex Man is all sexed out. Uh, Mars, see if you can find on maybe on YouTube. This will be good. This is a good exercise. Henry Winkler PSA. Okay. Uh, I would say write it in Spanish, but you don't know that language. Uh, Henry Winkler PSA. There it is. Strong kids, safe kids. What is it for? Yeah, let's click it. This is, uh, you could just play it. This is the, uh, Henry Winkler PSA that's been played so many times on the show. Uh. Hey, would you listen to that beautiful chorus of voices? Thanks, kids. And now I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine. We're almost flesh and I don't blood, think the kids you know? are really there. Mr. Henry Winkler. Hey, take a bow, Henry. Hi, I'm very glad to see you. <laughs> that is how he is, too. And I'm very glad to see you. And I'm very glad to see you. So let's take charge. Hey, you're cool, huh? So here we are, parents and children together. It's just uncomfortable to be that m nice of a person. Like, I... Maybe it's just because I'm not, but there's something that, like, if I were to act that nice, I would feel so disingenuous, and I assume that that's how everybody feels when they're acting that way. And you know who's just as nice as him? Who? D.L. Saul Gordon, who's yeah, but D.L., like, at least he's kind of the way he is on stage. Yeah. Like, Henry Winkler just completely, he's not the guy on TV whatsoever. In the best possible way, because the Fonz is awesome. Hi, me too, John Ritter. John Ritter's in this. <laughs> and some black woman's yelling. I don't know why. But, like, D.L. is like he is on stage, whereas Henry Winkler is like, he's like the Fonz's nice grandpa who taught him everything. Tallywhacker. I think this is the song coming up. Penis is what boys have down in front. Penis is the word, though it seems blunt. All boys have a penis, so no matter what you've heard, remember that penis is the proper word. Vulva <laughs> is what girls have down below. It's true. Even though most people call it vagina, what the fuck is that guy? call it Virginia. Vulva. When she's naked, it will show. All girls have a vulva, so no matter what you've heard, remember that vulva is the proper word. Our anus <laughs> is a useful thing indeed. The anus gives relief in time of need. We all have an anus, so no matter what you've heard, remember that anus is the proper word. So don't be appalled, because that's what they're called, and each of them's the proper word for private parts. <laughs> now, that wasn't Henry Winkler that was singing the song. This was, he was just some weirdo in his video. But regardless of whether being nice is a legitimate thing or not, is there anybody who could have been part of this production that didn't think that that song was going to be simply a tool used for humor? 
Like even even a little kid who says anus instead of butthole, like that's a funny little kid. Like if yeah. like Mars, how old is your youngest? My youngest is four. So that's perfect. This is probably what this was aimed for. If your four year old walked in and said, uh, "Daddy, look at my anus." <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be some funny shit? <laughs> but, yeah, I guess You'd so. You'd be like, that's a funny kid. My kid's going to be a comedian. Anus. Whereas he said, like, Dad, this is my butthole. You'd be like, yeah, obviously. Right. But right. if he was like, Dad, this is my anus, right. you'd be like, that's hilarious. That's true. Fonz is in this. Well, it was good having Henry Winkler on. And uh, Roland actually, uh, Travis, I saw Roland did not get your picture signed. Oh, well, he'll be back. I hope so. I mean, he is here. He's here a lot. Yeah. But it, it's... what we did, I think there was some confusion. I think Roland thought he was signing it. I don't know what Roland's thing is. But um, what did get signed was uh, a couple of books. And, Travis, you can't have either book. You know what? What? I don't want one. Well, you can't have one. Good, I don't want one. Well, you can't have it. I want one now. What do you, thought so. What are you going to do with them? Well, there's the one book about fly fishing. That's for adults. And then there's the book about a kid who's friends with a ghost. That's for kids. Uh oh, hotline. Hello, you're on after Opie and Anthony live. Sam, I feel very uncomfortable with all that attention you just gave me. So, why, <laughs> so Opie, why are you calling into the show? I just feel extremely uncomfortable. All that stuff we talked about. So then, why do you want more? We had moved on from it. Yeah, I I know, but I just I'm sitting here in the car thinking that it, it's not it's not the position I really want to be in. You understand by calling in, you're just putting more attention on yourself. No, I just want to make make sure that people understand that it wasn't me. It was really you just pushing. And now I just don't feel good about myself. I feel very, very used, like I was whoring out. Well, like, uh, what's the most? What 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 makes you most uncomfortable that was well, happening? Well, when you mentioned the uh, the the guy in the electric wheelchair in the Philly ghetto singing karaoke, I, I was very uncomfortable with that. Where, like, where would where do we see it? it was, uh, See, you're doing it again. You're, you're trying to make me, you know, say Opie Radio on YouTube, and I, I don't really think that's right. With that time, you just said it. Yeah, because you you're forcing me to do this. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make. I'm just completely holding you against your will. I mean, all I did was yeah, an- if you, if you, you asked me the question. Of course, I'm going to answer it. Right. But you, I know why you're doing it because you know I feel uncomfortable doing this. So you're trying to get me into my uncomfortable state again. You called me. What? You called me. I didn't call... No, I explained it again. I called you because now I'm thinking about it, and I realize it's just not right, and I felt very uncomfortable with all the attention that you gave me. Well, like, did the Shorty Award thing make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, what, what Shorty Award? I don't... You know, like, nominating you for Shorty Award for YouTube star. I don't know if we lost him or he we lost him. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'll call back because he's feeling very uncomfortable. Um, oh, I'm sending Travis Pitcher to the publicist. He's going to get a sign. Oh, you are? It's yeah. fine. Don't worry about it. That's very nice. Yeah, see? Although, I mean, yeah, Trey, he will be back. I mean, you can just, I don't know, we'll do whatever but you we think. Do have one of what if he dies? What if he dies? My, I hope he does. My bad. <laughs> if, he, <laughs> if, if, if Henry Winkler dies before he ends up back in this building, then God doesn't exist because there's no way that a guy that nice should be dead at this age. Yeah, he's got so much life in him, and he's written 19 children's books. Who would take the time to do that? I would never. Let's talk to Chuck. Chuck, you're on after Opie and Anthony live. Chucky, hey, man, how you doing? What's up, buddy? I love your after show, buddy. They call it the shit show, but I just call it a great show. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> That's right. Suck up the Sam. Let me let me let me ask you. That's exactly what everybody should be doing. Let me ask you this, Chuck. Do you prefer ghosts or fish? Uh, I'm trying. To, I call them to get the ghost book for my daughter. She's 12 years old. She loves to read. I'm sure she'd love that. Well, I just got a text, Chuck, from Opie. He texted uh-huh. me on my personal cell phone, and he just wrote very uncomfortable with four <laughs> exclamation points. I guess <laughs> the YouTube plugs made him very uncomfortable. Oh, you got to plug OP Radio on you, on YouTube. Oh, Chuck, you know that's not going to make him not going to make him happy at all. Oh, no. Oh. Um, all right, well, <laughs> Chuck, I like you very much. Uh, and, Roland, this is a signed copy of the book? Yeah. Let me see. It's called uh, Ghost Buddy. And if you want, if you want a signed copy of the book and you live in the area, 
Uh, go meet him. He's a legend. Henry Winkler is going to be at Books, Bites, and Beyond in Glenrock, New Jersey, today at 4 p.m. Um, and he'll be signing copies of Ghost Buddy, and you can go and shake his hand and tell him you enjoyed him on uh, Opie and Anthony. But I'm assuming, Chuck, that your accent doesn't really sound like a New Jersey accent. No, not, not New Jersey or New York. I'm from Ohio, and I'm one of your truck driver listeners, and I'm down in Texas right now. All right, well, I'm going to put you on hold because we're going to send you an autographed copy of Ghost Buddy and the inscription. I'm just reading it. Henry Winkler, he signed his name. He dated it. And you know what, Chuck, I think he meant this for you. You know why? Why's that? Because the inscription says, you are powerful. <laughs> and I feel that way about you, Chuck. I'm going to send you this book. Hold, hold on, okay? Thank you, Sam. All right, buddy. Winners every day. Winners every day. When what's that over there? Tight lines. Tight lines. About the fishing. I guess, but I don't know. Is that a, some kind of weird double entendre type thing? I don't know. This is a very dark side of Henry Winkler. That is the fishing book. So this is Ghost Buddy. Uh, it's also in stores, and that's what he's going to be signing today in Glenrock, New about Jersey, line nine from four to five p.m. Line nine's not a hotline. Oh, no. Nope. Enough to give away. You want? You like line nine? Yeah, two people give the book. Because we're going. You want to give line nine the book? Yeah. Or we'll just see how he is. Yeah. The other book, what's the name of the book, Roland? The, the, this one and the, this fishing one? Yeah, what's it called? <clears throat> I never met an idiot on the river. I never, never met a what? An idiot on the river. That's right. I never met an idiot. Until I, I bumped into Master Poe. <laughs> Why do you always say Master, Master Poe? <laughs> he loves that guy. Um, <laughs> lucky you, Kurt. Hey, is this the actual Sam Roberts I'm on the air with? That's right. Oh, I am a lucky, lucky man. And I am lucky to be talking to you. You're not Kurt Love, are you? No, no, sadly, I'm not. Oh, thank God. Kurt Love is somewhere uh, deep tongue-kissing Bobo right now since they're dating yeah, let's again. let's not think about that. Yeah, let's not do that. Are they back together? They are. They just started dating recently. Good. Yes. They, they started anal, I heard. They do anal sex, is what you're saying, Roland? That's what's on the interwebs. Oh, okay. Um, That's Kurt, disturbing. It is. It's very strange. But Roland is good for some information. Um... Well, how would you like a copy of I've Never Met an Idiot on the River Reflections on Family Photography and Fly Fishing by the Fonz himself, Henry Winkler? I would absolutely love that. He signed it for you. You know, that, that, that's just, yeah, that makes my day. All right, well, congratulations. You won, so you. I'm going to put you on hold, okay? All right, thank you, Sam. It's amazing. This is the secret, like, at Sirius XM, I've been told by, like, many, many, many sources... That we don't really have a rating system, so what they do from time to time is they monitor call volume on yes. shows. That's true, right, that's, Mars? As far as yep. yeah, that's true. Now, is it randomly or or you don't know? No, they they determine the top shows by the number of calls that you get in. But so like, you, I specifically you just don't said take... what you just said, <laughs> and that's why I tell you to just allow just people take to call. Calls. Yeah, take because calls. I don't. But they I can't, see it. But I feel like I care. They don't care about what's they don't on give the a air. Shit. They just see just take those numbers calls. coming in. Like, oh man, Sam's getting a lot of callers. One, I got to do that for a whole week. One week, yeah, and just be like, we're taking calls because well, it, it's we'll like Blu-ray week. <laughs> we, whatever you give away is you just say I have something for free for you, and all the lines light up. Look at look at the lines yeah. right now, mm -hmm. and I already gave them away. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> it's time. What about a non-autograph copy? <laughs> Should we oh, keep take it? Yeah, take, take it. everything. Yeah, non-autograph. <laughs> okay. Uh, can the interns handle sending it? How many copies do we have? Um, where's the other two? We have two more. Do we have two uh, more of each or just one more of each? Because um, I'm going to keep giving shit away. Um, oh, wait, we have a... Uh, do we give... Do we yeah. take the addresses from the people I put on hold? We have... Kurt's still on the line. I think we have three of this and two of the other ones. Do we have three copies of that? Yeah. Three. Oh, wow. And then two. I'm going to impress some management today, Mars. Um, yeah, three and two ghost buddies. But they're not enough, but they're both. Hey, Jason. What's up, Sam? Um, I got, oh, that's another copy of the book? Wow. I got more books, uh, but they're not signed. Do you still want them? Sure, I want them. Okay, well, which one do you want, the ghost book or the fish book? I will take uh, the fish book. And uh, was that from Happy Days, The Long Lost Brother, that was... Uh, oh, shit, book. of course it was. I can't believe we didn't keep him on the line. He just wanted the ghost book. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, well, thank you, Jason. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay. Is this impressing some people? Yes, Is yes. this what I need to yes, do, Mark? absolutely. Now, 
what's the best strategy here? Should I hang up on people so more people call in? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm going to hang up. Uh, Andy, you're not a winner. Uh, Andrew, you're not a winner. Ronnie, you're not a winner. I'm going to impress some people. Yeah, they keep on calling back. <laughs> Joe, you're not a winner. <laughs> Hello. Craig, <laughs> you're not a winner. Don, not a winner. <laughs> Look at his phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is what matters. This is what matters. That's amazing. Uh, Al, not a winner. The phones are lit up again. They're going to be like, oh, my God, who is this superstar? Uh, line five, you're on after Open Anthony Live. Hello. Hello, Brad Gilbert. Yeah, no, 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 you're too slow. I'm going to have to free up the line. <laughs> line six, you're on after Open Anthony Live. Hey, Sam. Uh, you are almost too slow. How's it going? What's your name? Hey, Jason. Jason, do you want a book that's not signed? Yes, sir. Well, you just want a copy of Ghost Buddy by Henry Winkler. Thank you. I have a seven-year-old who will like reading that. All right, I'm going to put you on hold. Thank you. Somebody, there's three of you interns back there. You better be keeping track. That was line six. I don't want to hear about any of these people because the callers are what's going to make me famous. That's right. Um, line four, too slow. <laughs> line five, uh, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, what's up? What's your name? Hey, this is Al. You hung up on me a second ago. Yeah, I like the perseverance, Al. <laughs> yes, sir. But wait a minute. Mars, are they going to be unimpressed that somebody could get through twice? They don't know that. No, I fish. Come on. They, they're good with it. Okay, you fish? Yes, I do. You want the Henry Winkler fishing book? Yes, sir. You got it. Line 5 gets a Henry Winkler fishing book. Congratulations, Ooh, thanks, Al. Thanks. All right, I'm going to put him on hold. Oh, man, Mars. Yep. Is this my big break? Yes, it is. Look at the, look it at, up. <laughs> look at it. Um, line one, you're going to make me number one. What's your name? Josh. Josh, where are you from? Pennsylvania. Well, you are in a spooky point of view because you just won Ghost Buddy. Sweet. Yeah, I thought you'd be excited. Hold on the line. Line one, just won a copy of Ghost Buddy. Um, let's see. Line eight, I'm going to hang up on you because I want some more calls coming through. Line four, you're on After Opie and Anthony Live. Hey, this is Paul. What's up, Paul? Which one do you, you like, ghosts or fishes? I don't know, man. I got three kids. Should I go for fishes for a ghost book or what? I, I, say, I, I, I say think about your kids first. That's what Henry Winkler would want you to do. He's such a nice man. And, uh, and go for the ghost book. All right. Uh, can I get you to sign it there, uh, Sammy Boy? Oh, yeah, boy, I'm going to sign it right that. now. This is very you exciting. Got you got a Sharpie over there rolling. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Almost hit me, but I caught it still. I'm going to sign it. What's your name? Paul. To Paul, you are cute. Why don't you give him both books, Sam? Oh, that would be fantastic. Let's give him both books. No, you know what, Paul? I would give you both books, but I need to take more calls. I got to be on some next level shit. Damn, I'll be, I'll be like the biggest fan of all time, buddy. I'll be putting Just up Bill Paul, books, please. Paul, I already signed a book for you. I got to give it to somebody else so I can take another call. Or Sam, how about right. this? All right, Sam, I'm, I'm going to put you on hold, okay? Sam, hold on my side. I'm going to put you on Sam, hold. Sam, we'll give them both books, right. and I'll do this for you. Yeah. In February, yeah. we'll give away a major A-list autograph. In February? In the next week. Can I just give this to somebody else and still do that? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Line six, this is the last book. Hi, Sam. It's Craig from Tulsa. Craig, I think you're going to make me a star here. Um, you are a star, Sam. Thank you very much. You just won a fishing book. Oh, thank you so much. Will you sign mine, too? Of course I will. Uh, what did you say your name was? Craig? Craig, yes, sir. Say that again? Craig, yes. Craig, okay. To Craig, catch one for me. Exclamation. I will never leave my bookshelf, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. That's right. signed for Craig. That's the last book. I'm going to put you... He hung up! <laughs> no, he did He did? Oh, you're uh, still there, right? That was Jeff. How you doing? Oh, he hung... oh Craig hung shit. up. All right. Craig, call back. No, just find someone else named Craig. <laughs> I'm not going to find anyone else named Craig. Oh, Everybody... I know who give it to. Who? Oh, Craig E. Brown, yeah. old intern. Everybody has to hang up. Um, uh, interns, hang up on everybody so Craig can call back and get his book. And don't... I mean, if you if you want Craig's signed book, just call up and say your name's Craig. What can I do? Craig hung up. I don't know why he would do that. But there's a book signed for Craig that he's going to get. Um, listen, I got to talk to you about this. 
because serious, I mean, they also like when you talk about, you know, people who you like, people who you'd recommend. I don't know where the copy is. You've so. got to find the copy first. Look, hi, Monica. She's waving. She's headed over to Troy's, uh, to Troy's booth. Shocker. I wonder what's going on over there. Listen, Mars, don't even worry about it. Well, I'm, going, copy, I'm huh? going copy free on this one. It's Troy's listening, but turn it up. You may have to buy her something. Steven Singer Jewelers, <laughs> Troy, listen up. I know you're trying to impress the ladies, and this is what you got to do. Because Steven Singer is going to make you look like a million bucks in front of any woman. Whether it's your girlfriend, your fiancé, your wife, or just some intern that you're trying to convince to hook up with you in a production booth. Whoever it is, Steven Singer is your man because this Valentine's Day, he's back with the gold-dipped roses. 24 karat gold. It's an amazing thing. And they come in every color. You can make a bouquet. You're talking red. You're talking gold. And if you already have them, go for the new colors. Green apple, uh, sapphire blue. And you got pink. They got everything you can think of. I go to Steven Singer for all my jewelry needs. And let me tell you something. If there's one thing that Jess likes on Valentine's Day, it's those gold dip roses. They last forever. 100% money back guarantee. Free shipping. You can't go wrong. Call them up at 888-I-HATE-STEVEN-SINGER, IHATE-STEVEN-SINGER.COM, or on the other corner of 8th and Walnut in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Steven Singer Jewelers. Yes! The great Ron Bennington is here. I'm glad people are finally getting around to hate Steven Singer, too. I don't know if you noticed what I was just doing. Yeah. I just did the read copy free. Good. That's an impressive feat. And Mars was telling me before you got here. Yeah. That the trick to management thinking that you're a very powerful show right. is the phones. So I gave away like eight Henry Winkler books. Uh, why weren't you selling them? I mean, you got all these great books. Well, I mean, I, we had, I thought I'd just get more calls. But for, but for as free as they are, yeah. you could let them go for like, let's say, three bucks a piece. You yeah, make $24. Right. You do <laughs> right. that every day. You're suddenly right. we're having a nice fucking party. Right. I guess I'm That's just, right. a, yeah. I'm not as business minded as you are sometimes. You I'm know just, what? You got to make the money where you can in this business. You're right. Where, where's the rock today? Uh, the sex man yeah. is moving into his big mansion. Moving. Yeah, he takes a whole day to do a walkthrough. Yeah, he's, is that yeah. Right? he's moving to his big mansion, and he said he may not be in tomorrow either. So I mean, he's he's, he's got, got a, he's got a great job. He's got really a lot nice. of rooms to fill. Would you be okay if your staff was like, "Hey, I got to move into my mansion. I'm not going to be there, Roddy B." Yeah. Well, the difference is none of my staff ever saw me kill anyone. So <laughs> something. A Rock Saul. Yeah, okay. I don't know whether it was with Ope or Ant or Jimmy. I don't know, but he saw something, and so far he's been doing the right thing. So he's getting his back scratched. Whatever you want, whatever you want, A Rock. I, this guy Craig, he won a book, and he had me sign it for him, and I made it out to Craig, and then he hung up the phone. And I now, go to his list. He's fucking great. Is that man. the same guy? <laughs> yeah. Hey, line four, you're on the show. Hello. Hey, do you want Craig's book? I'll take any book I can get. <laughs> All right. What's your name? My name is Keith. All right, Keith. I'm going to cross out Craig's name. Because <laughs> I want the... Oh. You hung up <laughs> Oh, what happened? Hello. Hello. Phil from Jersey City. All right. Happens to be a rating shill for Sam. And Phil, you want this book? No, I just want a shill for Sam. Oh, I already crossed out Craig's name and wrote Phil. All right, well, I appreciate the That's call, the then. Next one gets, uh, yeah, next just, one. I'll cross just, Phil Sal, out. Sal says Craig called back, and they got his information. Oh, they did? All right. Yeah. I, well, Phil, I appreciate the call, and what I'll do, then, is I'll cross out Phil, and I'll write Craig again. There you go. Okay, that's still a good autograph. That's a nice signed copy for Craig. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. I mean... So there's a lot of crossed out stuff. And... But it's like a human thing. It's like, yeah. I mm -hmm. got a... Uh, a book uh, for Zito. What's that? A little book called The Bible. And I want him to read it cover to cover. About Jesus. Hmm. Is that yeah, what it it's is. about? It Jesus. is about Jesus. I haven't read it. Yeah. He needs and some he guidance. Was, he was a really smart little baby. And then he didn't hear much about him. <laughs> and then they killed him. That was it. It touches me. It's so... And he spared him, too. But the, the, don't you think they're, like, missing... Stuff in the Bible, like you never hear of like 14-year-old Jesus. Like, like puberty. Yeah, like, and... yeah, like Jesus needed braces. Yeah, 
or like meeting chicks for the first time or how he was with that. It's Apparently always like he wasn't that interested. He went from baby to carpenter. And it's like, well, where do you pick up all these skills? Where you're right. Why do you think Zito needs the Bible? Do you never notice too of all the pictures? Well, they're not pictures. I guess they're illustrations <laughs> that you see of Jesus. There's never him just sawing or you know what I mean? No, just, it's just he wasn't. Those are for the Mexicans. They. The they Mexicans, race. yeah, race. 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 I don't like that. It's racial. But why <laughs> Why do you say that Zito needs to read the Bible? Just It's just he's been running around with the wrong crowd. There's yeah. been, you know, uh, kind of a West Memphis 3 thing about him lately. Killing babies. A lot of Metallica. Yeah. Well, not babies, but small kids. Yeah, like... <laughs> I just like to see Jesus with a level gun. I don't even understand why this is all. (laughs) This is crazy. I did the measurements. I mean, it all added up. You know, you have those days where no matter what you do, you can't pull it off. Yeah. All he's trying to do is build that stool. Oh. Not like that. I didn't know. No, it's just like a stool you sit Because I know you're shock jocking. Now, this is weird because when I was in with you guys last uh, week, Mm -hmm. by the way, uh, thank everybody for that. Treated me like I was part of it, and uh, Kenny kept asking me if I wanted anything to eat or drink. By the way, everybody, when you were in last week, yeah. stepped up their game like like the king had arrived. Oh, that's really that's nice right. to hear. Like, that's really nice to hear. Like, you, you could even tell, like, the listeners were picking up on it. That first hour, Opie and Anthony yeah. were just like, boom, 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 boom. They're never there that first hour. They're <laughs> always just like... It is really early. Yeah. I mean, it's too early to do radio. But you brought it out in them, and then, I, I don't know if you realize this or not. Because it's too early to even listen. You probably, E Rock, what has never been so quick with music cues as when you were in. I mean, he does not play a bed for anything, mm. and he he was just firing them off while you were in studio. And I remember thinking to myself, "Oh, he's good. That's yeah. right. he's good. <laughs> right on those music yes. cues. That's he's exactly really good what... with the music cues." No, but there were. I mean, he was like, "Listen, I don't know if it was a subconscious thing or if he was sitting there going." Ron Bennington's in here. Well, I you gotta know, be on my A game. You you guys miss like when O and A used to do the afternoon show, mm-hmm. and then we would do nights at NEW. They would just come in drinking all the time, <laughs> so it was a a totally different thing. Yeah. No. Now, well, yeah, that's the morning thing. Is it, you can't do that, and then by three o'clock, the channel's done. You know, and the yeah. You know what I mean? Like, really, it's strange. It's really strange here. But well, and I don't want to say who, but some of the people here like to squeeze the fun out of it. Just, <laughs> just well, squeeze every drop of fun out of radio. Let's see if we move O and A to the mornings <laughs> and then separate them, but by, by, from Ron and Fez by an hour, then we might not have quite as much fun. And also make it less wanting people to hang around. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like yeah, yeah, you can hang around, but you're not going to have any fun. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to be here, we'll schedule some meetings. If not, you can go home. Right. But if you're just hanging around, we'll schedule a few things for you. If O and A stay any later <laughs> yeah. than ten, these guys make them try on uncomfortable pants. <laughs> yeah, That's their eyes. Like, hey. Let's get you itchy suits. Let's I know, put you in itchy suits. I know you wanted the picture in the lobby. We really think some wardrobe, and they come out with the, yeah. you know, tweed blazers and stuff. Now, the other thing is, and I wish you guys would bring it up to him, that Rob Cross <laughs> has to realize he's so much luckier than Gary is. Because <laughs> Rob's life runs really nice. Yeah, because it just because of the, he's not... He's not. There's no demands on him. He's just like, okay, I'm just here to be the yeah. guy. Like and, whatever you need, I'll but, do. But, but I'm, I'm not also in charge. the same way with him. I'm like, hey, buddy, everything's great. You yeah. Know? Where Owen and Gary have this relationship. Not good. No. <laughs> not good. I mean, it's a type of thing where it's like, holy shit, they just said that about a real person. It's it, to me, it looks always looks like a World War II dogfight. Where it's <laughs> spinning planes, shooting. I, which way's up? Which way's down? I always think it's like this is an adult. With, like, a wife and a family and everything. Yeah. And, and they're just disrespectful at this point. Well, they have every right to. But you know what? It's all for the sake of entertainment. And it's all for because we all care so much about the product. That's all it is the in the end. Radio. In the end, we're all working now, for the same goal. Did you get these books because uh, Mick Foley came in reading one on his own? <laughs> no. Henry Winkler was in tonight. Yeah. And so they sent all the books out to O&A. Uh-huh. And O and A don't like to read, right? You know what I mean. They don't like that stuff. They uh, like visual things. They like a video what time or a did movie. Henry Winkler come in. He was on from uh, eight to eight thirty or so. Who's that? That's Monica. That's uh, 
That's Troy's little piece that he has voicing all the production for some reason. Yeah, tomorrow's Adam Ferrer's coming in, too. Adam Ferrer. And oh, you know great. who's uh, filling in the Jimmy chair tomorrow? Mm-mm. We said last week it was Ron Bennington. Yeah. I, we don't know where to go from there. So we got a celebrity, Trump Jr., is coming oh. in to fill the Jimmy chair. The odd thing is we both have the same dad. You do? That's incredible. <laughs> now, when Henry Winkler came in, did, <laughs> did he call them O and A, no. <laughs> which would have been the best bit ever? He didn't use that one. Henry o Winkler. O and A. Have you met him? Uh, no, I don't believe I have. He's very soft-spoken yeah, and, and, and very nice. and Like one of, the, one of the books that he signed just for a listener yeah. just says, Be pow- you're, no, it says, You're Powerful. Henry Winkler. That's really nice. <laughs> it's great. You are you are smart. <laughs> you are invincible. No, they didn't. She didn't say that. He no, did. Maybe. He did. I'm a, trying to think of the help. He did, <laughs> he did a little of the Fonzie voice though when he yeah. was in here, and that was exciting did, to see it. Like when you know, what did he bring? Leather Tuscadero in? <laughs> no, we had no guess with him. Did you guys try to put him in a malachi crunch? No, all these things. I mean, these are like missed opportunities, I feel. Why didn't you have Mick Foley in at the same time? Because he loves the Fonz. Because we couldn't have that amount of niceness in one room at I one see. time. It's just I like see. just joy and goodness and charity. and It doesn't work for this show. Uh, I, I love the fact that ONA will have all their guests in together. And then a couple of times Mick Foley said things to the other guests. And I'm like, I don't know <laughs> how... This person is going to respond to this. Yeah, well, that's an ONA they like to do. Like they'll interview, Mix it up. they'll interview somebody, and then the next guy's coming in, and they go, "So are you sticking around?" Or half the time the guest goes, "Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I guess. guess it would be impolite to leave." <laughs> right. So, they so stick around. let's bring in the stripper. Well, listen, you should stick around for Rod and Fez because oh, that's, that's what's that's coming up next. Um, segue. We'll be back. Giving away Bibles. You have Bibles. You're trying mm-hmm. to steal my phone heat, aren't you? I am. You're trying to prove to the bosses that you got listeners well, too. Why? Why do they? Why? Why do the phones matter to them? Uh, Mars was just telling me. That's what how they tally the numbers. You know that uh, they think those are the subscribers <laughs> that are listening to your show. Right. And this scared me because usually I don't take any calls whatsoever. I don't even ask people to call in. Well, oh, and I also <laughs> don't take any calls. No. They like are uh, like uh, don't call here. We have at least nine, though. As you know, just pointed out, we have at least nine. It filled up all nine. Hey, I, mean, I don't know who this kid is, but his phones are popping today. <laughs> there was literally thirty phone calls. It's just I, like at seventeen, this <laughs> goes off. Money, does money and accounting guys are looking shit over? Yeah, listen, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more than just Steven Singer live reads coming from this show. Oh, sure. Especially after those calls. Anything big planned for Runifest? Uh, Emmy, uh... Rossum? Emmy, Emmy Rossum. That's very the, exciting. The show Shameless is coming in. Beautiful girl. And we thought it would be fun to find out what she could bench. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, we're going to start... Stunts. Yeah. I love celebrity stunts. Now, this could go, and then the w- listeners will win stuff. So, if she can bench press mm-hmm. uh, 440 pounds... Every listener will get a new car. That's a make, make sure you're if calling up. She does up. it during the <laughs> during the show today. Make sure you call up for that, uh, and stay tuned. It's coming up next. We'll be back with more of this tomorrow. Goodbye. The Opie and Anthony show is now over for real this time. Check out the O and A show on Facebook at facebook.com/slash Opie and Anthony, and catch Opie and Anthony live Monday through Friday from six to ten a.m. Eastern. Fun and Fez are next. Hey. hey.